The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey, why? Let's go! This show sticks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for. The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. You pick! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. Could change their life. Sports, 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 sports. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to our humble abode, the Thunderdome. On this Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, December 19th, 2023, this sports program starts now. Football is happening, and it's the perfect time of year. Christmas is right around the corner. Uh, corner. Hanukkah has just mm-hmm. wrapped up. I believe Kwanzaa's coming oh, around oh, the mm-hmm. bend. It's a magical time, and there's a new year on the horizon. Football is fantastic mm-hmm. right now. Yeah. We are all healthy. We are all alive. We are enjoying the hell out of the opportunity to talk sports every single day. And it's not just me, obviously. It's the talks the table at Boston Connor, Dog the Bounty Hunter, and at Ty Schmidt. Hell yeah. I mean, still an animal. Still a graphic t-shirt. I figure if, if it is dog, it still it. counts. Yeah, that, and that dog will hunt. That dog does hunt. You Always. Do. It says Taylor Swift, but it's not Taylor What the? What? Oh, what's that all about? It's a play. I think I think it's like a combination of the two. I think it's a play on Taylor shot? Swift, and it is just Dodd the Bounty Hunter. We will not take any negative comments about Taylor Swift. Definitely no. not negative. Well, is that what you're doing? Are we saying Dog the Bounty Hunter isn't a compliment? So Taylor Swift right now is still selling out stadiums all across the world. Big Dog girl. the Bounty Hunter couldn't find that. Yeah, yeah Brian no, The last thing I heard. He did find He him. did not find no. him. Yes, he did. He was already dead. No, bra. Wasn't I didn't see Leland nope. with the paintball gun. No, nope. I didn't see a full yeah. stand up and he, rest in peace to Beth, obviously. by the way. Yep. So, uh, you know, and then he got remarried quickly yeah. shortly there afterwards. But like some people say dog maybe lost his fastball, had it at one time. Oh, yeah. Okay. He was painting, yeah. bra, oh, cigarettes, catching yeah, ice. Right. I mean, he was Great doing the whole thing. Yes. But they said he has lost his fastball since maybe Beth passed away, bra. So to put Taylor Swift's name on top of that at the exact time Can't where happen. Taylor's the hottest thing on earth yeah. right now, I think maybe a little bit of a mixed messaging going on. I think, sure. I'm going to be honest, I think all you guys are pretty damn soft for ma- making this into a Dog the Bounty Hunter doesn't deserve to be talked about or Taylor Swift doesn't deserve to be in the same name. Listen, Dog saved a lot of ice heads from <laughs> he a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah but he here did. we are. Okay, I understand that. Why are we tearing him down then? Why, I'm why not tearing him down. I'm yes, just saying. you guys are. You're bringing up the last thing he did and how it wasn't successful. Last but two, Dog two, was very good for a very long time. So let's not just say, hey, Dog the Bounty Hunter, don't put him on a t-shirt with Taylor Swift's name because Dog the Bounty Hunter's lost it. Go to hell, all of you, for insinuating that he shouldn't be in the same realm as Taylor Swift. Now, maybe at the bottom of the realm, hold on, maybe at the bottom (laughs) of the realm and T. Swift's at the top of the realm, but still in the realm. All right. Damn it. Let I appreciate your passion. Let and obviously, know, Good your Lord. intent is not a negative one with how passionately you just defended Dog the Bonnie. I didn't see this in coming. I think Dog's in the same realm as Bonnie, who uh, uh, performed at the halftime of Cowboys Thanksgiving. That's Dolly, Dolly Parton. Dolly Parton. That is one half Jeez. of the hammer. Dime. Cowboys disrespecting yeah. somebody oh, yeah. that you should not disrespect either. I am sick of this show already. Be kidding what is it, December 19th? And we've already taken shots at. Potentially three people that we genuinely like. No way. What's no, no, your problem? I, no, no, I agree. And I love Dolly. I just sometimes, you know, amnesia of the brain. Um, but I'm just saying, like, she's still got her fastball when she needs it. Dog still has her fastball when she when he needs it. But they're not in Taylor Swift's realm. Yeah, Taylor uh, Swift fastball all the time. Yeah. You guys are ridiculous. Let's move along here. Nine-year NFL vet. Uh, do you? I'm not even going to ask. Dog's fastball is clocking in at like 75 miles an hour these days. Let's just call it what it is. BP. Yeah, He's exactly. Done. He not can still throw that. it. Not exactly. arguing that. He, and at one point, he did. Take him yeah. off the yeah, pasture. 99. Put him down. <laughs> that dog? That dog. That dog won't son hunt. Son of a bitch. That dog. Darius J. Butler is here. <laughs> did not expect to start the show like this, obviously. <laughs> I mean, but I, I didn't even reckon. I didn't see that shirt until 
as I was looking yeah. over at mm -hmm. you. And because with where your microphone's placed, too, it's right down the middle of his face. So I just saw like half a dog the bounty hunter with his eye looking at me. And I'm like, holy hell, this takes me back to A&E. Yeah. You know what I mean? This takes me yeah. back to the time yeah. where he was smoking cigs at a chain like fashion. Oh, yeah. yeah. Goat fashion. Protecting the streets out there. Look. They always got them in the end. They always, always did. did. That's because yeah. dog hunts. And this dog still hunts, and I will not stand for this bullshit this early on. I don't understand why Taylor Swift has crossed the ball. Me. I don't either. I don't either, but I, I don't make the shirts, okay? I just buy them. And that's how this shirt came. I wish that so was like me. your wolf shirt. You know Dog like, to Bonnie Hunter? Lee Lee yes. hitting yeah. the background. Yeah, of course. He has lost his fastball. We all agree. Yeah. Taylor Swift throwing 110 on the paint. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the only conversation that we had. Happy we're past it because you had no ill intent, obviously. We heard no. No, how you passionate guys did. you are. Well, <laughs> yeah, you guys did. And, and you said to Tony, I didn't expect us to take shots at three people. I just wanted to be known. I took zero shots, okay? <laughs> I did not shit on anybody. I am strictly here as a dog fan and that it goes with the animal t-shirts. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you for dropping I'd like to apologize for a potential ricochet shot at Dolly. Taylor Swift is a unique combination of pop culture and crime fighting. Boom. Here, let's explore the meaning of this collaboration as well right. as the style and appeal of the team. All right, hey, you know what? Now that I got dog. Batman on my shirt. If, if they had to match up a singer with a crime fighter, I'm happy that it was okay. Sure. They got it right. Boom. That dog right Great there. Great shirt. Thank you. Thank Great you. Shirt. Thank you very much. Great shirt. You too. I like that one. All right. Great Good night shirt. for the Seattle Seahawks. Ooh, yeah. 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 Okay. And their crowd in that stadium is obviously going to be talked about every yeah. time they're on TV for a good reason. They impact the game. Every player that speaks about playing there is like, yeah, it's different here. Yeah, it's problematic. The way the stadium is built, straight up and down. So whenever you yell, you actually hear your yell coming back because it's naturally an echo chamber in there. And they felt Pacific Northwest fans, we understand that they are lunatics. Mm -hmm. They are the closest thing we have to European soccer fans. Sure. Yeah. Now, college football fans will obviously have that fight as well in certain places, but Pacific Northwest, the way they show up for things is bananas. It's soccer-like fandom, and they do it for football. They have done it for the Seahawks forever. That stadium, weapon. Home field advantage, for real. On the road with a sick quarterback, Eagles favored by three and a half still. Drew Locke gets a start over a Geno Smith that could have played but wouldn't have been nowhere near 100% sure. with a groin injury. So Drew Locke leads them on this 92-yard game-winning drive at the end. Oh, my God. The Eagles lose three in a row. Drew Locke has a fairy tale moment. He hits DK Metcalf. He hits DK Metcalf. He hits DK Metcalf. Right. Then he throws a bucket to Jackson Smith in Jigba. That catch was phenomenal, obviously, by DK, who's bigger, stronger, faster, right. and more athletic than you. And Jackson Smith in Jigba with a phenomenal catch, and then he goes and gives the ball away. Now, uh, I, uh, yeah. in the moment, I was thinking to myself, well, maybe we give that one to Drew. Maybe mm -hmm. we give the ball to Drew because of what he, you know, was able to accomplish and what he has been through in his short NFL career thus far. Drew Locke got a chance to speak immediately after the game, and it was beautiful. Remember, this is week 15. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is what this league and these games can really do to somebody's life and somebody's entire being. Here's Drew Locke getting a chance to chat about the magical night that he had on Monday Night Football. Amazing won't do it justice. Amazing won't do it justice. But amazing also doesn't do justice with the O-line, what DK did on that catch, uh -huh. what the receivers did, what Ken Walker, Zach Charbonnet did all game long, the tight ends, man. Hell yeah. It takes a special group to rally around a guy that, you know, has come into his second game of the year, right? Used to the same thing all year long, same cadence, same spin of the ball, everything. For a team like that, not just the offense, the defense to rally around me tonight, man, that was, that was amazing. I see some, I hear some emotion in your voice. Yeah. Great follow-up. It's been a long time. Missing. It's been a long time. Um, I'm just blessed. I'm just blessed. Blessed with a great group of guys, a great city, great coaching staff. It's just, it's, it's awesome. It's a wow. Drew, when did you even know you were going to be playing tonight? Oh, there's a long story going into that one. <laughs> but I kept the mentality that I was going to play, regardless of what was going on, how people were looking and whatnot. I was just like, you know what, you're going to go out there and play. So just be ready to play. Found out when we got here that I was going to get the nod and roll the dice, baby. Let's go. That's right. Take us back to the touchdown pass to, to Jackson. Just what was the play call? Take me through. Yeah. I mean, I, I'll remember that play call for the rest of my life. But um, we're breaking the huddle. 
I knew Jax had the one-on-one. -on -one. Good reminder from Shane in the headset. I said, hey, Jax, if you're one-on-one, -on -one, I'm throwing you this pill. <laughs> sure enough. Gave us a one-on-one -on -one look. Corner was soft. Jax hit him with some speed. Back pylon, back box throw, came down with it. Again, Drew, we can see the emotion on your face. We can hear it in your voice. Can you can you just describe what you're feeling in your heart right now? Yeah, it's so hard. It's so hard to describe the feeling of, you know, not playing for so long, or at least what feels like a really long time to me. And then you sit there, you watch games, you wonder, can I do this still? I haven't been out there on the field. That's the human nature of it. You get back out there last week, I'm like, you know what? I'm the man, so I can go do this. Hell yeah. And then you got Hell another yeah. test this week where I didn't know if I was going to play or not. Sure enough, ended up playing. We're playing the Eagles tonight. And the, the boys around me rallied tonight. And it just, gosh, yeah. it feels so good. It feels so good. I'm so proud of everybody tonight. Congratulations to you. We're all happy for I you. Baby Drew Lock. Yeah. We are all incredibly happy for you. And having a game-winning drive like that in a moment that he'll remember for the rest mm -hmm. of his life was something that Pete Carroll spoke about immediately afterwards as well with a backwards hat on. <laughs> I know a lot of us on the East Coast probably didn't see a lot of this, but <laughs> yeah. I think this is a pivotal part of telling the story mm -hmm. of last night's game. Here's Pete Carroll, who is now 8-0 against the Eagles, wow. with a backwards hat and press conference post game. Beautiful football, just beautiful football. I mean, the, the poise uh, that we talked to, to you about last week, I mean, he's, that's where he's been. He's been on it. He's been in command. Uh, um, you know, there's a couple incompletes in that drive, came right back and hit it and converted and, and made the first downs and all, and then to, to throw the touchdown to, to win a football game. Um, yeah, it's amazing stuff. Um, he would be the first to tell you about the guys around him. The offensive line did a great <laughs> job did. tonight, yep. running the football, yeah. won, and also pass pro. And they did a beautiful job against these guys and gave us a chance. And uh, uh, I mean, I, we, we couldn't ask more for him in, in that game tonight. What was the problem? Oh man, I'm so thrilled for the kid. Really, uh, and this is a, first off, it's a memory that you're never going to lose. He's going to hold on to this Monday night forever. Um, he earned it. He deserved it. He. he Played up to the great moments in the game yes, and true. came through, um, and it, it's Earth been hard. It's been hard for him. Right. Any guy that backs up that's, that you're, has you're, the yeah. brain of a starter and the brain of a championship kid, it's, it's difficult as heck to, to you know have to wait. And so he's had to do it, but he had his chances and he almost you know put together a game good enough last week, uh, and then this week he did the whole thing. So it was amazing. That is amazing. Yep. Pete Carroll obviously great with words. We had uh, somebody come speak to us uh, during training camp. And this person was trying to teach people how to become a president of the United States whenever they speak to the media. His name's Frank Luntz. I believe he does, like, um, focus groups. Sure. And they had a bunch of NFL people speak, and they had these focus groups, and they had a line on the screen where it would go, like, up green and then down red with, like, everything you said because the focus group was told, if you don't like how he's saying what he's saying or what he's saying, push down. Mm. If you like what he's saying, push up. Pete Carroll was the one that was shown that literally the green arrow was just up the entire time. The way he speaks to the media is, like, expert level, master class, never going to give anything away, always going to compliment his team and others while delivering a message. So whenever he starts talking about Drew Locke with a backwards hat. I don't yeah, know if well, they would have went thumbs down or thumbs up on the backwards yeah. hat. I'm thumbs up all the way. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. I'm thumbs up, but there's some people that will judge that, of oh, course. Yeah. Sure. Last night for Drew Locke, huge moment for him as oh, the yeah. athlete. Huge. Huge for Seattle. Happy for him. The Eagles on the other side, deep. Ooh, this is three straight losses. And Bradbury has been attacked, not only mm -hmm. by Drew Locke, but by every other uh, basic quarterback that they have played against and lost against. And then Bosa came out and said that we laid the blueprint on how to beat Jalen Hurts in the Eagles offense. Since then, 0-3. Do you think the Eagles are donezo? Is that what Drew Locke and the Eagles or Seahawks did last night? Or how do we get this whole thing fixed in Philadelphia? Well, should I, I speak real quick on the Drew Locke thing? Please first. Obviously, he got traded, you know, traded over there to, to compete for a starting job, mm -hmm. losing that job, Pete mentioned it. He mentioned it. Just waiting, you know, the the, the peaks and valleys it is for a quarterback. And then him to hear him after the game, shot everybody out. Didn't awesome. leave anybody out. The O line, the defense, the running backs, Geno, like everybody. So that was dope to see. Obviously, leaned on Kenneth, Kenneth Walker for the majority of the game. And then when he needed 92 drive, drive his, uh 92 yard drive, drive the teams down and win it. Um, on the flip side, Eagles tough, tough loss. Obviously, Jalen Hurts played through the sickness. And after the game, he had some, you know, some surprising comments. I know yeah. Bosa made some comments, but him coming out and saying, hey, I don't think I, everybody's locked in enough. Everybody's not putting it in. So that's a, hmm. a big wake-up call. Because you're still they're still in the spot now. They can they control a lot. You know, they can win out. The, the rest of their schedule is not tough by any stretch of the imagination. So they can still win out and be in a good position going into the playoffs. Obviously, you make a change, a big change, like changing the defensive coordinator midweek or going into this week. 
Um, that's tough. Brad Berry has been struggling. Slay will be out for a few weeks. He just had surgery. So they got to find some answers back there quick. Yeah, the Philadelphia Eagles, it feels different this year. And yep. the difference is mm-hmm. they don't have as many uh, – they don't have the same coordinators. Nope. Yeah. Yep. Both their coordinators real good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Both their coordinators got head coaching jobs yep. because yep. of how good they were. Remember, Shane Steichen took Jalen Hurts from being a guy who – is he going to be in the NFL after right. this year? Is he going to be back up to highest paid quarterback in the NFL after the year yeah. we're going to the Super Bowl? Shane Steichen was a part of that. Obviously, Sirianni and many others. But you see how Shane Steichen will be on – our show today, 205 Eastern Standard Time, oh, yeah. has done with the Indianapolis Colts, who are very banged up. It's like losing that guy, probably a difference maker. Massive. And then Gannon, you know, now I'm yeah. not saying that the Arizona Cardinals are, you know, going to go on to win a bunch of games and everything like that, but they have certainly fought and seemed mm-hmm. to be a much yeah. different yeah. team than what we thought they were going to be going into the year. Maybe Gannon, who boo, boo, shot, boo, shot. is a Post. person that once you leave the building, not just X's and O's calling plays, but also in the building as a whole, they lose two potential real culture setters out of there. Now Matt Patricia getting the nod again on the defensive side, only has a few days. A lot of people are saying, Matty P, geez. Mm. 10 play, Uh 92 yard, touchdown from Drew Locke, Monday Night Football, your first game back, take that Ticonderoga, Uh break that thing in half, Mm -hmm. you ain't got it anymore, but I think Matt Patricia is going to take a little bit of time to maybe implement what he's thinking, Mm -hmm. what he's doing, is that possible, can you change much, it's like on the offensive side, you always talk about a coordinator change, and it's like, well, plays are already implemented, the... uh, Everything that we have is already in yeah. there. It's just who's calling it and how we're calling it. Is that something that can change on the defensive side? What can Matt, Matt Patricia do that will change how that defense is That's going? That's just it. What you're calling? Because you can't change. You build your roster based on, you know, the type of defense you're calling. Like if you're Chicago, you're building a – you're drafting defensive, bringing defensive guys over who are going to play zone coverage, you're going to have good ball skills. If you're a man-to-man scheme, you're bringing coverage guys over. So you can't pretty much change the, the bones – of your defense, but you just change when and where you call things. Uh, and that takes a while even for players. Because as a player, you mentioned it with Jalen Hurts. As a player, you want to be comfortable and have that continuity with your play caller to where if it's third and eight on a two-minute drive, I already know it's going to be one of three or four calls that my guy's going to call as opposed to getting that call and then going through all those different things in your brain. So that's a different thing you got to work with. How he's managing the guys throughout the week, how much of a voice did he have before compared to – being the guy now, that's a big change. So, um, And then you're missing Slay, too, who, who's your best cover guy, especially in the back end. And they've struggled for not only these past few weeks, but I think this entire year compared to last year as a unit. You know, not a lot of continuity there. Maddox being out in the slot is big. Not getting after the passer like they did last year, that's mm-hmm. obviously huge on the back end. And then Bradbury. I mean, you, you can talk about Matty P, but if I'm a defensive play caller, I'm putting Bradbury on a rookie on the outside. I expect him to win that one-on-one matchup. You know what I mean? The DK, I got him on DK on some. DK is going to win some of those. Double team, he goes up and makes a, a catch over What happened, Brad? Guys. Just lost confidence, lost spin. What happened? You know what? It happens. And, and, and that cornerback, everybody sees it. Just like a quarterback. Mm-hmm. Like, everybody's going to see and if you have a run. It's not like linebacker or D-tackle or, oh, you know, your offensive guard where you have a little tough stretch. When you play those positions, everybody's going to see it. Everybody's going to be an expert. Um, and he hasn't been playing up to the level that he can play, and uh, hopefully that he can, he can turn it around this last stretch. Yeah, they're going to need it. And then For on sure. the uh, offensive side with Jalen Hurts and the boys, Bosa had some real – I mean, oh, Bosa yeah. saying we laid blueprint out yeah. on how to beat him. And since then, they've gone 0-3. Now, obviously, they've played great teams, yeah. but here's Bosa uh, of the San Francisco 49ers talking about what they did to the Philadelphia Eagles maybe being what everybody should, needs to do. Yeah, I mean, you see it on tape, though. Uh, and then, obviously, we put the blueprint out there. Hopefully, the Cowboys watch the tape. Um, we made Jalen stay in the pocket and escape outside instead of those B-gaps and uh, paid off. Because uh, Jalen's looking at the rush every play. Um, so, yeah, you just have to be disciplined and, and not give him that quick escape route where he could get to his guys quick. And it paid off. And then since then... Cowboys have done that. Seahawks have done that, obviously. And who knows what will happen going forward. Jalen Hurts saying not everybody's committed enough is a little bit alarming. And on the flip side, see how Seahawks always going to be in it. Oh, yeah. Hey, they're always going to fight, aren't they? Absolutely. Pete Carroll's chomping that gum and Mm -hmm. motivating the hell out of a football team. We haven't really seen a lot of videos from practice this year or last couple years of the Seattle Seahawks, I think, because it's just like (laughs) the new norm. But remember their practices. Pete Carroll, like, in Mm warm-ups. Slinging around. The energy's always there. Think about the way Drew Locke talked there. The inspiration. 
desperation and the amount of competitive juice he still had in his mind. It's like Pete Carroll, always going to be a good ball coach. Congrats to the Seattle Seahawks getting a massive win. Absolutely. And the Philadelphia Eagles having some stuff to figure out. Exactly. Now, also, uh, we would be remiss if we didn't chit-chat about the fact that college bowl season has oh, officially yeah. begun. Let's go. And the reason why it's begun is because something absolutely absurd happened mm -hmm. just yesterday in a bowl game where a team was down 28 zip tone. 28 nothing. 28 nothing. Let me set the scene first. Okay? Please do. This is the famous Toastery Bowl at a at Jerry at Bad Guy Jerry Richardson's Stadium. Okay, mm -hmm. he's not okay. a good guy. He's not a good guy. He's okay, right. this is the ghost of the Bahamas Bowl. This is this bowl only exists because the Bahamas Bowl isn't being played this year because the Bahamas Bowl Stadium is under construction. Got it. Okay, Damn. I hope I hope it comes back stronger. To Absolutely. The bowl. Western Kentucky is out. Their top three linemen and their starting quarterback Austin Reed going into this game. Now let's get into the highlights against okay. who? Old Dominion. Oh, do you? Oh, do you? Good yeah. football team. All right, so we get into this. Uh, right now, it's 14 nothing. okay? And quarterback for Western Kentucky, Turner Helton, who is the son of Clay Helton, USC football coach, who oh. got fired. That was a pick six oh, boy. to make oh, it 21 no. nothing. Why am I showing this? Why am I showing this poor kid? Because he gets benched after this, okay? He, be he gets benched after that. ODU goes up 28 nothing here. And then the story of the game happens. In comes Quarterback for Western Kentucky, Caden Veltkamp. Caden oh. Veltkamp. Caden Veltkamp decides that he oh. is just going to go to wide receiver Dalvin Smith, who does not need two hands, my friend. He get he goes up and catches. Oh, oh. wow! So Filthy. Filthy. Oh. Okay. That's, that's not the only time. Does he need two hands on this play either? Nope. Oh. This guy's awesome. Wide Holy receiver shit. Dalvin Smith. Now Val Valcamp, the quarterback, oh, is actually blue. in yeah. the transfer portal. By the way. So he is the <laughs> third string quarterback. He's in the transfer portal. He's leaving Western Kentucky after this game. Let's go to the fourth quarter. They are down 21 points. A little swing outside. Oh. Whoop! Ooh. Oh! That is, oh! Wow! That is Elijah Young who hurdles and goes in to cut the lead to 14 there. Now let's fast forward a little bit. Who was that wide receiver earlier? Smith. Dalvin Smith, baby. Velcamp goes right One back hand? to him again. Oh, no, he uses man. two this time. Uh, nice. That's cool. That's he was right in his, in his chest, so he had to use two. Now we are down fourth and 15. Fourth and goal, 23 seconds left. Mm. Velcamp again for his fifth touchdown of the day. We go to overtime. Old Dominion gets down to the one, gets stopped. Oh, oh Has no. to go for the field goal. Scoop and score? No. Uh, ah, oh, so close. So close. Be an athlete. Western Kentucky gets the ball. 35-35. Mm. Chip shot. Field goal. Win the game. 38-35. Velkamp finishes 40 of 52 for 383 in five touchdowns. Jeez. What, as he portal? hits the transfer portal. As he hits the portal, I think he made himself some money. Come on, today. UConn. Hey, wow. congratulations, Velkamp. I, I don't know if UConn's going to be able to you afford him. him. Come on. I don't know if UConn's no going to be able to afford him after what he just did there. And that is beautiful. That is what bowl season yeah. is all about. Because we're watching that game immediately after the show ends yesterday, and Bruce Brown's like, oh, I waffled. I took Western Kentucky or whatever, and it just became a runaway for Old Dominion. We go back out somewhere, come back in, all of a sudden we got a ball game. It's beautiful. College football is magical. Mm -hmm. Remember, college football playoffs start January 1, national championship January 8th. Until then, there's bowl games all over mm -hmm. the place. Mm -hmm. That is what the current college football world looks like. That's right. Let's talk about what the future of college football looks like. Okay. This weekend, a video hit the internet of Chip Kelly at a press conference answering a question. Now, this answer was not thought out. No, no, it was no, not no. that thought out. Nope. Mm. But it seemed to paint the perfect picture of what college football could be in the coming years. What is the the biggest issue that you might have right now, whether it be realignment, NIL, transfer portal, and what would your, your plan maybe be to, to try to solve it? I think they're all a problem, and I think we need to have a conference commissioner. I think football should be separate from the other sports. Just the fact that our school is leaving to go to the Big Ten in football, our, our softball team should be playing Arizona in softball. Our basketball team should be playing Arizona in basketball, but because football left. And they're saying, well, how do you do that? Well, Notre Dame's independent in football, yeah. and they're in a conference and everything else. I think so. we should all be independent in football. So, And you can have a 64-team conference that's in the Power Five, and you can have a 64-team conference in the Group of Five, and we separate it, and we play each other. Hell yeah. You can have the West Coast teams, and then every year we play seven games against the West Coast teams, and then we play the East. So we play Syracuse, Boston College, Pitt. West Virginia, Virginia. Hell yeah. Then the next year you play against the South while you still play your seven teams. You can play a seven-game schedule. You can play four against another conference, another division opponent, and you can always play against one Mountain West team every year so that we can still keep those rivalries going. Not that I've really thought about this. <laughs> Not that I've allowed to spend the time on this. But I think if you went together collectively as a group and said there's 132 teams and we all share, in the, same we all share the same TV contract, 
so that the Mountain West doesn't have one and the Sun Belt doesn't have another and SEC has one and they have another, that we all go together. That's a lot of games, and there's a lot of people in the TV world that would go through it. You can sponsor each one. Instead of calling it Group of Five and Power Five, you can call it Amazon, Nike, bid that out to things. You know, a lot of different things. But I think if we still do the same thing and take all that money, and I would do this, and I think this needs to be done, that money now needs to be shared with the student athletes, and there needs to be revenue sharing, and the players should get paid, and you can get rid of NLI, and the school should be paying Plus. the players because the players <laughs> are what the product is. And the fact that they don't get paid is really the biggest travesty. Not that I've thought about it. <laughs> hey, listen, I don't know if that just came up on the spot off the top of the dome or if he does have an entire elaborate thing about how we can make this happen, whatever the case. To further elaborate on that particular point and many others, three-time Pac-12 champ as the Oregon Ducks coach, then he went to the Eagles. Now he's at UCLA. Ladies and gentlemen, Chip Kelly. Yeah, Chip. Chip. What's up, Coach? What's up, Pat? How are you? Hey, we were kind of watching you watch that back. We forced you to watch your entire take. <laughs> Second time through hey. here, were you thinking to yourself, ah, pretty good. <laughs> I, I, I did nail it. Did you miss anything in there, you think, Coach? There's a lot we missed, and there's a lot all of us have missed. You know, I think college football is the greatest game out there, and we need to protect it, and we need to promote it. So I think we need to get some smart people in the room, and let's iron this thing out because – there's a lot of issues that I think over time have just accumulated. In the old days, you started on Labor Day, you finished on Thanksgiving, you had some bowl games in December. And now our season's so long that, you know, people are getting on players. Here's another thing about opting out of bowl games. Well, do you know where the players learned about opting out of bowl games? From coaches. Because coaches coach their team for the regular season, then they're not with them for the bowl game. So there's as many coaches that are opting out of bowl games as there are players that are opting out of bowl games. But our calendar needs to be changed. Um, the recruiting calendar needs to be changed. Uh, we got to somehow get uh, the transfer portal and NIL taken care of. Because right now, it's really free agency with no salary cap. And you can be a free agent whenever you want. At some point in time, if this doesn't get changed, Pat, Someone's going to transfer at halftime of a game and play for the other team in the second half. Uh, coach, let's, really, talk, coach, let's talk about some of that. Because there are no rules. You know yeah. what I mean? Let's talk about some of that. The no rules thing, we've talked to Commissioner yeah. of the SEC, Greg Sankey, mm -hmm. about this and many others. It's like the players are also signing deals that aren't good for the players as well. Like, obviously, quarterbacks are making a lot of money and everything like that, but there's other positions that are signing NIL deals, and some people are giving up, like, 20% of their forever career mm -hmm. earnings to these agents that are representing them, and that all falls into the guidelines where agents have to at least be legitimized through a group of people so that they can make the proper deals what do the contract structure look like normally so that everybody can kind of play in the same field and then i think the big conversation to take away and we talked to matt rule about this two weeks ago it's like the coaches aren't even allowed to talk to the players about money they have to talk to a third party that isn't even associated with the team allegedly not allowed to be associated with it so like who has the best interest of what in heart how do we make these changes though chip how will that ever co come about because it seems like an impossible task to make it all right with where we are right now coach now i mean i've always believed that the secret to victory lies in the organization of the non-obvious and it, oh. it's it's a real simple thing the best sports league in the world is the NFL. So follow their model. I mean, they, they, they're printing money. Players are making money. Fans are enjoying the games. Every game is close. If you win, you pick last. If you lose, you pick first. You all have the same salary cap. They've had it down for a long, long time, but we just won't look at them and use their model. And I don't know why we don't want to use their model. But if we're still going to have our head in the sand and say that student athletes aren't allowed to make money and they were still in the amateur part of it is that's out the window you know that that's gone out the window so then let's treat them the way they should be treated the the product is the players and if we don't take care of the players then we're not going to have players much longer and that's that's the travesty of it you know the pac-12 was a built a, a hundred million dollar business and it just went out of business and if you're at any business school in this country they're going to study what happened to the pac-12 and say, how did that happen? We went away like Bed Bath and Beyond went away. I mean, it's it's a it's a million dollar corporation, oh and we can't we can't we can't we couldn't figure that out, you know. And really smart people try to figure it out, but we got to do something because I think when the Pac-12 went down, which I never thought was going to happen, we better use that as a as a as a 
a light and say, wait a second, we got we to figure this thing out or, or something's going to happen. And we're going to turn around and say, there's only 60 schools playing football now and no one else plays football. So because have you, pitched we're your eat it up. have you pitched your ideas to other than like, thank you for doing that at the press conference. Cause I think a lot of us mm -hmm. who have become massive college football fans, we have, mm -hmm. we've gotten a chance to fall in love with college football. Cause I've gotten a chance to get yeah. bap baptized into college football with the most absurd environments and cultures and everything that is college football, how special it is. So we've got a chance to really fall in love with everything that it is in this transition era. And we think money coming in is definitely a good thing for the sport. There's still eyeballs. Ratings are still on college football. Whenever you say that at the press conference, a lot of us were like, that's the right idea. That mm -hmm. That is yep. the right idea. Have you said this mm -hmm. to anybody that, like, who would have to come together and do this? The commissioners of the conferences? Who would be the people that would make this ultimately happen, Coach? Yeah, I mean, the decisions are not made at the coaching level, nor should they be. I mean, we have jobs to do, and and uh, but I think coaches should be consulted. You know, I've always – we'd be in league meetings, and they'd bring up a, a subject to the coaches, and we would vote, and then we'd present it to the athletic directors, and then they would present it to the presidents, and the coaches vote 12 nothing, the ADs vote 10 2 and the presidents vote 0 12 and so we don't do it because they decided they didn't want to do it. You know, I, I think it's a, it's a, not it's not a – the streamline through the NCAA isn't the way it should be, you know, and, and the NCAA has to govern so many schools. You know, I, I started off my coaching career at Johns Hopkins university in Baltimore, an unbelievable school, great division three school plays in the national playoffs and they're on, but they have the same rules that we have. They're in division three and we're in a power five. There's a difference between UCLA and Johns Hopkins and the, and now both really good medical schools, but <laughs> a little different on the football field. And, and I think, they try to do it for the whole, and I understand that. But you have to understand, even in our sport, our sport is different at Division Two, II, Division Three, II, Division One than the other sports. So oh, why can't we break right? away? Oh, it's different. You know, Pat. Yeah. I mean, it, so why can't we break away? And why aren't we independent? And the fact that the, that everybody does everything together, the realignment thing just blows my mind. Like, football is going to go play in the Big Ten. Why do the rest of our teams have to go play in the Big Ten? You know, there's so many traditions, as I said. Our, our softball team is off the charts. They're unbelievable. They've won multiple national championships. They have a historic, historic rivalry with Arizona. And now they're not they're not going to play Arizona anymore because football left. Like, that just doesn't make sense. And when things don't make sense, that's when I say something. But I, I don't have all the answers. And I just threw that out there. You know, I drive to work every morning really early. And I think about a lot of things, and that's where that came from when I was thinking about it. So I don't think it's really hard. I think there's it's logical. You have eight divisions instead of like the NFL, but instead of four teams in it, you got eight teams in it. You know, the scheduling in the NFL, you know that, Pat. You know who you're playing seven years from now. You're playing the NFC East, and you're playing the AFC South, and then you finish whoever finished first. Mm -hmm. It's all logical. It's, it's math, and it's easy math because I'm not a math guy, but that's easy math. I just I think it's very simple answer. Um, are they willing to do it? And do they want to keep everybody together in this whole group and say this? But I think for it to work and for us to protect this game and promote this game, that football should be separate and the rest of the conference realignment. They should go back to where they were. There's a whole full conversation about Title IX that would have to take place and who would fund all those other sports. But if the schools are making money off their no, football no, teams... No, 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 no. We'll fund the sports. That's what I'm saying. If the, the schools rest, are yeah. making money off of mm -hmm. this thing, they should be able to allocate the funds to supply the rest yeah. of the athletic department. And you brought up a good point, I think, whenever you were giving one of your answers. It's like TV networks are going to want this now if everybody's oh, yeah. in there. Because if you're able to get the Big Ten goods... Mm -hmm. against SEC goods, mm -hmm. here we go. You know, if you're able to schedule yeah. that throughout the year. Now, with the playoffs being what the playoffs are, where you earn your way in, it's a much different conversation than if it was a four-person playoff where there had to be conversation about losses because why are you going to schedule it? It's like everything kind of gets regulated, and I assume the money would be in abundance for everybody as opposed to just some people. There's a ton of money out there, and I think oh, if yes, we went is. to the TV people with all of us together as a collective group you have 64 teams as opposed to 12 in this conference and 12 in that conference the pac-12 dissolved because they weren't going to get the same money as the big 10 and the sec if all five of those schools went together and said all five of those conferences went together to the television people and said what is that worth i think it would be equitable for everybody 
And I think you would still take that money. Right now, we're supposed to get $75 million from the Big Ten. That money still goes to the UCLA Athletic Department, and they distribute that out through all the other sports, and we understand that. Um, and I think you can do that. I think you could make more money for each school if we all went together. That's 32 games a weekend as opposed to 16 games a weekend in the NFL. The ad space is there. You know what it is. Everybody wants to be involved in live sports because you can't fast forward to a commercial. What you so say? You're get what did you say? Done. You said we can do Amazon, mm. we can do Apple. Yeah. We can do that. You yeah, start you literally can do whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can look at the conferences. Let's sponsor. Let, Pat, you got cash. You sponsor one of the conferences. <laughs> no, no. But I've talked to all those people that do have cash, and you're 100 percent right. Like that's why I was so flustered by the Pac-12 by some of these schools not being able to make a deal. It's like I literally just talked to. You know, before the ESPN deal took place, I talked to all the platforms I think that they were probably talking to, and it's like they are yearning for sports right now. Everybody, every platform is yearning for sports because they know if you get a pay-per-view type event with a fight or something, that's going to get people to your platform. If you get a live event, you're going to get their fans to your platform. Then it's like on you to keep them there. That's kind of everybody's game. Like we're trying to get you to our platform and then we're going to supplement that with more content and programming, hopefully to keep you on our platform longer. It's like they got a lot of money to do that. These people are worth trillions at this point. You know, it's like there's money out there. I think what you're... I think that's why when I listened to what you said, I was like, yeah, this feels like the right play. I think we all kind of agree with you there. Yeah, and I, I, again, it's such a great game, and we need to protect it and promote it. And it's, um, but the problems, and I think they're getting more amplified now because we don't live in the information age. We live in the information overload age. But I'll tell you a quick story about Bars, <laughs> bars. That's you thinking in the morning right there. Yeah, that's you driving yeah. to work. Too much information. It's information yeah. overload. Do it over. That's awesome to think about that. There was, a, there, was a, there was a player at West Virginia. This is a true story. At West Virginia, they played Lafayette in football. After the game, he stayed and played for Lafayette the next week against Penn. What? True story. When? Do you know when that happened? Do you know when that happened, Penn? No. In 1896. <laughs> his name is Fielding Yost. So this has been going on for a long time. <laughs> Fielding Yost played at West Virginia. They played Lafayette. Let's go, Mountie. He stayed at Lafayette. They played Penn the next week and beat Penn. And Penn was up in arms on why did this guy from West Virginia play against us? Because there was a transfer portal way, way back then, over 100 years ago. He then went on to be win six national championships as the coach at Michigan and become the athletic director at Michigan and one of the forefathers of the NCAA. And he was involved in transfer portal in 1896. Go look at Wikipedia. You can look it up because that's where I learned it. Holy hell. Whoa. <laughs> this guy would be going to be a dog, nope. too. Yeah. I mean, I don't like the fact that he just said, I don't want to go home with the West Virginia boys. Sure. Obviously, he feels no, like he went, But he went... Pat, he went back to West Virginia after he played against Penn. Then he went back to West Virginia. Oh, he just had a gripe against Penn. Oh, yeah. They didn't let me in. Yeah. You guys got them next yeah. week. Let me do a week of prep here. Oh, let me go ahead and help this entire thing out. So when people talk about problems, like, this stuff's been going on forever. But I, I just think we need some smart people to just say, hey, what are we doing? And let's 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 do it. And there are so many. I think Gene Smith at Ohio State, who's retiring, is one of the smartest people I've ever had a chance to talk to. And I think he loves football. I would ask him if he can help. I think Greg Sankey is the premier commissioner right now. He has the most skin in the game. I would get him in there. And then I would also get coaches involved because I think coaches can tell you about what it's like on the ground level. And really, I think sometimes the coaches don't have answers. And I think there's some people like David Shaw, Chris Peterson, David Cutcliffe, Take the five of those guys and put them in a room and then come out and tell us what we're going to do. And I would follow any plan that those five guys can put together. What state are you from? That little one, right? I'm from New Hampshire, yes. Yeah, a little baby one. They should put your dumb ass from New Hampshire in there, <laughs> yeah. too. You know what I mean? It sounds like you got no, some great I, ideas. I do not. I'm a, I'm an idea guy. I'll throw ideas out there, but I got a lot of work to do. We got we got. Uh, oh yeah, I got a meeting. We got a, we, we yeah, got, uh-huh. yeah, yeah, we got meetings, football, all that other stuff. So hey, figure it out. Now <laughs> this is what we need. We we'll figure yeah. it out. Uh, this I hope is what we need. Figure it out. I hope it happens genuinely. I do because it sounds. I like really it, do. Yeah, me too. I, I who knows who will be able to get it done, but hopefully somebody will be because you got other stuff to do. Obviously, right. let's talk about the other stuff that you do in coaching. We have some questions for you, if that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. My man, Darius Butler has a question for you. Yeah, we finished our bowl game, so I got Mm -hmm. time. (laughs) Hey, how'd it go? We won. How how do we do that? We beat Boise. Okay, congrats. We beat Boise on Saturday. Hey, way to go. Was that the LA Bowl? That was the Gronk LA. Yeah, that's it. I have no idea how to do Zoom, so this has been up on my Zoom for four weeks. (laughs) (laughs) I messaged him. I, uh, I said, hey, your video... 
that came out of the press conference, awesome. Incredible. Need to talk about it. Can you point me in the direction of the person that sets up your interviews and everything? I don't have that person. All right. <laughs> All right. So uh, can I have you? Will you come on the show on Tuesday at 1220? Perfect. And then now we're learning he has no idea <laughs> how to operate any of this stuff. I love that. I love that about you, Coach. Ball ball Coach. Here we are. Normal ball human. Coach. I appreciate that. Yes. How was Gronk, what do you got? How was Gronk's national anthem? It was it was Gronk esque, I would there say. You. Okay, nice. He was awesome though. He's another guy, Pat, like you, and I think the two of you guys are awesome for football because we need to continue to promote this game. Gronk's personality is infectious. Your personality is infectious, and wow. in this game, it's still about having fun. And I think the more you guys shed light on it, I think the more fans are going to come out and watch it because it's football is the best game ever invented. So I appreciate great. what you yep. do. And I, Oh, it's the best. Football is the greatest. It's, it's, it is so much fun to watch. It's always good. There's drama, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. There's business, too. You heard yeah, this we business will, yeah. we just chatted about. There's so much that goes into it, and I appreciate the fact that you even know that our show exists. Mm -hmm. We appreciate that. Darius has a question for you, Coach. Yeah, Coach. Another great part about football, I feel like, is uh, the discipline part of it. Now, we talked to Coach Rule uh, a couple weeks ago, and he talked about kind of the difference of being in the NFL and being in college. Mm -hmm. Now, with the NIL and the transfer portal, have you felt like you've had to change your coaching style at all? When it comes to kids, uh, either getting a little softer with them because now they can just leave whenever they want to, or are you still the same same coach? No, I, and I think you just I think if you have standards in the I think if you make sure the players understand the standards before they get there. Um, one of the reasons with the transfer portal, in my opinion, is that kids get recruited one way and they're like, man. This guy was a dog when he was recruiting me. I loved him. And then they get on the field and he's like, he's a totally different person. You know, I think you, you have to be the same and you have to be consistent in your approach. Yeah. And then if that's something that the players gravitate to, then you're going to get them. If that's not what they're looking for, then you're not going to get them. But getting a player that doesn't want to be at your place isn't, isn't good for him, isn't good for you either. So I think if you articulate on the front end, kind of how we do things and what's expected here, what our standard is as a, uh, and I think Mike Tomlin says it the best, you know, that you got to have a standard. And if you have a standard and we live up to the standard, um, that's what it's about. And I've always learned that if you, if you set the standard, I think people try to live up to a standard. If you tell them about rules, people try to break rules. Oh, bars. Wow. Hey, Chip, you're a deep thinker. Oh, huh? Those drives in the morning. Those <laughs> yeah. drives in in the morning got you really think The standard is the standard is what Coach Tomlin's yeah. saying. Now, that's standard. Coach Tomlin. Yay. A lot Coach, of he's one of the best. I'm telling you. I know you know him. I, I, Coach. I've got all the respect in the world for Mike. Mike's mm -hmm. awesome. Coach, we all do. But I'll tell you what, Pittsburgh's not very appreciative of Mike Tallman, right? Uh -uh. <laughs> City, that's the NFL, though. That's that's why football, I mean, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Wait, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Been there, done that. yeah, Tone has a question for you, Coach. Yeah, Coach, let's talk about the most important uh, position in sports, and that's quarterback. And this time last year, you landed a, a five star there in Dante Moore. Now he he left. He's he's in Oregon now. Um, does something like that happen in where you recru recruit a five star high school guy and he leaves after a year? Does that change? how you recruit that position or do you go like, does it make you think like maybe I'll just do transfer portal quarterbacks all the time? How is that? How are you treating the quarterback position with the portal and with the freshmen coming in and things like that? No, I, and I don't think you can cookie cut or anything. You can say we did this, we'll do that. Um, I love Dante. I think he's a special young man. Um, we have a quarterback competition here and Ethan Garbers um, really at the end of the year took, took the job and earned the job. And we played really well. We beat SC. He played really well in our bowl game for us. Um, it's just the nature of the position. I think if you look at the transfer rate for all quarterbacks, it's probably the highest position that transfers in uh, in college football. Impactful just quarterback, one guy, named quarterbacks. Yeah, it's crazy. Only, only one guy can play. And I think when you factor in some of the other factors like NIL and some of those things, um, it becomes a different world, but I don't think you're, you'll ever say we're not going to do this. We're not going to do that. I think it's you treat everybody as, as a, an individual and you try to get to know them as well as you can based on the NCAA rules. Um, and then you try to make it work. And that's that's what you try to do. And it's um, sometimes it works somewhere for some same in the NFL guys that you see them at one team and they don't do anything. Then they go to another team and they flourish. You know, it's um, it's it's an interesting dynamic in this game. Um, but I think you continue to going back to what I talked about earlier is this is how we do things. And does that fit for what you're looking for? What is the plan for your UCLA team? Like, obviously we're going into the off season. We're going to get stronger. We're going to get faster. Have you mapped out yeah. like what you think the next few years look like for your teams and like yeah. what expectations, like, everything like that? 
Yeah, we're excited because we're going to the Big Ten for the first time. So, you know, we, we get to play um, different opponents. Um, we get to play at some really cool places. We get to play at Penn State this year. We're really excited about that opportunity. Um, we have an out-of-conference game. We played LSU a couple years ago here. We have to now go back to LSU. So we get to play in some of the coolest places in college football this season coming up. And our players are genuinely excited about that. You know, there's obviously a lot of work to do to play against teams like that. Um, but it'll start for us on January 8th when we get back for winter quarter. Um, our kids are off on break now because we played on Saturday. So um, we'll hit the ground running when we get back here on January 8th and, and prepare for the 24th season. Enjoy that break, boys. Mm -hmm. Enjoy totally. that break, boys. <laughs> if, it's, if that January 8th start is anything like what it used to be like. We're, we're right back in it. Oh, running. buddy, right, we are hitting the ground running a lot. <laughs> yeah. We are hitting the ground running a lot. Ty has a question for you, Coach. Coach, I'm curious, with NIL, with NIL now, uh, like L.A. used to always be such a major selling point, I feel like, when you would get guys from you know the Midwest or, or wherever it may be because of you know the weather and all that kind of stuff. Has it almost turned into, I don't want to say a detriment, but a little bit tougher because of the... I don't know, maybe like the expectation with Hollywood being right there and like guys coming in kind of expecting a certain thing in terms of what they're owed money wise. Like, have you noticed that at all uh, with your time at UCLA or not really? Yeah. I mean, there are programs in college football that are like the New York Yankees, and there are other programs in college football that are like the Pittsburgh Pirates. And it's. Wow. You just, you just have to adjust. Coach, Watch it. You just have to adjust. No, I'm just Pat. You know, do the do the Pirates have as much money as the Yankees? Well, we don't Are know. The, the, the owner Pirates doesn't spend it. Were <laughs> <laughs> the Pirates involved with Juan Soto? No. No. Okay. Because they can't afford that. So I think everybody understands, no matter where you are, what are the rules of engagement based upon the school that I'm at, and then you adjust. But but I will say this about. And I like this all the time. There's no crying on the yacht. Like, we're coaching Power 5 football. Like, this is – we got to figure it out. Our job is to come up with solutions to to figure out no matter what the situation is, if this school has different than we have. that We don't really concern with that. Um, right. I think if you build your program on strong principles, the right guys will find you. Well, Coach, we appreciate the hell out of you joining us on this glorious Tuesday. What's the rest of the day look like? What have we got the rest of the day? Hypothesizing? Mm -hmm. More ideas? We got more ideas? <laughs> No, no, no. We're, we're working. We got a, a lot of uh, transfer portal film to continue to go through because kids keep coming into, into the portal every single day. <laughs> Signing day is tomorrow. We got to just make sure all of our kids will get their stuff in tomorrow morning um, and prepare for that. And then uh, and then our coaches will have a little bit of time off for Christmas and New Year's and then we're right back in the office. So. All right, well, good luck with signing day. Good luck with the transfer portal. Good luck this offseason with everybody. winter workout. And we appreciate the hell out of your brain. Ladies and gentlemen, coach, the UCLA Bruins football team, now in the Big Ten, mm -hmm. Chip Kelly. Yeah, Chip. Imagine the amount of, hey, see you, man. Imagine the amount of uh, shit that he got from, like, volleyball team. Oh, my God. Oh, uh, so we got to go. To Rutgers? Yeah. We got to go to Happy Valley, Penn State. That's a six-hour, yeah. seven-hour. And we got to drive an hour and a half to get in there for a volleyball game now. Because you guys won the right play your game. Okay. That shit, a basketball yeah. team too. They got a lot of history to basketball. Team. Uh, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Like what he was saying with Arizona, like that is a massive deal that UCLA and Arizona aren't going to play in yeah. basketball anymore. Like two of the most storied, you know, programs in the history of college basketball. The conference champions. Yeah. yeah. How about him saying, Bill Wong's we're a $100 million company. Mm -hmm. We we disappeared like Bed Bath & Beyond yeah. just out of nowhere. That's that was like cool. over a week period. Remember? Yeah. Yeah. They potentially had a deal done with Apple. Mm -hmm. I yep. think it's what we all heard and mm -hmm. thought. And then the next week, no deal. And then all of a sudden, the contract just gets ripped apart by mm -hmm. a network. Mm -hmm. Not this one. No. no. And then all of a sudden, Pac-12 schools, hey, you're shit out of luck. You got to yep. figure this whole thing out. And then it's like, well, now we're going Big Ten, ACC. There's two schools out. It's like, damn, that happened very, very quickly. I love his idea, though. Yes. Let's make this thing just yep. divisions. we we'll play against other divisions. Now, if you pull the SEC as a division, you're going to have a long day, potentially. Yeah. You're going to have yeah. a long season. Yep. But you, you have the NIL. You have transfer portal. You can make your teams good, too. The amount of money that could potentially be used for college football as a whole, yeah. CFB is just what it's called, right? Yeah. So the NFL would just be CFB. Yeah. Who do you got this week? And boom, you'd still be able to have the games, the marquee games in prime time. It would make everything better. It would be very good. But the amount of shit that has to get figured out Man. to get to that point, the amount of humans you have to get on the same page. He just talked about how the coaches would say something, then the ADs would say something, mm -hmm. and then the presidents would be the complete opposite. You have to have all those people on the same page.
That's just a one school. Very different group of humans, too. Yes, oh, academia okay. people yeah. mm -hmm. are now involved. And what you have to do, just go one commissioner? Yeah. I, yeah. Personally, I believe you have to have one person yep. making the And then decision. obviously he has a team. There has to be a finger to point somewhere, I think, whenever you're making big decisions. And I think you would need one commish. And then if he's not doing a good job or she's not doing a good job, you get them out, you get another mm -hmm. commish. But getting everybody to get to the point of where we have a league – is so many agreements that yeah. have to take place, and so many people have to be on the same page, including money people. You're, yeah, and it's like I don't know. You're starting a multi-billion-dollar. Yeah, that's a that's a long that's a lot to get done. I appreciate he's saying we well, smart people figure it out because yeah. that's our line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, smart people, figure, figure it out. out. That's our line. Mm -hmm. But that is what we potentially need. How many of them are there? I well, don't know. and think of like because I I don't know how you would do it where like everyone evenly gets a piece of the pie because that's not necessarily fair either and like some of these schools that are in conferences that have a pretty cushy sit like setup where it's like you're getting all that all that money and like you're never really gonna win your conference championship but you're still getting a, a big chunk of that pie like why would those schools ever be like yeah we don't really want to do this anymore we'll we'll evenly redistribute all of this and then you look and it's like, oh, we're making actually $30 million less than we would have been had we just stayed in the Big Ten or whatever. What do you say? We're getting $75 million from the Big Ten. Yeah. That money's going everywhere. That's a big number. I thought it was like 40 something. I no, thought it was getting, too. It must have, I mean, after the them adding the four new. I thought they were getting less because they came in a year later after the deal was already done. But yeah, the, the original Big Ten teams I knew were getting close to 70. The um, good luck out there. Hey, we're just happy to be a small part of it. Yeah. Listen to Chip. Get to watch it. Make too much sense, though, so you know it's never, never ch no, no chance. chance. No. no chance. Did you hear the judge in West Virginia extended it for the entire year as opposed to just two weeks? Nice. Well, you saw what the NCAA did. What's the, what the, the same day that uh, the AG was on, They what did they come out and say that there's no guarantee that you won't get penalized after? Yeah, but then it got extended for the rest of the year, I believe. And I don't know if the NCAA came out again and said something. I but I do know there was a couple other schools that said, you heard it, we're back. Mm -hmm. and they're playing the people. So who knows what else is going to fall into the limiting wages thing that has now been added into the lawsuits against the NCAA because money being involved with players means you're that's a worker that's somebody trying to earn money for themselves and their family so if you are holding them back you're potentially holding back growth in a like business sense yeah. mm -hmm. which is not legal in the United States so then good at attorneys attorney general of West Virginia and Patrick, Patrick Morrissey Morrissey, Morrissey. Mm -hmm in front of all those books More dog. was mm -hmm. like, wait a minute. This isn't just like a, you're screwing student athletes type thing. This is a employee, employer type situation also that you're hinging upon. And judges, you know, I think they're more apt to lean in favor of workers, especially in 2023 with everything mm -hmm. that took place uh, the last couple of years with everybody. It's like, that's a whole new added weapon for these people to potentially attack the NCAA. But then the NCAA comes the back and they're like, well, we have them on scholarship. Is a scholarship doesn't matter. Well, like that whole conversation starts in there. But I feel like there's massive it's, change coming. It's it's so wild right now. I saw it yesterday. So Dion, not a shock, has been killing the portal again. You got four new offensive linemen and then obviously the five star he got out of. Number one yeah, tackle. You got, in the, in got five new O linemen, but the one who went from IU to Colorado just flipped his transfer portal. Uh, <laughs> call from Colorado to Oregon. So like people are now not just they're transferring two places within the same transfer portal window. So they probably come to a deal mm -hmm. with Colorado. Hey, you got more here? And then they hear late last second, which adds in a whole other thing about rules. Yes. About business guidelines and how everything could go. But the more money these players get good for them. Yep. Good on them. You want to talk about money? Uh Oregon got Gabriel and Dante Moore. I don't. I wonder what they're paying for two quarterbacks. In. Yeah, Dante Moore young, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Dylan Gabriel old. Yeah. So one year probably Dylan Gabriel. Yep. And they probably explained to them they've got to do this. And Phil Knight's like, cool, we just dropped him this year. Yeah, so, easy. Whatever you need. You know what I mean? We just dropped a brand new version of the shoe that we dropped 10 years ago. Looks the exact same. But since shoes have gotten to a point where they all look so asinine, everybody wants to buy what our old shoes uh -huh. look like. So we can get 10 Dylan Gabriels if we'd like out of there. No problem. And that's the weapon of having Nike. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Literally pushing you. Bingo. Nike sponsors a lot of schools. Yeah. A lot of schools benefit from Nike. Mm -hmm. Nike pays a lot of money to a lot of people. But they're paying the most amount of money to one particular school. And they always have. Mm -hmm. Like back before this NIL thing happened, do you remember what Oregon's locker room used to look like? Oh, yeah. Gosh. I used to see pictures of that while I was sitting in a high school type locker room in West Virginia my freshman year. Just worst 
locker room maybe I've ever been in, or maybe Jeez. ever yeah. that that freshman year at West Virginia. And you get like pictures of what like Oregon's locker room looks like. It's like, oh, these guys are living like kings over here. <laughs> now everybody All has room. that particular so thing. And, and not only the locker room, the lounge area, yeah. the barber. rehabilitation area, the barber is always set up. It's like that's brand, that's everything. Ooh. Oregon had that before everybody, though. Oregon, like, took advantage of that. So they're smart with the way they utilize all their money as well. So good luck to everybody in this new world that is college football. Let's go to the NFL a little bit. Uh, Matt LaFleur spoke out about, you know, the defense coordinator for his particular program, saying he'll be the defense coordinator for the rest of the season. Nice. So everybody just needs to relax. Matt LaFleur has potentially openly stated that he has Joe Barry's back as yep. defense coordinator. Now, the hate against Joe Barry as the football coach, not the human. Football coach, Great defense guy. coordinator, good human. We don't know, but at all, probably assume. Hopefully, he's committed his life to football. We appreciate that. Right. But as a defense coordinator, it's gotten very loud about how bad this guy sucks. Ty, one of the loudest people saying on his birthday yesterday, oh, yeah. became a voice of reason for almost all Packers fans. I was reading a lot of the comments that came from the video in which you roasted Joe Barry and what he did and what the future probably looks like with Matt LaFleur, who's too scared or won't pull the trigger on firing a guy. A lot of people are saying, preach it, preach it, preach it. I didn't know if today you wanted to walk those things back maybe because it got too loud or if you wanted to expand upon some of your thoughts because this is the first time I've seen you diligently – Googling things mm -hmm. and then handwriting these notes. Would you like to talk a little bit more about Joe Barry, the defense coordinator, who will be the defense coordinator for the rest of the season? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm absolutely not going to walk it back. Okay. I mean, I don't know what. Can't do that. Okay. Can't do that. Everyone who watches the games knows. And you know, this morning I, I didn't plan on doing this. You know, nope. I was just like, okay, whatever. But you know, some people on Reddit, uh, they event. It's, it's gotten too far. It's gone too far. Everything I said yesterday I felt was right. But, again, you just never know. It was a moment of passion. Yep. Kind of just <laughs> – but – but luckily, people on Reddit have kind of compiled uh, something that's a little bit more palatable to say out loud. So since 2000, there have been 68 defensive coordinators in the NFL who have had at least five seasons as a defensive coordinator. Okay. Only four of those have never had an above-average uh, defense in the NFL. Joe Barry's obviously one of them. So was Chuck's brother, uh, John Pagano. Oh, well, no. Yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, well, I, I, I saw that. Broke my heart. Hey, broke my heart. Bart, John. A couple others. Yeah, Football well, a couple players. others. Yeah, Jim Haslett was in there, too, and then some other guy I'd never heard of. But uh, so he's had he's had three defensive coordinator jo jobs. So it started in Detroit. Rod Marinelli was the head coach. He uh, is married to Rod Millinery's uh, daughter. So I assume that's how he got the job. 2007, uh, they were 31st in uh, points per drive or points allowed total defense. Terrible. No big deal. He gets the job next year. What do they do? They go 0-16. He gets fired. So does everyone else. Goes to Washington. Gets hired by Jay Gruden. Okay. 2015, banner year for Joe Barry. Best best defense he's ever had. They were 19th in points allowed per drive, 28th in total yards. So, you know, not bad. That is the, that is the best defense he's ever had ben in his break. career. Yeah, exactly. Ben, but don't break. Sure. Uh, I didn't check what their record was, but I'm guessing that Washington was dog shit that, that year. Uh, 2016. Bounce back a little bit. Um, 24th in points per drive. So, you know, not terrible. 28th in uh, total yards allowed again. And then 29th in defensive success rate, whatever that means. Basically, to sum this up, uh, in his three years in Green Bay, they are the 31st ranked defense when you tabulate all three years together. So, no, this guy has never gotten any better. He still sucks. He should be fired, but he won't because that's the Packers. We'll see you next hour. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, how's it going? My name's Pat McAfee. I used to hold balls for Adam Vinatieri. Now I'm in his home state. College game day is absolutely electric in Brookings. Yeah! So College game day has made the voyage to Brookings, South Dakota to experience a game with the best fans in college football. I unfortunately cannot attend because I have a game this Sunday, so I sent a man I trust to make my picks. A man who is my holder for almost a decade. Please be nice to him. Welcome this week's celebrity guest picker, Pat McAfee. Go big, go blue, go Jacks. Let's see Auburn. 
Yes, everybody saw this. The best fake putt in the world. What do you think, Pat? I absolutely loved it all the way up until execution time. That is not one we like to show in the brand headquarters and punting and kicking world. Oh, dance off. Oh, let's get weird. Oh. Yes, oh. duck that, huh? Bang! Right oh. off the top of the dome. That makes it a lot easier when you've got a dummy standing right in front of you like that. Running, running. He's... Oh! How do you get... Daniel Russo! <laughs> wax on! Wax off! Knee to the face! Yes! Go! Yes! Go! Yes! Go. yes. He's being stick. With that thinking, they celebrate by doing shotguns. And I'm going to be fair to that. I'm going to the University of Virginia Catholic. That was great. Whoa! But I'm going Trey. Oh. Please excuse my dumb friend Kirk. <laughs> since 4 a.m. College game day comes to town, they lose their mind. The population of this state is about 800,000, and when the Jackrabbits take the field, they're alongside all 800,000 South Dakotans. The Dakota Bunker was in Fargo for far too long. Today, 5 o'clock local time, the Dakota Marker is back in beautiful Bookin, South Dakota. The following program is a collection of students talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey! Why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for. Ah! The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pay! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice could change their life. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to our humble abode, the Thunderdome. On this Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, December 19th, 2023, hour two of the program starts now. Football! Happened last night, the Seattle Seahawks get a massive comeback victory over the Philadelphia Eagles, who have lost three straight. Mm, Do they have it figured out? People are saying they're done. We shall see a lot of vets on that team, but brand new coordinators, will they be able to figure it out in the NFC race for home field advantage? We shall see you over the next three weeks. The Talks Tables here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt rocking an incredible shirt there. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I'm, I'm glad that it's getting the respect that it finally deserves. It's a shirt that resembles crime fighters mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and pop culture icons. Exactly. Right. It's, like, right. it's like our own Batman, if you will. Who's that? This shirt. Really? Kind of. I mean, if you, if you think about it for a second, yeah, it is kind of as if I'm wearing like a Batman type on my shirt. Anyway, shout out to Dog the Bounty Hunter for catching all those people selling ice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Doing mm -hmm. ice. Oh, yeah. We appreciate him. One half of the hammer. Dime. Dime. Cowboys Tone Diggs is here. Tone, great college football breakdown of the bold bonanza. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. Stumbled a little out of the gates, but we got it together. Yeah, we didn't know who was playing in the game, but once we got in there, we we learned it quickly. Yeah, yeah, I forgot. I was so stuck on just taking a shot at Jerry Richardson that I kind of stumbled there, but that's <laughs> Yeah, you did. You wanted to get that He's in a, a couple guy. times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bad guy stadium. Yep, we yep. get it. West yep. Kentucky, <laughs> Old Dominion yesterday. Today, Old Dominion was up 28 zip. Western Kentucky comes all the way back and wins mm -hmm. in overtime. Bowl season has officially begun. Nine year NFL vet, host of the Man to Man podcast and everything DB. And good D, bad D, ladies and gentlemen, yes, Garrett J. Butler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good D, good D, Joining us now from an attic in Ohio is a man who's a college football national champion, a Super Bowl champion, a Ryder Cup winner, a father of 10, a COVID survivor, and the current president of the state of Ohio. 
AJ Hawker. Yeah, Hawker. Yeah. Hawker, how you doing, pal? You look fantastic. The hair's growing in phenomenally. Oh yeah. Wow. Yes, it, it is a little bit. I'm I'm uh, impressed by Chip Kelly. Not only the fact that he laid out that whole situation of what college football could do, but do you think there's a lot of college football coaches that know what Bed Bath and Beyond even is, let alone the fact that it's bankrupt now or it's out of business? So he, uh, that is funny to think that there are some football coaches who go into coaching and nothing happens in the world outside <laughs> of football for 20, 30, 50 years. Yep. That is just kind of how the football time capsule happens for some of these coaches. He said in the morning, you know, he drives and he thinks. I think that's when he starts, we just went out of business while he's driving. Yeah. Turn signal. We just went right out of business. How? We really did. And then there's probably a going out of business sale sign yep. on something. He's like, we're like them. And then Bed Bath & We're like Bed Bath & Beyond. The amount of deep thinking that man does in the car in the morning is, I, I think, something maybe he should should film someday. Yes. Because he had bars. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Everything. We're, we're dropping bars on everything. You know, you, you set a culture because if you make rules, people want to break them. It's like, all right, okay, so I heard you say that to a team before, mm-hmm. I would assume. And then he, yeah, Aurelius? Yeah, Marcus Aurelius. Marcus Aurelius. Yeah, the success of an organization comes in the uh, managing of the non-obvious. Right. Yes, or something along those lines. He had that. I was impressed as well. He did let me know that he may or may not have never seen our show before, but enjoyed being on. Mm-hmm. Sweet. And had a great time, AJ. You know, that's a good thing. Yeah, he was it was impressive. He really was. I, I like his backdrop too. What he said. He's had this he's been stuck there for the last four weeks. He doesn't have anybody in there to change it for him. Yeah, has no has no interns that set up his uh, media either, just like direct conversation. I've massive respect has grown for Chip mm-hmm. Kelly over the last few days. Very thankful he stopped by. How about our respect for Drew Locke, though, huh? In the Seattle Seahawks team. Wow. AJ, last night was one of those games in primetime that we hope for every single time a primetime game comes on. Obviously, it appears as if the Eagles got it, the Eagles got it, the Eagles got it. They're going to put this thing away. Two minutes left, third and seven. If they pick it up, game over. Instead, they don't get pick it up. I think last year they would have. Seattle gets the ball back on their own eight. In Drew Locke, DK Metcalf, the offensive line, and inevitably, Jackson Smith and J- that catch was absurd. Oh, right there, off his thigh. Off his thigh. DK Metcalf makes a play. But that final drive was Drew Locke, DK Metcalf. Mm. That's a big one. Damn. Double team come down. Big foul, that. Great ball. Man. Boom. Ugh. Give me that. DK Metcalf. And they could have done this all game, you would assume, but whenever they needed it, they certainly were able to do it. And then the game ends with Jackson Smith and Jigba getting the rock in one-on-one coverage against Bradbury. And Drew Locke, after the game, said, as we broke the huddle, I told Jax, I said, hey, if you're one-on-one, I'm throwing the pill. I'm mm-hmm. throwing the pill. And they absolutely did. Massive comeback dub in Seattle. What a moment for that guy who's yeah. been doing the, the tux or suit celebration for a long time moxie through the roof chit chatted about whenever he wasn't playing because he was doing the russell wilson trade from denver to seattle when he wasn't playing you know you start wondering human nature starts wondering then last week he got to play he said i'm still the man still got it. and then he does what he does what a night for seattle and drew lock aj yeah I, I know you played his his uh post-game interview on the on the field that was uh that was cool to see man like how you see okay this truly means so much to these players and obviously drew lock getting emotional and you even said, great follow-up. Like, hey, I sent you getting emotional. Like, that's just – that you should do that. And I, he was very open to talk about it. So credit to him for how he played and I think how he handled it and let him know, like, hey, I'm not too cool for school. Like, this does mean a lot to me. And he gave credit to everybody around him, which everybody. Pete Carroll yeah, – that's a great example. Show that to the, your focus group. I know you talked about Frank Lunch. Show that. That should get some uh, some positive reviews. Did Frank Lunch come uh, to the Green Bay Packers and talk about his focus yes. group? Yes, he did. Uh, yeah, I don't know if it really resonated with the room, but, you know, there's a time and place for that kind of stuff, I think. Training camp, tough place to speak. Oh, my God. Football locker room, tough place. <laughs> in general. To speak, just in general. Coming in and talking to these people as if everybody's running for president of the United States of America and don't say anything, and then being – it's not just his fault. He was set up for failure because all the PR people were like, this is the guy – that we need to be bowing down to. The best. This is the guy who has all the answers. And it was like, he had American flag shoes on, which are cool. I love that. He had some, <laughs> did he Did he have wear those with you guys, I assume? I don't know if he did. I think it, it would have been a big hit if he did have American flag shoes. Well, he was remember. he was wandering around the room a lot. So I saw those shoes yeah. moving, had khakis on. I remember like it was yesterday because I did go to a couple <laughs> sociology classes in college in mm-hmm. okay. Frank Lunt's That's social amazing. groups were actually utilized oh. in a couple of the studies. You know, so when I when I heard he was coming, I was like, oh, I've actually 
I've actually read about Yeah, him, I know right? this guy. I've actually read a little bit about this guy. Joining us now is a man who I assume loves focus groups. Mm -hmm. And the focus groups on him this year say, what he's doing is a lot. Nope. Not a lot to recover from an Achilles this quick. <laughs> Four-time NFL MVP, the current quarterback of the New York Jets, who might be medically cleared to play. Whoa. Ooh. Going into week 16, when he suffered a torn Achilles in week one of the NFL season. Ladies and gentlemen, Aaron Rodgers. Aaron! How you doing, Aaron? Hey, guys. Good to see you. Hey, we're talking about training camp speakers there. Uh, Frank Luntz made his way over to you guys. How'd that go? Pretty good? Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, really, really good speech. When was that? <laughs> I don't know the year, Aaron, but he was there. You, I don't know if you – maybe Aaron opted out of that one, but I'm not <laughs> sure. After 2010 sometime. Oh, there's his American flag shoes. Boom. Yeah. Look, boom. There, there's literally – there he is. That was him. Hey, In the Oval Office. He's president of the United yeah. States? Yeah, he did. Whoa. You were there, Darius? Was, was he a Pittsburgh no guy? Chance. I, don't, I, I only remember the Pittsburgh guys that came and spoke, so I'm, I'm not sure. Well, if Pittsburgh people were speaking, you should listen. Uh, from my understanding, because it's either going to be incredibly entertaining, incompetent, mm -hmm. or, you know, intelligent. Mm -hmm. One and one or the other. Uh, let's talk about your life right now. Where are you right now? Green screen? We're doing a, a movie shoot? We're on Avatar? I am in, I am in John Vieira's office here uh, in the, uh, at the facility. Just finished up some uh, rehab for the day and some conversations. And... Uh, Thought I'd stick around here to do this with you guys and then head on home. Okay, well, we're thankful that you're doing it. We, I wish we could change the background there. Oh, you know, yeah. we got the North Pole here. Yeah, it's a we, great, got, we got the North yeah, Pole here. Good one there. It's fake. Yeah, it's fake. No, it's that's the North Pole. It's a live stream. Live looking. Yep. See the snow falling? Mm hmm. Look, they got the sign and everything. I don't see it. The snow's not, the snow's not falling. Look at that. Uh, yeah, no, <laughs> North Star. <laughs> Shining shine bright. <laughs> that's a little one. Anyways, where's the where's the magi? Is that hmm? is that supposed to is it Connor, Ty, and DB are the magi or what? What do we got? Well, what's uh? Well, it's the, what's, the, what's the modalities with the magi. We just don't really touch well, that. Is the magi is magi? What is the magi? A bomb will like, snowman, I, I don't know. Magic like magic? Is that what ma magic? Well, the three the three yeah, three, uh, wise, three wise men. Three, three wise men who went. Saw so Jesus. They followed the, oh, uh, the star. Yeah. I thought that's where you point to there. I think Jesus was Brought him gifts gold. of gold, frankincense, and frankincense. Heart. There we go. Yeah. I got the frankincense. Uh, North Star's been used a lot for a lot of people. I did not think about the Magi, though. I Does not Jesus live at the North Pole? Bethlehem. Jeez. You said Jesus. Does Jesus live at the North not, Pole? Not Bethlehem, PA, though. Okay. Not Bethlehem, PA. No, it's over. Yeah. Over great there. city, though. Great city. Speaking of great city, uh, New Jersey. Is a state, obviously. <laughs> um, New York is a city, though, that is pumped <laughs> about your future with the New York Jets. We saw a video this past week, and a lot of them, of you on the sideline during that game that was not great for the New York Jets against Miami. A lot of facial reactions, a lot of head shakes, a lot of... Uh, blah, blah, blah. I saw a big bubble blow at one point. You know, you're one of the best bubble blowers mm -hmm. still on TV in 2023. I want to let you know that. Uh, always chomping on the gum. You seem disgusted with a lot. Obviously, the game did not go anywhere near how you guys thought it would. There was a video, though, that was sent to us from iRocky83, which was watching you on the sideline. And we noticed some things here, Mr. Rogers. For instance, we wondered if you're ever going to be able to get up on your toe. That was the big conversation. Look at the rock. Look at the rock. And, ooh, ooh we're up. Oh. Ooh, Boom. we're up. Boom. 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 We're up higher oh, yeah. on that one. Now, we appreciate the internet sleuthing there that Iraqi did, uh, 83, to get that. But there's a conversation now about you being medically cleared, and we see you going up onto your toes. We see you last week at practice. How do you feel? Where's your state of mind? And what are we thinking and talking about when it comes to playing football again? Yeah, I mean, I've been progressing steadily. Uh, once I was able to start jogging, uh, on the Alter G at about uh, between the eighth and ninth week, things have progressed uh, pretty good. I came out here uh, right before Thanksgiving, continued my rehab, and uh, was able to uh, get on the practice field uh, in a limited fashion the last three weeks. Most of my stuff has been, uh, like you've seen, kind of thrown on the side, individual work. This last week I took uh, QB Center Exchange. I did some stuff with the running backs. Uh, I've been doing the seven-on-seven uh, flight school, which is basically uh, twos and threes, P-Squad guys um, that I've asked to do uh, at the end of the day. So that's been fun to uh, to do that. Didn't do any 11 on 11 stuff. Um, I think the whole time it's been, uh, you know, hoping that we're still in it. 
because it, it was unrealistic to think that I would be uh, 100% uh, to be medically cleared um, at any point during the regular season. Um, I do feel like, uh, you know, in the next three to four weeks, uh, it would be very possible to get to 100%, um, but obviously not there. And, and so the conversation was, uh, away from 100% medical clearance to a willingness to play. And that's never been a problem for me. Uh, in 2018, uh, when it was a rough year, uh, as Ty remembers, uh, we had uh, you know, a rough stretch. Uh, Mike got fired. Joe became the interim coach. Um, we uh, went and played Atlanta at home, beat them, and then went to Chicago and lost. Uh, I think they might have uh, – won the division that day, we were kind of uh, eliminated from the playoffs. Next week, we played the Jets, and there were a lot of people thinking, was it going to play or not? And, and my thought was always, well, I'm, you know, uh, nobody's 100% in week 16, but I felt like, okay, I'm, I'm feeling really good. Uh, I want to play. I want to be out there with the guys. We had a really uh, kind of magical game that day. And again, it went to overtime that we ended up winning uh, on a touchdown walk-off to Devontae. Um, but that was – you know, I felt 100%, so it was never a question whether or not I should play. If I was 100% uh, today, um, I'd be definitely pushing to play. Um, but the fact is, I'm not. I've been working hard to uh, to get closer to that, but I'm still, you know, 14 weeks uh, tomorrow from my surgery and, uh, you know, being medically cleared uh, as 100% uh, healed is just uh, not realistic at, uh, at 14 weeks. So I think everybody says that makes a lot of sense. Okay. Like if you were willing to risk not being 100% to get back in there for a team that had a chance to go on a run and make the playoffs and do everything, I think that would have made sense too as people. I think we would have been like, all right, that makes sense. If he's at 70%, 75%, whatever it is, but they still have a chance to go on a run, this is still a storybook, right? This is still a storybook. It still would have been, it still would have, you know, again, we're, we're in the hypothetical world, so it still would have been, I would have, you know, if we win Sunday, then I need to go through a week of, 11 on 11 practice, taking team reps, seeing how I respond to that, seeing how much I can move in the pocket, uh, seeing uh, can I get out of the pocket. Um, so there still would have been a conversation. It would have just been, it wouldn't have been, hey, we won, you're activated, you're for sure playing. Now, I, obviously, um, being a competitor, uh, I would have pushed it as hard as I could this week, but um, but it still would have been a conversation. I would have had to, you know, check all the boxes, practice well, respond well. Uh, the next day after some of these uh, 11 on 11 sessions and then the conversation between uh, Woody and Joe and Robert and uh, Dave and the medical staff and Neil Elitrosh, uh and myself to determine whether or not uh, they were going to ultimately clear me. Okay, so there have been a lot of steps to get through, but there's potential that we would have been able to. Do you still feel as if all the hard work to get back as quick as you are was good? Like, you feel like we changed the – I think so. I think, like, you changed the thought on the Achilles this year, even though we're not seeing you back this week, apparently, or the next couple of weeks because the team has been completely eliminated or not at 100% yet. So do you feel like there has been a change? I think so. I think it's still a job well done out of you. I hope so. I hope so. I hope, I hope that uh, – you know, I have talked to a lot of different people that have sustained, uh, you know, Achilles injuries since mine – and passed along all the information that I could about what's worked for me and what hasn't worked. I'm still checking in on Kirk and Jalen and, and JK and, and all the different guys that I've gotten to know uh, during this you know difficult time. Um, but I think if anything, it, it shows if you were to have this injury, uh, you know, an off season workout, uh, summer workouts or something that coming back to play is uh, not just a possibility, but a, prob a probability if you do it the right way and you, and you rehab and be smart about your diet and, Obviously, I'm a firm believer in, in Neil and everything that he does and the amazing people, uh, Heather and Double A at Elite and uh, all their incredible therapists there. Um, but there's a lot of great people across the country who can do this rehab. There's a lot of information out there. There's a lot of different, like we joke about, modalities you can do to increase your healing. But I think diet is very, very important. I think getting on your feet as quickly as possible is very important as well. There's some doctors that don't do that. They take their time with it, which is fine. Um, I believe in, in getting on your feet and moving it quickly. And I think that there's hope that if you were to have the, an injury in the off season, that it, it's not out of the question to be ready for week one and definitely not out of the question to be ready for the season. So hopefully uh, this isn't looked at as kind of a one-year kind of loss of a year death sentence moving forward. And 
um, you know, the surgeries have gotten better, the rehab ideas have gotten better, and there's ways to, to supplement that through uh, really through diet and, and vitamins, I think, that can, uh, that can put you in a better position. Go ahead, AJ. Does coming back like at such a quick pace, is it more, are you worried that you're going to rupture that same Achilles again, or is it something else in your body that tends to go? I know that when you hurt something, you can make up for it and, uh, you know, you tear something else. Like, what do you, what do, I guess is the biggest worry when you talk to doctors about coming back early? Well, it's, it's what we talked about the entire time, about the difference between stretching and stressing. You know, you got to allow that, uh, that Achilles to heal up completely uh, before you're uh, stretching it. Um, but there's, you know, again, there's a lot of different ways to attack this rehab. I tried to get on my feet quickly and, and kind of cut a lot of the protocols in half um, just to see if I can do it a different way. And I wanted to push it for the first two months as hard as I could and get to that eight-week mark and see where I was at and then uh, adjust accordingly the, uh, the rehab schedule after that. So like at eight weeks, I felt really, really good. I was walking basically normal. I was able to start jogging on the Alter G. Um, so that's why I pushed it as hard as I could. I wouldn't have done anything differently. Um, I wanted to, you know, to get back. Uh, were we in a position where we were looking like a playoff team and the possibility of uh, uh, of getting into playoffs um, without me was was going to happen? Uh, being ready for first round of playoffs to me would be an absolute no brainer. I had kind of always circled the twenty fourth in my own in my head from the day I, I got hurt to the next day, I, th I thought, okay, um, no one's come back quicker than 18 weeks. Uh, 14 weeks would be the week of the Washington game. I'm going to put my sights on that, focus on that. Okay. Um, so I feel good about where I'm at now to, uh, to at least there would have been a conversation about it. Um, but it was always going to be a difficult rehab and always going to be a difficult comeback. But, uh, you know, I'm thankful for all the people that reached out throughout the process, all the information that was shared with me, all the great, you know, attention I had from not just the amazing people here uh, at One Jets Drive, but everybody at Elite. And obviously, Neil has been fantastic through this whole process. And um, there's been a lot of these injuries. And I, I feel that, you know, through what I've learned on my own, through my rehab, through my own research and through the research of, uh, you know, AAA and AA and Heather and all the amazing Boy, people I've been around. Uh, you know, I have a better idea about uh, how to pass on the knowledge uh, that I've learned through this process. But, um, you know, there's always the fear about uh, re-rupture if you're, if you're going too fast. But uh, this allows me to, uh, you know, I'm not going to slow my rehab down. I'm going to keep attacking it uh, every single day. But uh, now without a timetable uh, to come back, obviously we can uh, be as smart as we need to be. Yeah, we can't wait to see it all. And it's been an honor to learn all of this about the Achilles. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, we've, mm -hmm. you know, I've learned more about the Achilles I think the world has over the last 14 weeks than, uh, than ever before. Mm -hmm. So we appreciate how open you've been about the entire process and how aggressive you've been in your rehab to get back and make it happen. And that Achilles factory... You know, it introduced us to Arnold Schwarzenegger. Big yeah. yeah. So Sweet. we're very grateful. You know, we're very grateful for it all. We appreciate you, though, man. Way to kick ass for this whole yeah. thing. Way to kick ass for this whole thing. There could be a lot of hard times during recovery and rehab, especially whenever you're trying to do something that nobody's ever done before very publicly. Mm -hmm. You know, like kind of say there's going to be a lot of people that want to. We appreciate you, man. Genuinely. Now let's talk about next year. Darius has a question. Oh, yeah. Now that uh, probably not fully flipping the switch because obviously the season's still going on with your team, but individually not coming back this year. Now you've been documenting some of this behind the scenes as well. Is next season, will next season be the last dance for A-Rod oh. in New York? Oh. Oh. I, do, I don't think so. You know, oh. I, I felt like when I came here that I got uh, kind of a renewed passion and love for the game. And everything has been uh, amazing here. Just the people I've gotten to work with, the relationships I've gotten to form with my teammates and the amazing men and women that work here at One Just Drive has, has been really special. Um, I wanted, you know, at least two years. I feel like this year is kind of a lost year now that I only played a couple snaps and wasn't able to go out there and, and uh, improve what I'm capable of and, and see uh, what we're capable of as a team. Um, I don't think that next year will be my last year. Um with some of the things that, that I've learned over the last year, taking care of my body and, and surrounding myself with some, some great people who've been uh, helping me with my nutrition and my functional training uh, at, a, at a more acute level, uh, I feel like I can play uh, more years and I can be effective. 
uh, into my 40s, which is crazy because I thought that I'd probably be sitting on a couch somewhere at, uh, at 40. But now I, you know, I want to be a starter at 40. I want to be a starter at 41. I want to mm. see uh, what I can get out of this body. I believe in uh, the leadership that we have here. I believe in our guys. I think uh, it's not a situation where we have to uh, rebuild. Um, we need to, to uh, reload a little bit. Uh, and there'll be some tough decisions for sure. But uh, I like uh, the pieces that we have in place. I like our young players. We got a lot of a lot of great young players who are stepping into more of a leadership role in their second and third years. There's some guys who just got paid who are incredible players, like Quinn Williams, who's got a chance to be an all pro in the league for a long, long time. His brother has had one of the uh, most outstanding years for an inside backer, I think, in the league. And I think he's finally getting the respect that he deserves. Uh, CJ has been a rock for us as our captain on defense. But a lot of great uh, performances this year, especially on the defense side of the ball. I think Sauce, although you won't see the interception numbers jump out, has had a fantastic year. Nobody just try, nobody really throws his way. And then on the other side, the guy's getting a lot of work. DJ Reed has had a fantastic season. So proud of those guys. I think Tony Adams has had a really nice year for us um, as uh, you know, undrafted player who's just gotten better every single week. Jordan White has been uh, great for us in the back end. Our D line uh, speaks for itself. They're six, seven deep, and they've been. Fantastic all season long. Quinnen obviously has had a fantastic year inside. Um, Quinn Jefferson's had a really nice year playing interior tackle for us. Solomon Thomas has had a fantastic year, had a great game. Uh, JFM is a stout, you know, solid player on the edge for us. Bryce Huff has made himself a lot of money this year. Oh, yeah. uh, Will McDonald is a bright future in the league. Um, so there's a lot of pieces in place. Most of those guys will be back. Uh, some of those guys might get opportunities to get paid somewhere else, and, and uh, hopefully they do. I want to see everybody get paid. Offensively, we got to you know we got to re, uh, reload a couple uh, a couple spots, but uh, I think we got some great pieces in place. We have two outstanding game breaker players uh, to build around in, in Garrett Wilson and, and Brees Hall, uh, who've had nice seasons, and and uh, I think the future is is very bright, uh, you know, in uh, in New Jersey for our guys, and and uh, we'll finish out the season the right way, and and uh, be a long off season for sure. But um, I like uh, I like the men that we have. Uh, on the squad i like the characters that we have and we just got to add a couple pieces to it and uh and the goals will, will still be the goals it's getting real loud bro it's getting real loud everything you just said i agree with you said amazing things and this year the way it was supposed to go got derailed literally four plays into the whole thing but it's getting loud out of those jets fans yeah. you know they are they first year first time long time going into the season Real hope. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Real optimism. Super Bowl. You know? And it almost made it even worse because then all of a sudden they had hope and now it's gone completely. And then things like this past weekend happen, it's getting, which leads to this from Con Man. Yeah, Aaron, uh, real quick too, conspiracy update, massive list coming out next year. You should be pumped about it. We all are. But uh, one big thing that's being <laughs> talked about right now, and, you know, it's happening everywhere. It's not just New York. And obviously it's amplified in New York. But, I mean, they're talking about firing Bill Belichick, who's the greatest head coach and GM of all time. So no matter what, when your team struggles, those conversations are going to happen in the media. But with everything that's happened with the Jets this year, um, for you personally and just in general, for players who are injured and, you know, who are watching and can't actually, you know, help during the game, um, is it much more difficult when that is happening and also the guys that you, you know, have grown to love and have relationships with, Salah, Douglas, Hackett, when those guys are getting dragged, does it make it even harder, you know, just to be watching? And is, Was that like an added motivation throughout the year that you wanted to get back? Was that something that also kind of attributed to the, hey, I want to get back to like prove these guys right in the mind of, you know, the people who are covering the team just because it has gotten so loud? Yeah, of course. I think to to not say yes would be to uh, deny a natural human instinct to protect those that you love and you care about. And I believe in Joe Douglas. I think he's put together uh, a lot of great drafts and, and uh, a great roster. We obviously had a number of difficult injuries this season. I believe in Robert Sala. He's a fantastic coach. I think he's about the right stuff. And what you know, what you emphasize, you're going to get. And I think he emphasizes the right things being about the right stuff, how to be a professional. Um, I believe in Nate Hackett. You know, always have. I think the offense that he runs is quarterback friendly. And, uh, you know, obviously it was geared around me and my abilities and what I do well and my ability to get to the line of scrimmage and get us in good play and to survive bad plays. You know, I think that's as big a role for a quarterback to do as anything is how do we survive a play that uh, maybe nobody's open 
or somebody gets beat right away or, or just doesn't look good pre-snap. And I think that's part of a quarterback's job. It's not just to make the splash plays, but to make uh, uh, make the right play when things don't look great. Uh, so, yeah, you know, it's it comes with uh, playing uh, in New York and being a Jet or a Giant. You know, it's, it's a great media, that, uh, very passionate. Our fan base is incredibly passionate. You know, 13 years without going to playoffs is tough. And so naturally, this reaction from fans across the league, uh, albeit uh, sometimes uh, misguided, you know, I think I think uh, people want snap decisions. Uh, and I can't believe the Belichick stuff because I've played against Bill a number of times. I have most of our respect for him. He's been the best coach in the league for a long time. Like you said, you got to say, Pat, which was so awesome at the uh, Army-Navy game. Just reminding him who he is uh, out loud so everybody can hear that you're the best coach and GM of all time. Uh, I think that's uh, that's a pretty fair assessment. So for people to call for his job or whoever else's job, like I understand it. I, res- I respect people's opinions. They you know feel so strongly about it because they love their team so much and they want to be great. Um, you have to also understand that uh, uh, you know there's there's some things that great quarterback play can overcome. I think every great coach over the years has probably had a pretty damn good quarterback and pretty good play. I mean, obviously, uh, Tom and Bill had incredible success and won six Super Bowls together. Um, and it doesn't make Bill a worse coach that Tom's gone. Um, you know, but you but you need stability at the quarterback position to be successful in this league. And look around the league, the teams that are playing the best are yeah. having stellar quarterback play. And they also have a stellar offensive line play. And we've had a ton of injuries up front. You look at this, the five that started the season, Connor McGovern had season in the injury, ABT and Achilles uh, season in the injury. Lakin and, and Makai have been kind of the only ones that have, that have held on. Joe's been guard and, and now at, at center for us. Uh, Billy and Jake, you know, fighting their asses off on the right side, um, but weren't expected to be starters starting the season out for us. So, um, you know, our best teams over the years, you look at the 2014 team I go back to many times, you know, we were really dynamic on offense. and had uh, Jordy and Randall who were playing at a super high level and a young rookie, Devontae Adams. Uh, we had Eddie Lacy in the backfield, but we had five guys up front who were really freaking good. Bakhtiari, Sitton, Corey Lindsley, TJ Lang, and Brian Balaga. And those guys played together. I mean, you know, there, there wasn't a lot of injuries. They played most of the games together. We didn't have a lot of turnover. That's a big part of this whole thing. And, you know, with our center going down, our right guard going down, Makai flipping sides, Dwayne going down, um, we've had a lot of moving pieces up front. And that's made it difficult for the quarterback um, throughout the year. And, you know, it's just kind of been one of those things. You can blame whoever you want to blame, but I would wager to guess it's, it, things would look a, a little bit different, um, you know, with some consistency uh, in guys staying healthy up front and and, uh, and me playing quarterback. And I look forward to, to showing that next year. Hell, yeah, I think everybody's excited. That's why they were so excited this year. Uh, about what it could have been. Although the offensive line was certainly a question going into training camp. It was, mm-hmm. and Robert Sala talked about it. So hopefully that'll be something that gets fixed for next season as the dreams and hopes of all Jets fans will come back as number eight is running on the field with the American flag. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What a moment that was. We'll always hold on to that yeah. night until next year starts. We're going to have more moments like that. That won't be the, that won't be the lasting image that you see of me in a Jet, in a jet jersey. Those can be a lot more... Uh, amazing things to come. It's going to be a long off season for sure, and for Jets fans, it's going to be an extremely long off season. But uh, they've been the night there before. Is yeah. Bingo. The night is darkest before the dawn, and uh, we're going to rise again, and it's going to be exciting. The night is darkest before the dawn. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That is that is right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You need to rain so you can enjoy flowers. Mm-hmm. That's right. These these things. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. If it wasn't for a rainy day, cloudy day. You wouldn't appreciate Sunny Day. Ever. This is just 13 years of a setup mm-hmm. exactly. for next year's happiness in mm-hmm. okay. flowers, in sun, in the brightest dawn that there's ever been. We're all the way back. Yeah. AJ, go ahead, pal. Have you thought about what your offseason is going to look like with the team? I know this last offseason you took part in a lot of the OTAs and different things. You're out there slanging it around. Have you had any kind of talks with anybody about what it might look like this year? Well, not really. Out of respect for the uh, finishing the season, right? I think it's important to not uh, be talking about your off-season travel plans or your schedule. I think true, that's true. not really what it's so, now. It happens for sure, but oh, yeah. I think it's important oh, yeah. to finish the <laughs> yeah. season the right way to be professional. 
you know, this is the last time this team will be together uh, in its entirety. And there's something special about that, regardless if you're playing for the playoffs or not. Um, doing things, finishing out the right way, being a professional, it's a who you know league. Um, so doing things the right way goes a long way for you as a player to make sure you always have a job in this league. Same for coaches. So oh, yeah. um, we got to do, do things the right way. But I'm going to be, uh, you know, doing my usual uh, working out in, uh, on the West Coast. And then uh, once we kind of get, get revved up around the draft, I'll be, uh, I'll be back here and uh, trying to get this thing right. I think it's important. Uh, you know, to uh, to make sure I keep putting my stamp on the, on this offense, and we'll have some new pieces, so I want to make them uh, get on the same page. But I'll still have you know things to do uh, in May and June that'll that'll take me uh, elsewhere. But I'll I'll try and uh, going back be to around. Cage? darkness, dolphin dolphin uh, sex perfect. parties. Ooh. Yeah, what is it? maybe maybe the maybe the latter, the former though. I, I've been there, done that. I don't think I'm gonna go back in a dark cave anymore. I think I've, I've had enough time for contemplation this entire year. You've retired from darkness. Wow. Congratulations. Welcome to the light. You Welcome did to the light, Aaron. Welcome to the light. You Holy did. hell. You beat the game. Thanks, it's huge. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. You, you went into the hole mm. and beat the game. Breaking. I don't need to go back. Nope. What are we doing? I've already done that. Yeah. How, how many days were you in there? How, how long were you in there? Five days and four nights. Is that real right now? Or I thought it was three. Is it really five days you were in that thing? It was three entire days and then parts of two other days, but it was five oh, five in. days and yep, four in. nights. Check in, check in. Yeah. yeah, when you got check in. Afternoon of the first day, it came out the, Did they slip a receipt on the morning of the fifth day. So. The hotel racket, you can't check in until four o'clock, too. What a hey, it's like, at. okay, just get the rooms done. Yeah, yeah. Airbnb, too. All right, what I got? I got three hours now because mm-hmm. my flight, the only flight in here was at this time. Oh, thanks. I just got to sit here. Okay, that's my fault, I guess. Darkness. That's my fault. I think there's some they people on the show who could use some, some time. You know, in darkness, there's some some anger issues from the toxic <laughs> table that could probably get worked out through a little contemplation uh, in the darkness. I like my anger issues. I want them. I'm in the light right now. I'm seeing the Is light. Dog? You, you got dog on your chest right now? With, with, yep. dog with, with Taylor yeah. Swift written below it. Wow. Well, I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, we don't it's like, you have no idea. This is how we start the show. Yep. Nobody does. This is how we start the oh. show. What does that mean? It's like Two th- things on the shirt at the same time. Okay, potentially. Boom. We Boom. didn't even think about maybe it is a Pfizer shirt. I had no idea. No, no, it, it is not, uh, and it, it is not sponsored by or anything of that nature. It's just two goats. Lift up two, your sleeve. Show us your bandage. Two titans of industry. I, look, Tony, I got my one jab, okay? You can just <laughs> leave it at that. But it's just two titans of their own <laughs> kind of world, you know? We're in the middle of like a very serious Jets conversation earlier, and like Connor holds up the question he wants to ask you know it's yeah like, oh, perfect that's for right now send it over before we get there uh aaron there's a list coming out next year yeah. <laughs> we've been waiting updated we're hey, waiting okay, was breaking news you today. don't think he knows he's on the internet a unique amount of time true, mm-hmm. true. Ticker. put it on the ticker yeah you're right put it on that is breaking news <laughs> yeah. that is breaking trying news. to get his name off that list probably you whoa oh geez like, how many 170 170 some people it's gonna, it's gonna open some eyeballs i bet yeah yeah, yeah it's gonna be interesting yeah Speaking of interesting, uh, <laughs> this guy's turning 40 here. Or this guy over here, pretty soon. You know that, right? At the Capitol again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, him and Arthur January Smith. January 6th, yeah, we know. Yep. We know his birthday. Yeah. yeah, the whole no. world knows his birthday. That's right. No, they, they all know his birthday. He might have been one of those undercover agents. We don't, he, he was... He did oh. miss the show that day. He did. Yeah. And there were, a, yep. I mean, not just AJ. There are a lot of people in Atlanta saying Artie Smith also undercover agent. Yeah, they're putting Artie Smith in a lot of pictures trying to get him canceled. So. Yeah, cool. Yeah. They're AI. They're- Was there anybody with a great mustache there? I don't I'm confused. He does have a fantastic mustache. mustache. Have to compliment him on that. Boy, Falcons fans hey, do not seem to enjoy old Artie Smith, which goes back to the NFL, which oh. is mm-hmm. easy come, easy go leak. You have success. We love you. You don't. We hate you. Mm-hmm. Artie's on the ladder there, down there in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially after that Carolina. Well, I'm, a, I'm a fan. For whatever it's worth, I'm a fan. Me too, I think. Yeah, he's yeah. a weapon. He's stout, too. I saw him down in Atlanta in Mercedes-Benz Stadium. And uh, I said, much more he's strapping. Kinda, he's kind of jocked? Kind of jocked, yeah. I said, much more strapping than you could have ever expected. Artie Smith, he goes, that was quite a backhanded compliment. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> well, 
<laughs> well, I mean, he is. He's a lad. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. pretty yoked up. His dad's oh. devil dog. Makes sense. Yeah, his daddy's a Marine. One of ten kids. Is that mm -hmm. what it was? Yep. Insane. Uh, anyways, let's go back to your offseason. There's a big question for Ty. Yeah, Aaron, uh, a lot of rumors basically saying that, like, hey, the Jets are still going to go all in. They're going to sell out, do whatever they can to make sure that they can trade for Devontae Adams. Now, we also saw the alleged reports that as the Jets were courting you, you wrote down a list and basically said, hey, if you don't get these guys, I'm not coming. So figure it out. Uh, just curious, though, going into next year, like what is your expectation in terms of your involvement with the roster construction when you talk about having to retool a little bit, whether that be through like the draft or free agency or like acquiring people via trade? Well, I think it would be pretty similar to uh, various parts of my career where uh, I'm a pretty decent recruiter, so if they have a certain person they want, um, making sure I'm in the loop uh, to have the right conversations with uh, with that free agent. Um, so I, I enjoy those conversations. I think, you know, we'll try and get uh, high character people in here that uh, are about the right stuff, about what we're trying to be uh, be known for. And, you know, Joe and I got a great relationship. So, uh, you know, the lines of communication are always uh, always wide open. Uh, I was actually just talking to him before I came down here. Um, uh, we, you know, we talk weekly, but uh, don't get a chance to sit down uh, all the time. But, um, but we're always, uh, you know, always in communication, and it's a it's a good line of communication between Robert and Joe and myself. And and uh, you know, I'm always trying to help out with uh, you know the chemistry and character stuff. And and uh, you know, I just think that we need we need guys in here who are about the right stuff. And I think Joe's done a good job. I mean, the guys he's drafted the last couple of years are pretty pretty outstanding. Look at some of the big playmakers in the second and third years here. You know, look at the defensive side of the ball with, uh, you know, with Sauce and obviously Garrett on the offensive side of the ball and Jermaine Johnson had such an incredible year for us uh, on defense. Uh, you know, we got to keep drafting well and and uh, bringing guys who are about the right stuff. Um, you know, we'll see what happens with uh, any trades or any of that stuff. Uh, but, you know, I'm always, uh, always kind of in the loop. I'm excited to hear your recruiting tactics, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, are you taking the bird somewhere, laying and saying, hey, let's go to the diner. Let's yeah. do this entire thing. You know, because a lot of these college coaches, you can learn from in the recruiting world, especially with the transfer portal. You know, there's ways to hook this thing up, let alone all the chains that are tossed around over there at the Jets. Remember? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Sauce got one. Woody's got one. Yep. I mean, that could become, like, a, a whole new thing. Welcome to the team. I'm excited to see what the team looks like next year. And remember, Aaron on the ticker told Darius Butler earlier, we got a few years left. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 40 41. This ain't a one year thing. Triple mm -mm. A's got me feeling right. I got abs now. We wrestled the other night and I won. That was an enjoyable experience. Wow. As opposed to what it could be with Triple A. And your body's feeling better than ever, right? I mean, mm -hmm. that is, that is <laughs> what, basically what we said earlier. Body feels good for sure. I mean, I think, uh, you know, people are always trying to bring up uh, science this and science that. <laughs> Diet is one of the, is the most important thing for dealing with a lot of things that are going on with your body. And if you're eating fake food, processed food, genetically modified organisms, uh, high inflammatory foods, mm -hmm. you're going to have a hard time. What and are inflammatory foods? Your, the ones that taste good? Is dairy, that what you're saying? Dairy. There's a lot of different a lot of different ones. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important. I saw something that uh, Dana White was talking about the other day about uh, a doctor that he went to. And, and, and right. blood test is important to Joe. figure out. So everybody has different types of blood and different sensitivities to certain foods and just making sure you're eating stuff that kind of gels with your body uh, uh, constitution is important. So um, a lot of stuff that I've done, you know, with AAA in the past year and really since uh, 2015, just kind of trying to be a lot more intentional with my diet has been important. Now, some of these guys are absolute genetic freaks and doesn't matter what they eat, there's Guys that still enjoy McDonald's, which I don't know why. I can't understand why, but they well, can still go out and play and not put on a ton of weight. Really good. Yeah, tastes really And the apple pies. Mm -hmm. oh, McFlurry. Oh, so far, so Didn't nice. you ever do that when you were growing up where you put the put a Big Mac on the – you know, in the classroom and for the entire year and watch that thing not age a bit. Yes. Uh, like, no, I didn't get I, saw it. I didn't get accepted. If like you did that, it's, it's like finding out finding out how sausage is made. If you if you do that, you, you stop eating that kind don't of. Don't tell me about that about quarter pounder with cheese. Please That's don't. a different animal. Big Mac, obviously. Yeah. Got chicken nuggets for me. I love those things. Just, yeah, so I wouldn't. Hello, I wouldn't eat those. 
chicken I wouldn't nuggets. Eat those well, I've never met somebody that's ever not those. liked chicken nuggets. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's leave chicken nuggets in the barn, okay? We can talk about everything. Else. Well, I think that's what he's saying, though. Everything in the barn mm. is in chicken mm -hmm. nuggets. Oh, no. I think is what oh, yeah. he's saying. Well, you know what? I, I, I don't know if it, if, and I'm only speculating because I saw a couple of you guys, um, but during the year, you know, it's hard. Coaches, you know, spending crazy hours game planning and all that stuff. And a lot of them tend to put some weight on. Oh, he's talking about I feel like it might've happened a little bit during the football season with some of the members of the, <laughs> of the show. So maybe this off season, you know, as, as football is on the back burner, what talk about? Uh, me. you know, we get on no weight watchers or, or start to, you know, do some things to, to, uh, you know, to kind of trim it up a little bit. I'll tell you what, the diet DB, is I'm, tough. DB, I'm not talking to you, DB, you look great. Hey, uh, I appreciate that, Aaron. Shots oh, yeah. oh, isn't that nice, Darius? Yeah. That must be Peace. nice. Hey, geez, isn't so that feel bitch. so good, that type of compliment? Yeah. Darius actually looked like a cross-country runner when the season started. That's right. He is back to yep. looking properly jocked, which is great to see. Been hitting the hawk house. Right. Uh, there you go. Been hitting the hawk house. Bus. A lot of boys in great shape this year. A lot of boys. Last I'm year. Not, I'm not saying you got to be like AJ and only eat, like, eggs and chicken, yeah. which is bizarre. And yeah. luckily he's got an <laughs> amazing wife who, who takes care of him. But uh, – you know, there's one guy that comes in there pretty regularly as well who, you know, played at a certain weight and seems to be trimmed up and pretty jocked himself. And I'm talking about uh, the initials, AQ. Yeah. The Q, yeah, she's going to be really pumped to hear that because all we've yeah, done is just completely shame him. Yeah, it's the worst. He's still For, alive? We check. We got a wellness check on him? Hey, he's not just alive. He thrived. Over yeah. Crush. Oh, yeah. I saw him in a video. Yeah. We got a highlight tape for tomorrow. Ooh, yeah, we got a bunch of them. In the camp yeah. MVP. And it was John the Wick. Green Berets. It wasn't Navy SEALs. He set us up to get killed because I'm like, he's at this Navy SEAL thing. And then he posts a photo of Green Beret camp. I'm like, <laughs> you make hell? me look like an asshole, AQ. You know what I mean? He, I don't think he knew exactly where he was headed. Sure. He had a great time, though. He did do well. Yeah, he was crushing. I just want to I want to put a challenge out there to the boys who are coming out for Tahoe again this year. Like, you know, when you take that shirt off, I want to see you take it off with – a lot of pride. See, he doesn't know about talking. Some oomph. Yeah, I don't know. When you, when you jump in that freezing cold lake, who's like, I want to see you pretty jocked. I don't think I was invited this year to Tahoe. I was ashamed. Uh, I don't think the boys. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Man, I didn't see the email. Did you guys get the email already? I haven't seen one yet, so I think you're fine. Uh, okay. I, I think you're gonna you, you're gonna be there for a while. Now we got to start getting you to climb up the rankings a little bit. Yeah, so to gonna have to get a lot better at golf. <laughs> gonna have to get a lot better at golf. Also, gonna have to get a lot better at walking. Mm -hmm. The shoes are gonna have to be. You know, I've gone two years in a row here trying to like. I want the shoes to look good. Mm -hmm. you know, sure, I'm wearing. A we got no excuses. Jim McMahon's out there on a little scooter, you know, and he's still playing. So. Okay, he's mentally tougher than I am. Mm -hmm. I will tell you that. I I would not go out there if that was the case. But Jim McMahon's a dog. Come on, don't, don't be don't be soft. We saw Butch. Yeah. Butch was still out there getting it. Mm -hmm. War veteran. I would be bummed out if I missed That's him. what he's saying, though. Butch is sinking 35-foot putts on his John Deere, mm -hmm. you know. I'm missing six-foot putts yeah. in front of everyone <laughs> mm -hmm. on a regular basis. <laughs> it is a humiliating event. It was very long, but the company's fantastic. Yeah. And it is a great, it's a nice little mental vacation. Whole body sore, you know. I got bruised toes, all of them. Ugh. Just about to get a chance to go. What, to a, what a warrior. You're a warrior. You're Thank, a, you. You're a warrior. <laughs> Thank you. People forget about that. And I'm think, I'm walking there, and my whole body hurts, and I'm like, Duffner's just been rolling around <laughs> these golf courses mm -hmm. for like 15 years. John Daly yeah. is smoking cigs, what? drinking beers, what? walking these courses. It is not enough respect is given to that at all. Nope. Uh, speaking of respect, we're in a time of year that I think you have yeah. massive respect for. Tone has a question Yeah, and for speaking you. of respect, Aaron, uh, let me remind you, be a friend, tell a friend, tell somebody something nice that might save their life today. And so far today, you've called me fat and you left me out of the three mogwai. Okay, oh! So... <laughs> Something to, think about there. Something to think about there. But uh, we're less than a week away from Christmas. Any uh, Christmas movie recommendations or anything that we should be doing here in, in the last couple of days before the great day? Well, I think we got to first decide is Die Hard a Christmas movie or not? Yes. Yes. I'll allow it. Okay. Christmas movie. I think the, we also need to have a debate on what the best Home Alone is. Mm. Two. Two is very. You talk. I watched two. two last the other night. Mm -hmm. It was fantastic. Fire. But the, is, the is first two your favorite because there's a cameo from Trump or <laughs> some other. Connor. That is why Connor enjoys. Whoa, the whoa, whoa! Yeah, don't put is. words in my mouth. Don't put words in my mouth. I never said that. But it helps. <laughs> <laughs> so he did. Listen, if you want, if you want nostalgia, we used to watch uh, 
White Christmas on Christmas Eve, an old Bing Crosby, mm-hmm. Bing Crosby, Danny Kaye uh, movie from uh, right when television was was color. Uh, that has some nostalgic uh, feelings for me. And then It's a Wonderful Life we would watch on uh, on Christmas. A couple of great old uh, nostalgic movies. I think Elf is still probably the best okay. Christmas movie. Okay. Um, and definitely one that uh, I like watching every year. But... Uh, but yeah, I'm, you know, it's Christmas. Everybody has their own traditions. You know, I remember AJ likes to eat Chinese food on Christmas. I don't understand that. Oh, that nice. Seems a little, you know, it's hmm. strange. But, oh, uh, it does Chai Com AJ. Not that he's actually <laughs> eating anything at the, at the Chinese restaurant besides like chicken skewers. But um, what about Christmas vacation? You left that one out. What about Grinch? You also left that one out. Jim Carrey right. obviously committed to the bit. He was actual asshole Grinch. I like I like the old the old Grinch. I'm, I'm not cartoon. Uh, I can deal yeah. with that. Boris I like the cartoon. But yeah, I like the cartoon. Jim Carrey is the Grinch. Phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. Santa Claus, Tim Allen, Scott Calvin, yeah. solid. Mm-hmm. For Santa Claus Six is probably the best one. Santa Claus Six. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. yeah, there's no reason to make a mock. Fred okay, there's no reason to make a mock. <laughs> what about what about Krampus? That's a pretty good Christmas movie. Yeah. Sleigh ride with Bill Gold. No, I think I think the most underrated Christmas movie though <laughs> also has the most swear words in it in any movie, I believe, and that's Bad Santa. Yeah. Bad Santa solid mm-hmm. movie. Yeah. That is good. Fantastic. First one. I enjoy Great the movie. and also if you make a banger during the holiday season, it's gonna run forever. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So everybody and gives a shot. Basically any movie. With little people in it is going to be in my top twenty-five. Okay. So okay, just Bad because Santa, the, the commitment to the Willow. Bit. Yeah. Why is Willow. Oh, Willow is legendary. Okay. Nice. Star Wars: Return of the Jedi. Ooh. Uh, WWE. Monday Night Raw. Uh huh. Harry the Potter. <laughs> okay. Harry Potter. Willow. All right. Yeah. Lo- love that. What about Wee Man? Game of Thrones. Yeah, Wee Man crushed yeah. it. Yeah. Elf he, as well. He's a Royal Rumble. Elf. Yeah. Yep. Pete Dinklage. Jojo Rabbit. Mm-hmm. Wizard of Oz. That's a lot. That's more than 25 movies all of a sudden. Now yeah, you're in trouble. Those are all in my top 25. Oh, okay, sweet. Hey, before we get out of here, can you list us your top 22 whites? Uh, because we got a uh, all white <laughs> versus all black game going on. Richard Mendenhall threw this out into the social media sphere. And obviously everybody that's ever been in the NFL or in a locker room before started dying laughing and then started saying, wait a minute, though. Let's start. Let's start piecing this together. Why? Because we have too much time and we're in a locker yeah. room. And this is how actual friendships and relationships between black people and white people actually go. You know, people that have actual friends of the other race, like, can joke about it. Where some people get incredibly upset about everything. Richard Mendenhall, super racist. If this was the other way around, he would be canceled. It's like... Uh, we would all talk shit on them, though, all the sports people, mm-hmm. if it was the other way around. And that's just how the sports world is. That's how we go. Have you, give this, have you given this any thought or consideration? And I'd like to le- let you know, I made a big move for the Whites yesterday. Oh, yeah. Huge. Oh, yeah. Huge move. <laughs> Huge move. Yep. I negotiated a deal publicly one side without speaking to anybody on the other side that we get – Samoa, Polynesia, the Oces. Yep. Yep. The Oces are on <laughs> the white team, which is great news. And in return, the black team gets any Asian player right. yep. that is to play. So that but was the deal. The that, kicker. that was the go- hey, Young Way Koo is the kicker <laughs> for Atlanta. He's the second highest percentage in the history of the NFL, right behind Justin Tucker. He will be kicking for them, which is a big deal. Have you thought about this? Have you seen the reaction of it at all? It is awesome how the internet yeah, has responded. I, 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 I didn't know about it till the second. So I think just off the top of my head, spitballing, we need to have a draft. And it's got to involve mm-hmm. Dave Chappelle. Um, <laughs> so we should have a draft, right? Because there's, you know, a couple people that we're not sure which team they'd be on. So True. we need to have a draft. We got sure. Patrick Mahomes there. Whoa, 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 whoa. Easy. 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 And Mike McDaniels, our head coach. So. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Got to have a conversation. Yep. There's a full. There's a lot to well, be sorted. Depends on if you. That depends if your first pick or not. Okay. No. That's a good point. That's true. But we'll see. We, but yeah. I mean, as we saw in the the racial draft with Chappelle, like it just matters where you're picking, right? Mm-hmm. Not who you pick. So mm-hmm. I think we should probably have some sort of draft. But you know, I think it's it. What is he really saying? He's really talking about like who is allowed to speak and not speak, right? And I think a lot of current players, you know who are getting criticized 
hold on to that. Like, oh, well, that person never played, so I don't really give a shit about what they say, you know? And on the flip side, there's interesting comments about certain guys who, who do say things. Like I saw what Cam Newton said, right? Cam took a lot of flack for what he said. And first of all, he has the right to talk about whatever he wants, number one, as a human. But number two, he was MVP and a pretty damn good player. Mm-hmm. So if anybody has the ability to talk about, again, they're talking about it with their opinion. Like, everybody should. But secondly, Cam, he can talk. He can say what he wants. Like, he's been there, done that. He played in the league at a super high level. He won MVP. He went to the Super Bowl. Like, Cam can say whatever he wants with the authority that he played at a high level, knew what he was doing. And also, it's an opinion. Yeah. Everybody on TV who never played has plenty of opinions that don't get questioned the same as and I, and I don't know what else Richard said, if that was only he said or not. But like, well, he said a lot. He, yep. he certainly he, he seems to not like the Watts. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know if he, I don't think he likes the Watts. Messenger, I right. could understand. Do what you got. Yeah, that, no, I that's get it. Here or there, but <laughs> but I, I think that it is interesting who we allow to speak, who we allow to speak, and who we allow not to speak. And obviously, um, people have you know questioned my ability to speak on certain things because I don't have a official doctorate degree, but um, oh, yeah. that's neither here nor there at this mm. point. Um, but when it comes to Cam, I think uh, Cam's opinion, uh, for me at least, uh, carries uh, a lot of weight because uh, I respect him for what he did in the league, how he played, and uh, um, that the stuff that he said, I think for the most part, was uh, interesting. And uh, it's his opinion, which is awesome, but I don't think he was uh, he was too far off. Yeah, it's okay. So you just said a lot there at the end. Um, I don't know where to go with this right now because I was going to say that doesn't necessarily mean that you agree with what he's saying. You're just saying you're no, just saying I mean, that you, he, he's allowed to say yeah. whatever the hell he's Cam Newton. He's a lot. He's he has earned it. But a lot of people are judging Cam Newton off of how he played in New England yes. in his last couple of years after he had that shoulder injury where he wasn't able to throw. I think there's a lot of humans that are like that's Cam Newton in their eyes as opposed to the defensive end that showed up in the NFL who was bigger, stronger, faster than everybody and took over an entire stadium whenever he was playing for the Panthers all the way to the Super Bowl. All the way to the Super Bowl. Yep. So it's like uh, I think people forget about that in the world that we're in. I, yeah, and I didn't. I honestly didn't see a whole lot of what he said. The first thing, I just saw he posted like a 10-minute video, and I watched the video. Uh, one, I think Cam's a really interesting person. And, uh, and two, I've always had respect for him. I saw him as a rookie in 2014. We played him in Carolina, and we won late. I uh, hit Jordy for a uh, touchdown, catch and run. Um, a long play, uh, 2012, sorry, um, uh, or 2011, when was it? was first year? Oh, uh, losing um, it. Um, CT, CT's kicking in. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, he threw 40 yards that day. He was unbelievable. And, uh, again, he accomplished a lot in the league. I trust opinions like uh, Greg Olson and Greg and our friends, and I think he does a fantastic job on TV. And, uh, him and Kevin do an amazing job with that Fox 1 team. But, you know, when you talk to Greg about Kim, he has nothing but glowing things to say. Like, he talks about his leadership, his ability, his instincts on the field. Um, and so, yeah, people remember, you know, for whatever reason right now, they're remembering him uh, in New England or whatever after his you know injuries and different things. But, but Cam was an MVP player, and Cam has every right to speak on what he believes. He's doing like he's owning his media now. It looks like he's doing really well. Uh, I saw what he said, you know, people are going to, oh, you're bitter about this, you're bitter about that. From what I saw in the 10-minute video, Cam seems to be in a great spot and uh, seems to be enjoying life and happy. And uh, That doesn't always sit well with people either. If, if a former player is you know, happy and just shooting from the hip and, and speaking their mind. Ben so, Roethlisberger, too. So Ben Roethlisberger is doing similar things with his football and pod mm-hmm. in Pittsburgh. Cam's doing his thing. It's like, and then there's people that get really upset about, oh, there's all these podcasts. Everybody thinks they have it. It's like, the more we hear from people that have done it, the better. <clears throat> that is mm-hmm. not saying, though, that you have had to have played to talk about this book. No, not But at it's at just all. the angle in which no. you talk, though. Like, the, the, like, for instance, I was only a punter in the league. So when I'm talking about some things, I will defer. Like, you know, I do not have the answer for that. But there's some people who've never played I've never been in a locker room. I have really no idea. And they speak as if they're an authority on things. And I think that's an easy way to potentially, with the lack of self-awareness, for everybody to be like, we hate this guy. Yeah. You know, so we're not saying you have to play. We're just saying no, like, the angle incredible, in which you come. There's some incredible reporters who spent their life studying the game, Agreed. being around the game, writing books, whatever it might be, who, who know the game, who have the clout to be able to speak on that. 
but it doesn't mean that their opinion and their clout should silence a guy like Cam or or Ben. I mean, Ben won two Super Bowls. Like Ben's a Hall of Fame player. Like, and in the end, Loves why him. do we have to get so damn offended by what everybody says? Like, it's their opinion. If you don't want to hear it, don't watch it. Mm-hmm. If you don't like it, don't listen to it. But just to <laughs> cancel people and quiet people and censor people because we don't agree with their opinions. Definitely doesn't create an environment of free speech and, and appreciation for everybody's opinion. So um, kudos to Ben for speaking up. Big kudos for Cam. Uh, nothing but love uh, and respect for him. And kudos for Rashad. Hey, speak your mind. That's your truth? Cool, bro. Whatever. That's fine. I'm you about sick. It or like it. I'm but- about sick of seeing these little white profile photos mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> on these frat boys who played in high school telling me I was garbage. Okay. I'm oh, Okay. I'm better than your goat. (laughs) I'm better than your goat, whoever you're like. That was awesome. He just had it. He was so sick of opening that app. Yes. Seeing something. Mm -hmm. Let me me find out about this motherfucker. Who was he mad at? Who do you think he was pointing that to? I think there was about 14 to 15 fuckboy whites. Mm -hmm. We all all know. Trolling. We all know. We have all met them before, seen them before. Who played high school football. Mm -hmm. Studs. 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 They were so good. Varsity. Mm -hmm. We're talking Letterman. (laughs) They were studs. And... They probably just shit talkers as well. Mm-hmm. So it's like, let me go ahead and find this guy. Let me go ahead and bury him a little bit. And this guy just fed up. I fucking can't take it anymore. That's it. There seems to be one particular group of people that are saying the same shit. Let's go ahead and settle this right now. Well, in, in that case, I do agree with Rashad. As, as, you know, as, many, as many of you know, the seasoned, long-term, awesome reporters who, who are great at their job and have researched and been around it forever, uh, there's, there's a lot of bums. And we've called out a few of them on this show over the years, Jeez. but there's uh, there's definitely quite a few bums uh, who uh, don't know what they're talking about and mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. don't you know ever say anything nice about anybody and just want to stir shit up. And that's their prerogative. That's their prerogative. Um, hey, and to be clear, to be clear, everybody's, you do what you want. everybody's calling Rashard racist, which I could certainly see how you could read it that way. I think it's brought a lot of NFL guys back together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's almost become like an alumni a reunion. That's a locker room. That's, room. It's always room. been like a reunion. <laughs> Robert Mathis was quote tweeting it last night. He's like, yeah, this is kind of a mid range jumper through for conversations we could get into. Oh, yeah. It is entire thing. It was a beautiful little depiction in there. And uh, Aaron, you powered right through the heart out. So the people didn't get to hear the end of your one answer that you were given that was phenomenal. But today was a good one. I, I, I didn't know what to expect today. I didn't, I didn't catch the uh, the signals there. The, uh, nah, I didn't even give any. Off. I just started looking at the uh, at the clock, and I was like, Phew. I figured once you said fuck that we were off of the, uh, <laughs> yeah. the main network and back on YouTube. So. Shout out to you. Because nobody, nobody got crazy that we'd ruin the streak that obviously was fake anyway. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. We're journalists. When you guys tried to you guys tried to cancel me, mm-hmm. and I said fuck last week, and we did. actually we'd already been past that. Uh, we, there had been 13 straight days. Yeah, we had a miscount we, in, in the Thunderdome. Yeah. Yeah. Because in the New York. It was a road game. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was in another – it was a hostile environment. Exactly. Right? We had never seen those people before. They were very nice, by the way. Yes, they were. Completely baffled that our show is our show, though. For sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. Especially when you do, like... That was a cool little setup. It was, wasn't it? That was nice. Yeah. Yeah. Did you sign a jersey for Greeny yet? Because remember, you just dogged... He's had that thing in the studio all year. Yeah. He's actually, like, held it up and spoke for it and (laughs) prayed to it and everything. And you're like, we need to make that better. That's kind of... We need to make it... Yeah, it's just... it's, It's naked, I feel like. It is naked. Like a snowman without any, you know. Bingo. Buttons. Any facial features or genitalia. You know, it's just naked. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, carrot. Yeah. Balls. Couple of them. Mm-hmm. Got a nose and a penis. Boom. Couple pieces of coal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, look out for snow dicking. I just saw it. What? People are doing it. Kids what? in Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. Well done. First snow what of the year. Mean? First snow of the year. They're drawing dicks on windshields in the snow. Yep. Look oh, out. That's not what I thought. Oh, that's that meant. not right. That's oh, not I right. thought you said Snowden. I thought we were going to get into a new conversation about Ed Snowden. Ooh. I've learned about him. I asked a uh, a chief of staff about Snowden. All right. I think. Is that what the chief of staff or the heads, right? Yeah. Of each one? One came and spoke to us. I asked about Snowden. That was when, that was like five, six years, seven years ago, whenever Snowden really all mm-hmm. started. I think I think Weekend at Bernie should, should pardon Snowden, Assange. Oh, as, okay. as a start, as okay. a start, I get it. <laughs> and and Manning, Manning, oh. Snowden, and uh, Assange, 
Okay. And, and the guy that did the Silk Road, too. All right. Pardon them all. Weekend of Bernie's, if you're listening, pardon all right. them all. All right. All right. Yeah. Hey, we appreciate He's responded you. to you in the past. We yeah. appreciate yeah, He certainly has. He has certainly mentioned mm-hmm. and remembers what you've done, you know, and your choices. First of all, he doesn't remember any of it. All right. <laughs> he doesn't remember any of it, okay? Come on, man. He might have said something at some point. He doesn't remember that either. Nope. We'll show We'll show the clip. We'll show the clip. Mm-hmm. Anyways, uh, oh. I'm happy we could go there on this glorious mm-hmm. Tuesday. First snowfall. I wish we brought this up when we were still on the network, but uh, but I do appreciate it. Excellent. That's and let me just send a, yeah, we'll try. a warm a warm Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to all of our Jet fans. And listen, we love you. We want it as badly as you do. We care about it as badly as you do. We're as pissed, as pissed as you are. But we're asking you, I'm asking you, to stick with us, to believe in us. To start manifesting positive things, not thinking about what could go wrong in 2024, and just trust that today is, what is it, the 19th of December, 2023. That the 19th of December, probably be the 18th or the 20th next year when I'm on this show. But it'll be a different conversation. Hell yeah. Boom. Just trust it, baby. It's been a long 13 years. Mm -hmm. But the optimism you had going into this season... Let's just bottle that. Let's open that bottle yeah. and let's start drinking it for next year. Mm-hmm. We appreciate drinking it like it's Iron City, you know, just hell. pounding them like it's Iron City. Hell yeah, I see a lot, maybe a little mango mm-hmm. in that. Right. Yeah, hell yeah, we appreciate you, man. You're the best. Enjoy the rest of your day. Huga. Hey, have a great day, guys. Huga. Merry Christmas and uh, say something nice to somebody. You never know; it's going to change your life. Mm-hmm. Tone, love you, buddy. Love the cowboy hat. Love your stick. I love what you're about. Oh, love that. Love your fake oh, ass no. shit. Love, you. love your fake shot. ass shit. I'm going to take shot. it. I'm going to take it. All right. Character tone. All right. Love you, man. Appreciate you. Ladies and gentlemen, Aaron Rodgers. Aaron. All right. Let's get to a break. On the other side, we got Shane Steichen. Let's go. Coach okay. of the year candidate. Let's go. Hell, Hell yeah. yeah. Colts. I have to go to the bathroom. I'm happy we got to really hit all the topics today. Mm-hmm. Me too. Mm-hmm. Great, great You kind of let him into Does he? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I heard oh, that. I don't think you. Yeah, you did. I heard that. Oh, it was deeper? Yeah, oh, I, I, heard, I heard that a little bit. Was Bachi? It was, was Bachi. Bachi. Mm-hmm. It was Bachi. Bachi. It was took Bachi. me a second to get the, the reference, the movie reference. It took me a couple seconds. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I honestly had no idea. And then it hit me, mm. and I'm like, of course. Of course. <laughs> of course. I, I, I thought he was trying to tie it in, make it a Christmas movie or something. I was like, there's no way this is a Christmas movie. <laughs> he took a lot of shit, whether the person remembers it or not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he was getting <laughs> slaughtered by a lot of people. Oh, yeah. The only reason why I know that is because my mentions... You know, were his mentions mm-hmm, mm-hmm. for a couple months. Boy, they were rude. There was a lot of negativity coming in there. Yeah, a lot of it. They thought he was killing people. Yeah, no matter what was going on. They were saying that, too. Oh, yeah. I think they probably feel the same way, the same people that said that back then. Still. No. Really? No, 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 not all of them. Mm-hmm. Feels okay, different. yeah, not all. There's probably two We've or three evolved. that I, I, believe, I believe there's, you know, good. People evolve. Yeah, yeah people definitely evolve and change their mind when they're presented with new material, right? Well, <laughs> an understanding yeah. and yeah. appreciation for other people's opinions. Exactly. All right, let's do a lot of that on the other side. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. It might change their life. Take five. Bye. Bye. What's that coming down the track? Machine in the red and black. It's the mean machine in red and black. Nothing finer in the land. Ain't nothing finer in the land. And a drunk, drunk obnoxious Georgia fan. <laughs> <laughs> Then you go to pick up a box and uh, a bong falls out of there. What, do you have anything to say about that situation, or what do we got going on? <laughs> I hope it's not a bong, first of all. Hey, <laughs> the head coach of the Georgia Bulldogs, Kirby Smart. Yeah!
that in the SEC. You got to do that every week, man. It's now cool. easy this year. <laughs> like I said, there's an open invitation. Call Greg Sankey. Come down here and get you some of this SEC if you want it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd like to make a small contribution to the uh, Marine Corps Scholarship Fund. Give at least 15000 and see if, if Richard will match. I'll match. fifteen k from match. us. Awesome. 15K from you. We need Dick Smith, FedEx oh, CEO, yep. 15000 That's 45000 to the Marine Scholarship Fund. And I believe today is the 248th birthday of the Marine Corps. So, ooh, oh! University of Georgia legend, ladies and gentlemen, Matthew Stafford. Yeah! Yeah! What's up, guys? Shout out to this man winning $1,000 on this Feel Good Friday when A.J. Hawk. white ladies that told me <laughs> I did not deserve to wear the G they on my chest. They told and they me. said I needed to get out of Chuck's Seafood Restaurant. This no, is David Pollock's town. I no. told her right back to her face, I want to let you know, you can say and think whatever you want about me. I love this Georgia Bulldog city. That's what I want to hear. You should take this in. It's pretty cool. I don't hear that. You need to, because you've done a lot here that has been fantastic. Have you ever thought anything bad about a kicker before? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Trust what I taught you while we were off air and just let it rip. Yeah, Hot Rod was getting a little bit too many tips. Georgia! fans and any place that barks at everybody when they see them that's a town for me i got the bulldogs winning big today yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. <laughs> the all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pink! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice could change their life. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, December 19th. 
2023, hour three of the program starts now. Football. Happened last night. The Seahawks got a big win. That dude is a football legend. The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, A.J. Hawk. The talks the table is here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. One half of the hammer. Dad. Cowboys turn Diggs is here. Nine-year NFL vet. A man who played corner, nickel, and safety. Host of Everything DB and a Man Man podcast. Darius J. Butler is here. Oh, baby D. Butch. Can't wait for good D, bad D later. But joining us now is a man who's up for the coach of the year in this season of the NFL. What has he been tasked with? Well, when you get to the place whose culture seemingly has completely fallen apart, your best player isn't going to want to play there. You're going to have a brand new rookie quarterback. You're going to have to build literally from the ground up, brick by brick through this entire thing with some distractions along the way. Where's he at now? Oh, I don't know. Might win the AFC South in his Woo. first year. Ladies and gentlemen, head coach of the Indianapolis Colts, Shane Steichen. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah, Shane. What's up, fellas? Hey, what's up, dude? You're doing great. I'll How's the thunder know? It's great. You remember, uh, I think you made a shot, missed a couple, mm -hmm. made a couple other mm -hmm. ones right over here. The spot is saved for you whenever the offseason comes mm -hmm. around after the Super Bowl. Of obviously. course. Mm -hmm. For you to come back in anytime. We appreciate you joining us on this day. I guess my first question will be, the last time we saw you, you were a zero win, zero loss mm -hmm. head coach. Going into a season with a rookie quarterback in the Jonathan Taylor situation. Now... You're a guy that's up for coach of the year. Why do you think it has gone this way this year for your team? This is not normal. I don't know if you know that, but this is not a, a normal thing to take place, especially with all the distractions that could have been taken as distractions earlier in the year. Why do you think you are where you are right now with your team? I think it's a credit to the players, uh, the players and the coaches. I truly believe your best players uh, and your best coaches are your best people. And uh, I think when you got good people uh, in the building uh, that want to do things the right way and work hard, I think that goes a long way. You know, there's going to be ups and downs in a season. Shoot, we lost three in a row and we were three and five, right? And shoot, we had to climb out of a hole, but we had to do it together. And uh, everyone was on board. And uh, shoot, the secret to success, like we always talk about, is working hard. That's what it is, right? Everyone says work, you know, work smarter, not harder. I think you got to work smarter and harder. And uh, I think that's the secret to success. And that's what we got to get done. Go ahead, AJ. How do you work smarter and harder? I know we, we talk about that a lot, but what can you do, especially as the season progresses? I'm sure every single day you're trying to come up with new things to kind of stimulate guys. Yeah, no, that's a good question. I think part of it is uh, doing the little extra things and the details. Now, all that stuff matters. And, you know, with players especially, you know, it's a grind. As you know, being a former player um, is putting in that extra work. You know, November and December football is important. And when you got a chance uh, in playing meaningful football, mean, meaningful football in December, um, you got to do everything in your power to get your mind and your body right. And if that means, you know, watching an extra 45 minutes of tape, uh, getting more treatment, more time in the weight room, whatever that is, get get that done because you never know. You watch that extra 45 hour hour of film, you know, you fi might find that little nugget that's going to win you the football game. And uh, that's what we want to do here as uh, players and coaches. Having players that buy into that is obviously a weapon, uh, but having coaches that adjust to their players is a big deal as well. Whenever we talk to you and Anthony Richardson was going to be the guy that you were going to have to build an offense around, you said, I'm going to make use of all the things that make him special. We saw him a lot of running. Mm -hmm. He was electrifying mm -hmm. early. Obviously, he has a shoulder injury. He's out for a year. Now Gardner Minshew is the guy. He was with you in Philadelphia. Whenever we signed him to Indianapolis, we were all pretty excited, and we assumed it would work. So if you had to put a pause on the offense that you were building for Anthony Richardson to build a Gardner Minshew offense that you've been running this year, or are they similar? Or what have you had to do differently now that Gardner's the guy as opposed to the young superstar that was electrifying Anthony Richardson in his first year? Yeah, you adjust a little bit. Uh, obviously, the terminology stays the same. Um, it's just adjusting uh, certain little things. Um, you know, the pass game is the pass game in my eyes. Um, but obviously, there's things, you know, obviously the zone read stuff. We don't do a ton uh, with Gardner. Uh, but, you know, Gardner stepping in uh, to the role he stepped in uh, has been tremendous. I mean, just a great competitor. A guy, again, like I've talked about, just loves football, loves the process of it. And every time we step on that field, he gives us a chance to win. And uh, that's what you want uh, in your quarterback. Um, and he's been great for us. The boys have rallied around him. Even since, like, the day in training camp when I was there, uh, the way the offensive linemen were talking about Anthony Richardson, they love him, obviously, and they're like, Gardner Minshew, like, we love this guy as well. He said, fully focused on ball, fully committed to ball, acted like a starter, was willing to help out Anthony Richardson as well. Seems to be the perfect guy for the situation that you are in right now. 
Yeah, no, he was great. I mean, just to have a guy that's you know knows the system, knows the terminology, and then he's been tremendous with Anthony. You know, in that role uh, when he was in that role earlier in, earlier in the season uh, with Anthony, helping him along with you know all our coaches, uh, Jim Bob Cooter, offensive coordinator, Cam Turner, our quarterback coach, uh, getting these guys prepared and ready to play. Uh, like I said, it, it's been great to have Gardner here. Yeah, he's fun to watch too. His little shoulder shimmies and his little hips. He'll throw a pick. Don't does not phase him. Nope. He's going right back in there and throwing dots all over the place. We love watching him. It's not just through the sky though. D Bud has a question for you. Yeah. Man. Speaking of some fun, to, fun to watch, especially as a former Colt against those Steelers this past Saturday. I don't know how many straight runs it was. I think 17, 18. But what was the thought process behind that? Was that a mindset thing? Because I know as a defender, absolutely demoralizing when an offense does that to you. I know we were banged up in the in the backfield. But what was the mindset with you calling those plays? Yeah, I think the biggest thing there was, you know, we had the lead there, uh, you know, whatever it was, late in the third, early in the fourth, and uh, shoot, let's run a little bit and see where this thing goes. And obviously, you got to have success running it to keep calling runs. And uh, you know, you're getting, you know, whatever it was, four yards a pop, keep calling them. Don't get bored calling the same plays over and over again. Um, you know, if you're having success with them, and our guys up front did a heck of a job. All five of those guys in the backs that stepped in. Uh, Goody uh, and Trey Sermon were running hard. It was it was it was awesome to see all those guys. Had no idea Sermon was on our team. That we had no. I, I'm sitting in there, and they say Trey Sermon. I'm like, that's Ohio State guy. We got. Mm -hmm. He's a good ball player. Ball. He, he's a he's a great ball player. And then this Goodson guy. I'm like, who the hell is? I, there was a couple guys I'd never heard of, and it's like this is the story of this Colts team this year. A lot of big injuries. A lot of big people out. And you've just kind of maintained and kept it moving. Got stars at the right place. Feels like the culture's all the way back. Can you feel that? Can you feel your culture kind of settling in with the locker room? Can you feel the culture in there? Yeah, I mean, it, it, part of it is to winning, right? That helps it, right? I mean, you can build the culture and shoot, here's the culture and this is how we want it to look like, but you got to go win. You know what I mean? And every that's the mindset every time we step on the field, like we're going to win a football game, right? And that we, we don't want to settle for anything less. And shoot, we know it ain't going to be perfect every time we step out there. There's going to be good times. There are going to be bad times. But let's go out with the mindset that we're going to win this game and shoot. I don't know what it's going to look like. We don't know how it's going to look, but we're going to play together and do it together. Well, it's worked. Yeah. yeah. It's been fun to watch, Coach. The Loud House, Lucas Oil Stadium, mm -hmm. has been enjoying it. I've seen a couple mic'd up moments of you, too. I like your moxie on the sideline. Mm -hmm. I like the way you handle the boy. I like mm -hmm. the speeches afterwards. Shane, you're special, man. A lot of Indianapolis is falling in love with you. I hope you know that. Ty has a question for you. Yeah, Coach, this might be something you look at like after the season's over, but is, is there one area of being a head coach that you can point to and say, like, oh, I'm so much better doing that now than I was at the start of the season or when I first got the job? Um. Yeah, that's probably after the season thing, but you know, it's really just the whole the whole picture, right? It's everything that goes with it. You know, obviously coming from a coordinator position to being a head coach, uh, just kind of you know overseeing a little bit of everything, right? Obviously, you you know you have fifty three guys when you're a coordinator. You got you know whatever it is twenty eight thirty guys um, to worry about, and you know that's what it is. And it's having a you know looking over the whole picture. But again, I'm very fortunate. The guys I got around me, the staff I have around me, uh, the players that we have. Just good dudes that love football, and that's that's what you want, you know? Yeah, absolutely. We love watching it because over the last couple of years, Colts fans, boy, boring football. Yep. yep. Hey, you do not call a boring game, by the At way. All. At all. Which I am very, very grateful for. You're a fun 20 boy, there was a run there where you were the only mm -hmm. team in the NFL that had scored 20 points every single week, and we're dealing with the same injuries that everybody else is dealing with. You're a wep you're a fucking weapon, Shane. Yeah. Speaking of that, go ahead, Con Man. Yeah, coach, obviously right now looking around the NFL, there are certain teams that, you know, lost a lot of guys. The former team you had, Philly, you know, there's a lot of conversation about how losing you and Gannon in the same offseason was a much is a much bigger deal deal now looking back on it with you know what's going on over there but is that something you ever think about with your staff now in Indianapolis kind of the fear of other coaches getting poached obviously you want them all to have great success and to you know move up the ladder but at the same time is that something you keep in the back of your mind like hey I might have to replace some of these guys just because they are so good and they're going to get more opportunities elsewhere yeah, that, that's part of the business. Obviously, that's in the back of your mind, but I do. I, I want all my coaches on staff. When we have success, right, shoot, if they have a chance to move up the ranks, like, don't hold them back from doing that. Like, that, that's a big deal. Obviously, people have goals on this profession, uh, you know, to move up the ranks. And if those opportunities, uh, you know, take them to new heights, I, I think that's awesome. Hey, what do you think about Jim Irsay? Huh? I saw him dancing. He's the man. I saw him dancing. He's the man. Dancing in your locker. Oh, yeah. 
Didn't it? Yeah, he was getting after it right next to you. You're like two feet away, and you take – I assume that was the first time you've seen Jim Irsay dance. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, he was getting it. Yeah, he was getting after Mm -hmm. it. getting it. Learning of Jim Irsay and learning about Jim Irsay, how has that been this year for you? What a one of one. One of one. Nobody really ever will understand that. Yeah, he he loves he loves the Colts as we all know, um, and he's all about winning, right? And 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 the resources uh, that he's provided since I got here have uh, been second to none, and uh, just a tremendous person, just generous as all get out, um, and just loves the Colts, loves you know loves the passion for this organization, loves the passion, uh, has the passion for this city. And, uh, shoot, it's our job, you know, as an organization to, you know, go put on a show uh, every Sunday we step out there. Did you feel obligated? You guys are kind of dancing there. <laughs> Hell, but you know, you, you oh, like- no, I was rolling with them. I was rolling with them pretty good. I'm like, shoot, he's got it. Let's go. Yeah, I thought you were going to make go. a jump in. We had a little, you know, Jim, that's Shane's arm right there. Yep. Mm-hmm. circulation. Though. Yeah, he was. He's, <laughs> yeah. he's squeezing <laughs> the hell out of that. Yeah, breaking yeah, him. Yeah, he's squeezing the hell, especially with Jim Mercer. He's Ursa. rolling. Look yeah. at him. Former strength. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Absolute dog. The boy's having a good time. Love that in the locker room. Heck yeah. Go ahead, AJ. Coach, uh, speaking of celebrations, have you had the chance to hang out with Gardner's father at all and get (laughs) one of his uh, celebratory hugs where he smacks the hell out of your chest and gives you a few bruises, but you know, (laughs) hey, you are loved? I have, I have, and I got, I got, I got to meet his dad. I'm sure he'll be at the game on Sunday, so I have to holler at him uh, after the game. But I was there shoot when we were in Philly, uh, that Jets game. He won shoot. That was awesome to see. I was just sitting on the bus watching it. Uh, it was it was it was awesome to see that stuff. It's it's special. Leather jacket too. Oh, I mean, yeah. absolute what? dog. Absolute. Oh, what? the bomber. Yeah, the bomber. Jacket's sick. <laughs> Phenomenal. The Minshew story in the Minshew mania right now, in the Minshew mania in Jacksonville. You know, like yeah. it, it is, uh, it's been almost everywhere he goes. Now, where you were in Philadelphia, mm. big time play. Go ahead, Tone. Yeah, coach, I got a question. And now that you're not there, I want an honest uh, answer from you. Did you create the tush push or was it someone else on that staff? And do you need a quarterback that squats 600 pounds to do the tush push successfully? Well, I will say that they do a heck of a job of doing that. And it starts up front with Kelsey and Jalen and the guards, uh, the way they get low. Uh, and create that push uh, is phenomenal. And obviously, they've been doing it uh, at a high level for the last two years. Um, shoot, I know we've had some wrinkles off it. They do wrinkles off it still, um, but it's 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 pretty it's pretty impressive to see every time they do it. So who created it? Huh? That's a real. Shoot, we were we were in there. I don't. Nick Nick came up like, hey, let's put a pusher there. And then the next week, we're like, oh, let's do another pusher. And then we just and then it just took off, man. It took off. They're trying to get them now. You saw that false start last night. I don't know if you got a chance to see it. It's uh, interesting. That's an interesting little wrinkle about did he move the ball, I think is what John Perry said. We don't know if that's what the actual refs were talking about. But if that's what he does every single time, and Pete Carroll must have alerted the refs to it or whatever, it's like they're trying to stop. Now they're trying to to get it. You know what I mean? That's how they're trying to attack it, Coach. Yeah, I mean, shoot, they're having these rules, moving the ball. I know, shoot, uh, shoot, we played the Saints. They got called for it down there on the goal line against us, and we play them at home, moving the ball. Uh, they're, you know, it's a point of emphasis for them right now uh, in those situations. So, how have you enjoyed all that stuff? Like being the head coach now, you got to be the one that is filing the ref reports right and dealing with all the fallout the day afterwards. Not that I remember any Colts games where we've potentially. I don't think we've gotten robbed by these. Oh, yeah, there was one clear one, the bronze game. The bronze game, Oh, yes. Okay. So now dealing with that as a head coach, how are you there? How do you deal with the officials and handle that entire – yep. Yeah, no, I know they got a tough job to do. Shoot, and is it going to be perfect every time? No, not just like we're not going to be perfect every time as coaches and players. Um, But I got a lot of respect for what those guys do, um, and we go from there. Smart. <laughs> nice. Smart. Sure. All right. Wow. You're the man. Uh, we appreciate you taking time out of your Tuesday. What do you got the rest of the day? We're game planning right now? Yeah, going to watch some third downs right now. How do we feel? We feel pretty good, Coach. We got a team. It feels like we got a team, Coach. You like the boys, right? Like the boys. Shoot, it'll be a heck of a challenge. Got a lot of respect for Arthur and uh, what he's got down there in Atlanta. Got a lot of weapons on offense. Shoot, they got good defense. Um, so it'll be it'll be a tough task for us, but we're excited for it. Michael Pittman got folded in half. He's back is what I've heard. Is that right? Feeling good. He's feeling good. He's a dog, dude. Yeah, yes, he is. Dog. He's an absolute. Yeah, he is, right? Uh, all, yeah. Uh, you got a, a lot toughness of them. Now. You want to talk about the definition of toughness? It's Michael Pittman. He got folded. That guy got suspended the rest of the year. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah, he, he was on the other end of that. Uh, entire year suspension on the other end of it. Folded. Boom. He'll be back, yeah. though. That's Deep great. Sunday. Team, love the love with the team that you're building. We appreciate you. Ladies and gentlemen, head coach of the Indianapolis Colts, Shane Steichen. Yeah.
Oh. See, Shane? Yeah, they got a tough team. We're just done yeah. doing hey, that. How down. valuable is that? How valuable is that, though? Your stud receiver, as he said, is like one of the toughest dudes. Yeah, he and he's always been like that. Just like super quiet. Doesn't really talk awesome. that much. I think he has a great personality, though. Yeah. I think if we had to guess, he has sure. a great personality. He's gotten exponentially better since his first year. At training camp, he caught that pass and then ran into the – and said, hey, what's up, everybody? To the <laughs> microphone and <laughs> ran right – like very smooth yeah. way. But he doesn't – Refuse to give his number up. I'm not giving up 11. Sure. Yeah, which make hindsight, My though. shit, and now we look back at it. Right it's decision. decision. Yeah. 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 I was judging him. I'm like, fucking – you, it's the quarterback. Why don't you catch some balls? You're talking about <laughs> Carl Wentz here. You know, you catch some balls before you tell the quarterback no for the number. And then now it's like Michael Pittman says wherever the fuck he wants. Yeah. Bingo, yeah. Carson Suck Wentz it. in the Indianapolis Colts. Yeah. You know? it's uh, I'm happy he didn't hold that against me forever. Because you know? that was when he was very young. Because mm -hmm. he could have held that against me. Because I was like, oh, shut the fuck up. Yeah. What are we even? <laughs> it's know. the quarterback. Mm -hmm. It's know. the quarterback. And instead, he's just shown up mm -hmm. and bald. He's he's one of the most reliable fu like oh, yeah. yes. fucking guys that we have ha uh -huh. had in some time. Hey. I like him. He's he's owed money, too, I think. Yeah, he was like fifth in the NFL in catches before he got hurt. I think mm -hmm. he might have got to 100 with the five he had. But could you imagine if maybe Pittman was going to give it up and Wentz walked in and Pittman just gave him a, you're not the guy. I can tell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're you're not you're not my guy. You can just tell by the moxie. Yeah, this guy isn't gonna stick around. I'm keeping eleven. And I, and you know what? If he read the books like that, it's you know, and Carson, he's on a team now, right? Rams. Yeah, Rams. Right? Yeah. Yeah. He's on the sideline, cackling. Hey, the NFC. I thought of him. Did you think of him with all the all these backups playing? I thought of Carson. I'm like, yeah, where is this? So he's on the Rams. Yes, I, he was working out. Remember, he had a Commanders Every, helmet, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, Eagle shorts. Mm -hmm. Coach Jersey, yeah. yep. he was working out. He looked good. He did. He good. looked really good. He looked like the the good. I've always said this: if Carson Wentz can play good Carson Wentz football, top top seven in the league. Yeah, yeah. filthy. Great. Top seven in the we league. We'll see him again. We will. See I think so. For yeah, sure. Gruden. He was working with Gruden. Gruden gave him some tips. Of course, on football. Mm -hmm. We'll nope. see him again. Just too. on football. Yeah, we will for sure. He, his name was uh, floated for the Indiana job. It was. Oh, yeah, for a second. He's, he's still saying Hey, whoa. That didn't, AJ. That didn't feel real. What? People were saying it was real. Well, he refused it to It might yell. have been. We it hate been. Purdue! So they wouldn't hire him. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Indiana football, don't look now. Rolling. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yes. There's a new momentum behind Indiana University Hoosier football. Wow. Well, and it is Signetti. <laughs> that Signetti train has come to town, uh -huh. and it is rolling. <laughs> the, the people are rallying around them. They are. Well, they got a collective. They're making money. They're raising huge. money to pay mm -hmm. people. Yeah, mm -hmm. just at the right time, too, with USC and Oregon, Washington what? coming into the Big Ten. What? Yeah. UCLA. UCLA. Nebraska now. Signetti's rolling right over to Washington now so. that that is a recruiting town for him mm -hmm. and Ooh. saying, welcome to Indiana. This is my town. Yeah, that's right. Because who do we hate? Purdue! <laughs> and? And Ohio State in Michigan! Thank you. Love it. <laughs> Not done yet. Is that real? I got to see the real. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. oh, yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. yeah, it's very nice. Yeah, he owned it. He's he taking that photo space. with a new iPhone. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's iPhone 15 Pro. Mm -hmm. You can see in the reflection. Mm -hmm. Look how nice the office is. Gorgeous. That, that's at 4 a.m. too. Overlooks the stadium. James right? Madison. Yeah, we're just looking through the coach's book here. Do they still have in. Mellencamp Pavilion? John Mellencamp sponsored their indoor facility. I don't know if mm -hmm. they, he's still, I don't know. Yeah, I think they took that away after we lot of seats in that place. Yeah. The, where? What'd you mm -hmm. say? A lot of seats in that place. He refused to stand. Oh. Amen. He did. That was an Ursa suite. Yep. Mm -hmm. What a scene that was. And he was eating. Brother, do you got to do it in my yeah. suite? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brother, come that was on. Last, that was, it was last year. It was a good year for... All right, let's See talk. how quickly things can turn. Hey, we we'll just talked to Shane Steichen, obviously. And Connor, you brought up a good point in a question that you asked. Uh, you lose coordinators, you're a different team. Mm -hmm. You get good coordinators, you're a different team as well. Now, the Philadelphia Eagles last night, not only that game, but all season, have been dealing with two new coordinators. Now they have a third coordinator has been added, and Matt Patricia getting an opportunity to run the defense for the Philadelphia Eagles. That's a big deal, AJ, isn't it? Like, who's calling the plays? How they're calling the plays, how they're seeing and thinking what the other team is going to be doing. That's a skill. That's a talent. And I think whenever we saw this Philadelphia Eagles team, especially with how much success they have, they're 10 and 4. I mean, they're still, mm -hmm. that's a lot. Teams would die to have that record yeah. right oh, now. Yeah. A lot of teams would love to do it. But every once in a while, a situation will pop up where you're reminded like, Steichen was a great play. He is. Yeah. Great play caller. 
for Indianapolis. Gannon, we think, was a pretty good force over there, especially on the defensive side, if you see how their defense is now versus how it was last year, and they're on a second coordinator trying to replace him. It's like, that, that's a big deal this Philadelphia Eagles team has been dealing with all year, AJ. Yeah, especially a team, like you said, that's 10-4 and four and they make the switch, head coach switches. Who's calling the defensive calls? So, Sean Desai, that's his name, correct? The guy who got put mm-hmm. back yep. in the box? Yes, sir. Desai. And then P- Patricia is down on the field calling the plays, like in the helmet. He's he's making all the defensive calls, yeah. even though we know they're both a part of its collaborative effort throughout the week especially. Yeah, it's you can't just overhaul your whole defense, but you could, I guess, change the way. Okay, we normally play quarters down here in the red zone. We're going to start blitzing them a little bit more, maybe some – maybe some zone blitzes, whatever it may be, but you can't really make wholesale changes. But for a team that that's good, is as good as they are, it's just kind of a unique situation to do this, especially late in the year. Going into the season, especially with what the defense was last year, now you lose a couple pieces, mm-hmm. obviously, and Donald Katsu is there. Yeah. And, uh, Limbaugh, Limbaugh Joseph. Limbaugh, CJ GJ. CJ GJ is now with the Detroit Lions. He's back this weekend. Hargrave. That'll be a big deal. Yeah, so Hargrave. They did, Hargrave. they had different personnel, but they feel like they replaced some of it through the draft, obviously. Yeah, they did. But, like, uh, going into the season, I don't think we expected Jalen to, you know, because Jalen, I don't think he was having as good of a year as he had last year. And, no. It was like, did they get used to what the offense is? Now, once again, they are 10 and four. Ooh. So they've lost their last three. They were 10 and one at one point. Mm-hmm. So it's like this team, very good football team. But maybe we didn't think about how the change could potentially affect them this year. Yeah, and even minutes. when they were winning, you know, when they were rattling off however many wins in a row, people were still ugly. Like, oh, yeah. you know, it's ugly. They're not winning. They're not playing. It. They're pulling some games out. But um, it's tough, man. And we talk about it a lot with the coordinators and People moving on. Obviously, we got a great coach in Shane Steichen here. He's calling the plays. Mike McDaniel, Miami, Kyle Shanahan, and San Fran. Andy Reid obviously has his hand in it. But when you lose that coordinator, that person, that whatever, however collaborative that effort is throughout the week, that's a big deal, especially for a young quarterback. And Jalen Hurts seems like an old guy, but still a young quarterback. You know, still don't have that many games under his belt. So having that voice you know, every day in practice, every day in the meeting room, and then going to a new guy, and then maybe a new guy after that if he's good and gets hired somewhere else. That's tough. We talked about it a few weeks ago on the show about how many guys in the league, even Patrick Mahomes. Sure, you look at both quarterbacks who were in the Super Bowl last year, and you look at them this season with different offensive coordinators, Mm -hmm. that offense looks different, and not only just them, but the surrounding cast as well. So um, it's a big deal. I don't think people are giving us credence to. Dallas Cowboys and Philadelphia Eagles have basically been just run out of the conversation for the (laughs) NFC. Yep. This morning I was asked, now that the Eagles and Cowboys are dead in an email, pretty much, Mm -hmm. who is another NFC team that we could potentially see challenging this San Francisco 49ers team? And all of us love the San Francisco 49ers. Mm -hmm. Everybody that watches football loves the San Francisco 49ers. They loved them last year going into the playoffs, and obviously the Philadelphia Eagles beat them in the NFC Championship after a lot of things happened in that game. They've reloaded, retooled, Mm -hmm. and playing again how they were playing last year, maybe even better with Purdy, even more confident and a better handle of the entire playbook. Don't look now, though, AJ. How about the Detroit Lions? They got the Vikings twice. Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay, they got the Vikings twice and the Cowboys, so there's certainly going to be a little bit of a test there at the end of the season because playing the same defense, especially a very good defense like that one, two times in three weeks, you could. it might be a difficult challenge for Ben Johnson, but we think the Lions are going to do okay. Yeah. Going down the stretch here. Mm-hmm. 100%. We're indoors, too. So this offense loves to put points up when we're indoors, and then we'll probably have a home playoff game for the first time in my lifetime. So as long as we're scoring, I'm not worried about the defense one bit who did look better on Saturday night. Well, how about the brand-new Lions, though, AJ? How about the brand-new Lions being in the conversation for the NFC? Now, granted, we still have faith in the Eagles on this particular program. Oh, yes. We still have faith in the Cowboys on this particular program. Sometimes you just get your ass beat. Like, sometimes that just happens. You know, it's uh, it's not a fun day at the job. Mm-mm. Can't have anybody laughing about it. You know, mm-hmm. that certainly uh, makes life worse. Like food tastes worse. Mm-hmm. Sure, sleep doesn't work as well. Right, your dumps are a little bit wetter. <laughs> yeah, oh. like, not always a bad thing. Everything depends on what you're going through. Yeah, mm-hmm. you don't want to to be too. No, 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 no. Can't be liquid piss. But that's what losses do. Like losses are miserable. They are terrible. And sometimes they just happen. It's like three in a row for the Philadelphia Eagles. They got to get a hold of that. You know, like they certainly got to get a hold of that because once too much misery starts creeping in and then it becomes just like understood that this is just how this goes. Like you can't get that back. So I am worried a little bit about the Eagles, but like the Cowboys, they just got their asses beat. Mm-hmm. Like, sometimes that mm-hmm. happens. And I think that that's going to actually benefit them going forward. Do I think that's going to make them beat the Niners? No. <laughs> 
But I am not giving up on the Cowboys just as yet. Now, it seems like everybody else kind of is. The thing about the losses, you know, they couldn't be good. But if you keep losing the same way and you're not changing, like obviously Ty has been going off about the defense in, in Green Bay. Like if it's something or say it's special teams. I remember that was the issue with, uh, I think, the Chargers a few years ago. Like that one, that thing has to change. Like if you lose one way, okay, three weeks later we lose a different way. Okay, it was just their day. It wasn't our. But if you keep losing the same way, you don't change anything, that's where it gets big. And obviously – uh, the, uh, the Cowboys, are they going to be able to stop the run? Are they going to be able to play on the road? The Eagles, can they be more consistent and stop? You know, Jalen Hurts is leading the league in turnovers right now. He was on the completely opposite end of that spectrum. Defense can't stop anybody. Can you change those uh, those things going forward? And At least if you're going to lose, lose a different way. AJ, did you hear what Bosa said about Jalen Hurts and the offense at the Eagles? Yeah, I was going to eventually ask Aaron about that, the whole blueprint situation. Yeah, because that is a pretty wild mm -hmm. thing to hear. How like nonchalant, too, you hear Bosa <laughs> yeah. saying and talking about it is what also was funny. Yeah, because home field advantage is on the line here. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Bosa's like calling out to everybody like, hey. <laughs> he, stares at the, he stares at the rush. We you know. did it. Hey, we got <laughs> it. This is it. You're welcome. Since that, they're 0-3, obviously. Mm -hmm. Here's what Bosa had to say about figuring out the Eagles' defense. Yeah, I mean, you see it on tape, though. Uh, and then, obviously, we put the blueprint out there. Hopefully, the Cowboys watch the tape. Um, we made Jalen stay in the pocket and escape outside instead of those big gaps and uh, paid off. Because uh, Jalen's looking at the rush every play. Um, so, yeah, you just have to be disciplined and, and not give him that quick escape route where he could get to his guys quick. Okay, who do the Eagles have left? Because that's who Bosa was talking to right there. Yeah. That yeah, Bosa was literally just talking to them, like, hey, yep, we got it. We got the answer. Mm -hmm. Watch. This is this is how this whole thing goes. Could you imagine Santa Clara being the home of the NFC? Certainly mm. could be. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Vastly different than having to go to Philadelphia. Giants For twice sure. they have. Um and I saw I think I saw the back page that Tommy DeVito got whacked, so I'm a little worried I, about that. I did see the back page. What do you mean? Well, Tommy DeVito got whacked is what the back page said. Here's uh, the Philadelphia Eagles, what they have left here. Giants twice and the Cardinals. Okay. Okay. Should, should win all winnable. Okay. okay. Now, Tommy DeVito, you know, he might have taken a little bit of a car ride to that shotgun, and one of his friends was sitting behind him. He's going to bounce back. Well, Bingo. Well, Big. Against the Eagles? Whacked. Are the Eagles good? How about it? How about that's what they said? How about how about good fella DeVito smacked around as Giants' <laughs> yeah. fleeting hopes die wow. in New Orleans? Unreal. Welcome to New York City. He knows that hook, line, and stinker up top there against the Dolphins. Woo. Zach Wilson, you get killed over there. You know, if you're the yeah. Uh, yeah. any of the neither, New York team's quarterbacks. Murdered. I wonder what the reaction. So congrats to the Eagles. Seemingly going to be able to get back on track. Yeah, for sure. We think so. Yeah, definitely. And but Dayball. Uh, what's that? I said it could be 13-4 and four if they, you know, run the table. And out. Wink Martindale, you know, he's he's coached defense in the NFL before. Yep. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So he probably heard the bird call from Bosa before Bosa even said it. Wink's like, yeah, we get, yeah, we have been watching. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay? We have been watching what you were doing. So who knows if they're able to get that shit fixed. But we do know that the NFC race seems to go through the San Francisco 49ers or mm -hmm. the Detroit Football Lions. Hell yeah. And that is a wild thing to say with a straight face. Congrats to Detroit <laughs> having that. Way to go, Detroit. Hey, just two years ago, the Lions were 0-10-1. And they got their – MCDC got his first victory yeah. as a head coach. Oh, yeah, and he cried, and everybody made yep. fun of him. Oh, yeah, yeah it was uh -huh. awesome. Not us. We said we loved him. Yeah. Yes. Yes. He said we loved how emotional he got. Mm -hmm. He said he was going to coach boys a little bit harder. It showed up, didn't it, Foxy? 100%. And that's why – that's the biggest difference of this Lions teams and past Lions teams. That's literally the brand-new Lions is it's all coaching. And it shows how important culture is, and it's just awesome to watch. Yeah, let's go, Lions. We're happy for Come him. on. And on the AFC side, what, everything goes through Baltimore? Yeah. Yep. For sure. That's How about the Dolphins just getting not nah, can't do it? Still got a chance. Yeah. It, definitely. Uh, that's what I think. Cowboys. Baltimore's got Baltimore the, uh, does have Baltimore's the, Niners. the Niners this week. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're gonna learn a lot. I think it's prime time, right? Is that in Baltimore? That's on Christmas that Eve be. or Christmas? Yeah, Christmas that's, night maybe. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Christmas night. Christmas Eve is a stinker. Fresh hard mending on. That'll be a nice treat. That will be a That'll nice be a treat. That will be a tasty treat. That will be.
Got a nap out of the way. Mm -hmm. Christmas Eve, you can just watch movies. No, no, that's the holiday classic. We got to watch that. Who's playing Christmas Eve? Wait, you guys are the kings of gotta watch this game. Christmas Eve is over. Broncos Pats. Yeah, that's why I'm saying oh, I I'll, I'll watch this one. I, I, I don't think you guys have to. Christmas Eve? Yeah. Sunday Night Football. I'll watch football Christmas Eve. Yeah, yeah we'll holiday watch classic. That. I'll watch it. Mm -hmm. What's that? That's what they're calling the game. The holiday classic? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is us, uh, the NFL, just uh, going to the NBA and saying, sorry about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Send a video. Mm -hmm. Sorry about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Send a video. Mm -hmm. Sorry about it. I keep saying the same thing. Send a video. That's what the NFL just said to the NBA. Yeah. It's cute though, right? Christmas was on Sunday, and the NFL said, oh, that's fun. This is ours now. Mm -hmm. And the NBA said, wait, we'll let the attorney handle that. And then the NFL said, no, it's just our day now. Yeah, sorry. Christmas yep. is just our day now. Yep. That's what we do. Got the Eagles, the Chiefs, and the Niners, let alone Baltimore and Lamar Jackson in prime time. They oh. stacked it. You know yeah. what I mean? Those spreads. Those spreads, man. Well, the games originally were. But going into the season, mm -hmm. you got Patrick Mahomes, Jalen Hurts, and the San Francisco 49ers and Lamar Jackson. Yeah. When they scheduled, they're like, yup. We did it. We did it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the Raiders are going to play Kansas City Chiefs a little closer than 10. Yeah. yeah. That's first team that ever to score 63 and be a 10 point dog the next week. And first Stat team. That. First team ever to get shut out and score 63 as well the next year. And that, is, that. that game has much, much bigger meaning because that is the Christmas Day game where the Kelseys and the Swifts are supposed to meet. Well, I heard through Entertainment Tonight. Mm -hmm. Sure. E.T. Was it E.T.? E.T. just learned about football. Who's hosting? Yeah, yeah, it was. Who's hosting Entertainment Tonight now? Oh, Mario Lopez has to be oh, right. Nice. He hosts every yeah, yeah. He's on the hotel. Yep. He's on the hotel TV. He every crushes. hotel I go into. Mm -hmm. King of the on. Castle. Yep. I don't know if he's eating. Hasn't aged. No. At all. Not, not at all. What is he's it? Like 50, I think he's 50 something. He looks like he's 10. Phenomenal. Like, look at him. I met him at a WWE event. He had the AC Slater bop still. Let's go. I don't right. doubt you know, it. Like the, he boxes. Well, of course. Yeah. Well, yeah, does. He's 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 AC Slater. I think Travis asked <laughs> Taylor's dad. That's what this the internet was saying. Oh, for her. what? Oh, they did. Whoa. That's what the internet yeah. was saying. For her hand? Whoa. In marriage? Right all now, I would like to say that there's a chance they're all wrong. Yeah. All the reporters. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, they've been wrong before about everything. What? Mm -hmm. And that could be something where you just start piecing something together. Like, oh, is that his first time meeting her dad? Oh, yeah, he might have. He might have did that whole thing, which is probably what it is. But I do appreciate the fact that we're all football world and Hollywood world. At the point where we're like, hey, we're happy for you. you real couple. It's true love. They really are. Yeah. You see those moments where they're hanging out afterwards? Mm -hmm. Wonderful. They're perfect for each other. True. Yeah. Just like I've been saying all along. Yeah. You have anything to say? You have anything to say? Uh -huh. I've been with you from day one. I, you can't fake a relationship like that. Come on now. What? I agree. There's a lot of people saying that, though. And I thought to myself, just from following along with Travis Kelsey's kind of life, mm -hmm. Ohio guy, sure. you know, a lot of respect. Sure. And then from what I learned about Taylor Swift from my wife's fandom and the documentary, it's okay. like these two might actually, these two might be well, perfect for each other. Definitely. It's oh. real. See how bummed out he is when he's not with her, when he's on the bench? Super bummed out. Mm -hmm. Well, he also heard it's funny, but it wasn't funny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she, when funny. she's there, too, he's bummed out sometimes. What? Well, yeah, because he wants to be up in the booth with her. Yeah. Man, she's he's up getting there, clamped. You know? And also, she uh, she sold out those stadiums all by herself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she did. She's looking around these stadiums going, how many of you out there? Jeez. Can't even fill this place up. Hmm. That's what she said up in New England. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, she fills up. She said, up. Travis and your friends. Against the, Bill Belichick and his friends can't fill up Short the stadium. Carolina. Yeah. Well, she does more than fill up the stadium. Let's let's remember that entire football field's also seats. Oh, yeah. So every stadium she goes to. <laughs> and then Bill Belichick out. said, she's tough, man. <laughs> yeah. She said she stood out there three hours <laughs> yeah. in the rain. In the rain, yeah. Sold that entire place out probably multiple times. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think. She did a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I think, in New England. I think this cannot get lost on the fact that some football fans have got, got sick of Taylor Swift quick because they were tired of mm -hmm. hearing about her during football games. It's like, if you watch and learn about her, fucking dog. Yes. <laughs> Absolute mm -hmm. dog, business-wise and everything. Selling out stadiums around the world. Wow. She should be worth billions. Hey, billions! Business genius, man. I... People were sick of it, and I don't think it was because of her. I think it was because people just didn't want to hear Chris Sims talk about it. Uh, Why was just, that? Necessary? I mean, there's a lot of Tony. there's a lot of people that talked about it. Yeah, but no one, say? nobody listens to those before. Yeah, that knucklehead. <laughs> yeah, no one to him. Sims done great. I thought they got a whole new host up there. Who is it? Um, Maria Taylor. Congratulations. Yep. Good luck. Yeah. 
we were watching Football Night in America as Kornacki broke down a playoff mm-hmm. situation, and then Maria Taylor at halftime basically said, I'll be gone for the rest of the season because she will be giving birth to a beautiful baby boy, I do mm-hmm. believe. Congrats to her and her family. Uh, and now the new host is... I do not want to get his name wrong, but I have seen him on TV before, and he is a bit of a dog. He is a oh, good yeah? watch. Yeah, I'm a big fan. Okay, Football Night in America, great show. I think we all watch it. Oh, I yeah. think it's yep. the only show that like literally everybody watches. As soon as that last game ends, it's like, all right, we're heading over here. Give us a rundown mm-hmm. of what we could have potentially missed. Please. Let's go through some highlights. I like Garrett a lot. Me too. By the way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I am. Uh, I think he does phenomenal. I, I, mm-hmm. He'll get talking. I like Kornacki. Did you see? Sorry, but did you see Kornacki last time? He went through his whole scenarios, and he is – that dude doesn't miss. He, he doesn't flub a word. He's boom, 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 boom. He's enlightening all of us. And then he throws it back to the desk, and they just said – yeah, and they went right to their next thing. I was like, we need to cut. Can we get five seconds to at least clap for this guy or tell me? <laughs> Take that Great in. job. That was amazing. Like, you just gave us so much information, and how you presented it was very entertaining. Like, he's great. Phenomenal. And he was even projecting next week's games and the games ahead of time. Mm-hmm. And then here's what – they're at 34% right now. At one point during the game, they were 23% mm-hmm. to win this thing when they were down 10. Actually, it went down to 7% to score on this particular thing, and they end up getting the win. And then next week – with the odd predictability here, that means this team now has a 22% chance. So, really, Kansas City might be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, like, it is. He's phenomenal. Mm-hmm. You're 100% right. Yeah, we were actually thinking about running the clip. Like, we were trying the next day on Monday. But for some reason, whenever it got uploaded into our computer, no sound. So, we weren't able to run it. Mm-hmm. But I sent a message to the people I know at NBC. I'm like, hey, can we run mm-hmm. the Kornacki shit? I don't know if there's anybody else that could fucking do what he does right there. He's phenomenal at that. How, how does he – so does he have any sports background or he was just so good at the election board that they're like, hey, here we go, come into football. That is precisely, I think, what happened. He has to pay attention, Jeez. though, all year. because he yeah, has to, you do. Like, he, he – you know, to get, like, the narratives and storylines of what the team – they've been up and down. Like, he was even given, like, kind of – like, it was wild. I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, hey, this – Political geek guy knows mm-hmm. a lot about ball. Yeah, so. he does. Like, it was uh, pretty impressive. Now, is he right? I think right. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, he's all he, the time. Just based on what the numbers are telling him, yeah, he's right. Even the one where he goes now th- for the bottom of the NFC, the NFC wild card race. He actually draws a line mm-hmm. in between the the R one and the middle one. And he goes, "What? Well, these two play each other on Thursday night. First mm-hmm. one of the day, boom, they might take the place." It was. Yeah, I like that Football Night in America show. Great show. I am. I think Maria Taylor did a good job just mm-hmm. getting dropped in there. Mike Tarico, one of the greatest hosts of all time. Yeah. yeah. He's out. Just Cordy. fills in for Al Mike. Shout out Devin McCourty. Devin mm-hmm. McCourty's done a great See? job. Mm-hmm. Rodney. Rodney Harrison. A lot yeah. of Patriots up there. Yeah, a lot of Patriots up there. Florio. Yeah. I love when they just send to Florio. Mm-hmm. Jack Collinsworth. He had a good one recently. Jack Collinsworth, good host. Shouldn't hate him just because his dad is Chris Collinsworth and he no. got a job at the same place. People do, though. Oh, he's yeah, gonna people. have to live with that. Internet does. Yeah. That's what his life mm-hmm. is. Mm-hmm. Matthew Barry, his you know best bets yeah. of the night, little fantasy nuggets. He yep. gave a parlay mm-hmm. this past weekend. Mm-hmm. Have any of these hit? I'm not talking about hit just his, but like Greeny's undefeated. I'm really happy that we are out of that game. Now, D butt's still in that. Yeah, game. that's brutal. That is a terrible game. It's not fun at all. Do you remember how much not pressure and stress that was? That was fucking terrible, yeah. AJ. I'm happy that's it's a lot parlay. tougher. Yeah, you think like I, I always when you're looking at, it, I'm like, yeah, this, of course, yeah, this only like two or three things. This will definitely mm-hmm. happen, and then the complete, it doesn't even come close to hitting, or it comes one yard from hitting. Our su- which happened? Hey, it was a kneel. Oh yeah. my god, Super Bowl. We had two hundred and forty thousand people mm-hmm. betting our bet alongside Mahomes. us. Man, Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes doesn't throw for two hundred and fifty yards. They win the Super Bowl. Okay, okay. <laughs> yep. What mm-hmm. hit everything else in the first quarter, and it was <laughs> just sitting, trending to hey, let's just fucking relax. Okay, we, we won. won so much money for so yeah. many people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the coin toss hit. Yep, of course. Exactly. We're gonna end the season with a bang. Yeah. Instead, it was more of the same. Just yeah, fuck you mm-hmm. from the gambling gods. Yep. I'm so thankful we don't have to do that anymore. <clears throat> those. Those messages and tweets I would get the next day. Mm-hmm. Not cool. So mean. Cool. Hope you're happy my baby can't fuck any formula for the next two weeks because I put $30 <laughs> on your bet last night. Oh, you guys call it a must win. It's like, I don't think that's my fault, but also, I, I'm i sorry, dude. Mm-hmm. Hope you're happy Christmas is canceled at our house because we've been riding with you for seven goddamn weeks. <laughs> seven, oh, and seven. You just went. All right, I'm sorry. It was risk-free, but... 240,000 people. 
to so many people. Biggest group bet in the history of sports gambling. Yep. Mm -hmm. And guess what we did, boys? Let them down. Yeah. Well, Oops. Patrick Mahomes did. Yeah. That's right. Gambling. Not us. That's gambling. That was a, we're on the right side. That's what people say, right? We're on the right side. Yeah, but when you're publicly giving picks, it's not easy. No. D, but how, how are your bets doing this year? Not good. Bet. Yeah. Okay. NBA, I thought was doing well. NBA is, yeah. Yeah, you get like one or two out of your five leg, right? Yeah. NBA? Yeah. No, mm -hmm. NBA is good. I'm just, I'm just not tapped in the NBA yet. Still, still. Football season. Be where your feet are. Smart, smart. Yeah, we're in the. How are you gambling this year? Pretty good. Dominating. Really? You said pretty good like last week, and then now you're saying dominating. Do you have stats? It was a good go? night last night. Oh, really? So we're riding whatever you done for me lately. Yeah. What you hit on last night? Last night was three and zero in the NBA, and then what was it? Uh, four and one in college basketball. Is that good? And no, well, I gave out Old Dominion. Oh, but I did live bet because Bruce told us to on Western Kentucky, but that wasn't for the people. See, but it's not hard. like I don't care if the people win or not. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, technically, if Tony wins, the people win, so it does kind of make sense. Yeah, but Tony, you should care about these people that spend their time with Hammer. Die. You know, I, people that ride this I do, I do. season alongside I you. Show. Thank you for listening and watching. We love you. But, you know, they're also a terpy bunch. <laughs> college basketball good this year so far? That, that was my first night doing college basketball. Gumpy's been crushing college basketball. College basketball just an easy thing to gamble on? You just got to find the Nuggets, like Chicago State last night, team like that, you know. You the just, Nuggets. You got you gotta, you gotta, you gotta to get in the weeds of college basketball. You're not going to make money betting games like Florida, Michigan, okay? Like, just find Sacramento State against Idaho at 10 p.m. on a <laughs> Tuesday night. Because the books aren't paying attention either. Not a sniff. <laughs> okay, so you can beat them. Yes. How do we feel about ESPN bet? How's it doing? I've seen there's some people that are pissed off still about the parlay thing. Mm -hmm. I assume that would have got changed. Some people. Well, they, they should put that out, and they should scream it from the mountaintops because I think a lot of people are assuming the opposite. So that did not get changed. Uh, I've not followed. I've not followed. It's been pretty nice not having to pay attention to any sports books, mm -hmm. to be honest. Mm -hmm. It's been really, really nice not have to do that. But how else is it? It hasn't crashed, right? No. Seen that? Mm -hmm. Good for me. You guys have been winning on there? Yeah. Good for me. Okay. Congrats, ESPN. That parlay thing, I assume, had to have been changed. Yeah, no, I, I don't think so. I, oh, genuinely. Yeah. That feels like a layup, doesn't it? Yeah, there's a hey, couple everybody layups. on earth feels one way. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, speaking of layup, John Morant returns tonight, right? Oh, okay! Swing! Nice job. Hey, he's back too, huh? We'll see. Take an Uber. He's not going to be... How's the team doing? He's not... Uber? I don't I don't know. I haven't heard one single thing about Memphis. I haven't heard... They, 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 are, they are very so bad. bad. What Jaws back? So so yeah, they need to win. Like they lose. 60. They lose Dylan Brooks to Houston, who was knocking down game winning threes. Mm -hmm. Just got booted. Okay, and he had an R in his braids. Yep. Yeah, looked super cool. That was, that was sweet. That was super cool. He also was standing, just staring at LeBron James. <laughs> mm -hmm. He's a character. Yeah, he's no longer on the Memphis Grizzlies. Nope. Is any of the team that was on there last year with John Moran on that team? Oh, yeah. Bane, Bane's still there. Desmond Jackson. Bain, Jackson. Yep. Still. Xavier Tillman. Uh, they got a – Stephen Adams is still there. Mm -hmm. And Brian, if I'm, if I'm remembering Rose. this right, they just won out every night, yeah. that team. That they were the, just living. That was the rumor, except yeah. for Stephen Adams. Yeah, because Stephen Adams yes. did the whole entire team, like, with his Australian accent, saying, boys, you need to stop screwing around. And then everyone was like, okay. And then they went to the bar right after. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then that was when all the, the photos of everything came out. Yes, the uh, lava of life money. Is different. They're on the road a lot. Yeah, and they play at night, so it's not like us. We play at 1 o'clock or whatever, so we're in at 11. Like, they fly into a city, no real curfew. Yeah. Got to shoot around or something the next afternoon or something. So, I mean, obviously, you get after it, but be responsible. Send the be video. A pro. Be a pro. Jeff Teague. Send the video. I mean, be a pro. I don't know if you've heard anything Jeff Teague has said lately. But he is He's really been good a stories. gem about talking about playing in the NBA. Oh yeah, like well, I think they uh, the when he was in Atlanta, they they started. He was the starter, and then he got benched, and they put in some other guy to start at point guard. And he basically said after that game, he was like, "Fuck, we got to go out every night. Cause I got to enjoy this shit while we're still doing it. Because I don't know <laughs> how long I'm gonna be here now." And then there's another video of uh, LeBron. It was game four in the playoffs, and the Hawks were about to get swept by LeBron again. This is like during the 10-year run where he went to the finals every year. And there's just this video of, of LeBron going up for a layup, and Jeff Teague just shoves him. 
and people were killing Jeff T because of it. And he told the story later on. He was basically just like, man, I've been swept by fucking LeBron James six years. Like, I was sick of it. So, yeah, I shoved him. And <laughs> after that, he was like, that was the first time I ever had to delete my Instagram because everyone was saying, if you touch LeBron again, I'll fucking kill you. He's like, that's when I got had to get off social media. He, so, Jeff, T Jeff Teague is a good listen. He yeah. is oh, incredible. Him and, oh, excited. Yeah, him and Gilbert Arenas have been swinging a hot mm -hmm. bat in their basketball stories. That's awesome. I can't wait to watch. Also, Kevin. KG, oh, yeah. Kevin KG, Garnett. KG. KG I mean, oh, yes. He, he's, he's awesome. He's the fucking best. Anytime a Kevin Garnett video reaches my algorithm, mm -hmm. I'm watching. <laughs> I'm sticking around. Him and Paul Pierce have a great relationship. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, don't I love know, it. I, I, That's my favorite thing. Well, I love those two together. Honestly, they're yes. the best. If anybody, anybody awesome. here watched KG play live when he was like in his prime? No. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. Like, oh, yeah. One of the, the most intense competitors. Like, because obviously basketball, you can hear everything they're saying. So you're sitting close to him. He's coming out. He's walking. He's talking to like the fucking thing that holds. Him. He's like head on spitting, talking shit. Like it's, when even when he's on the bench, talking shit yeah. the whole time to the coach. The Hell no! Nah. Right out of high school, right? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Well. Big the, do the documentary that he talks about how like Pat Riley comes to watch him play, and he's like not watching and looking at his phone, and he like dunked the ball and screamed at Pat Riley while he was just sitting there, and then Pat Riley was like, "Oh shit, okay." I'll watch this kid now because clearly he's a guy. Guy's got a little moxie to him. Yep. All right, well, shout out to the NBA, you know, with some big news yesterday. Yeah. Huge. <laughs> Taking over the internet. Mm hmm He went for 32, 8, and 5 last night? Yeah. What you talking about? Banner night? Lakers? What happened? Lakers lost on banner night. Banner night was uh, last night? Yeah, it's not what we're talking about. You see the tournament banner? They got it. Yes. A lot of Lakers okay. fans pissed off about it. Well, a lot of fans in general. Should have heard me. Yeah, it's been a big conversation. I, I saw uh, on the internet people getting real pissed off about an in-season banner. And as somebody that walks into Lucas Oil Stadium every <laughs> single week and sees an AFC finalist banner that's hanging on the far left, I can understand why some people might be a little bit disappointed about something that isn't a real championship being hung from the rafters. But this is the first one ever. Who knows what this could become? Mm -hmm. You know, LeBron wants this to be remembered as a big deal, would like it to last, just like I would like the pro football focus to last. Yeah. They named me the part of the decade. Yeah. We would like that place Bingo. to continue to have great success in people. Because if it dies, it dies. The in-season tournament, they want it to be a big deal. Mm -hmm. They want it to be a big deal. Yeah. The Lakers want it to be a big deal bigger than anybody now. Especially. Because they want it. <laughs> they would like this thing to last. Adam Silver does as well. I don't love hanging banners just for anything, but I can see why the Lakers... For the, NCAA, for the NBA Cup, you hang it. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it's one banner, though. Maybe in a different, not like near the... You know, the yeah. real championship. Oh, now in the aux. Put, put in your aux gym. The, oh, maybe the lobby. Gym. Maybe in the lobby. Have it hang in the yeah. lobby. Yeah. They said they made it different colors from the other one. It's mm -hmm. different colors and it's just one. So if yeah. they win again, they just put the year on it. Yeah. They don't hang another banner. <clears throat> so it's more so like if they if the Colts had a banner that was like AFC finalist and then it was every year they were in the AFC championship. Like I even think that one would be a little more okay. Yeah, it would. That's sick. It's a sweet looking banner. What are we talking really about? Is. Look at the NBA it's Cup. The NBA Cup, dude. Bro, they should hang that fucker in the lobby, though. So when you walk in, that's yeah. the first thing you see. Let people touch it. No, no, up in the sky. Oh, okay. Just like it would hang the banner, mm -hmm. but in the lobby, away from. They should hang it from the j Jumbotron so it's like 10 feet off the floor. <laughs> and they jump up and touch it <laughs> yeah. every time you yeah. run through. Yep. <laughs> you guys are making a mockery out of this NBA Cup. No, 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 not me. I mean, big, hey, I big love win. Big win for the uh, for the league. I saw Perk when he was on the show talking about how, you know, how big it was that LeBron takes the series. are going through a little bit of a uh, yeah. NBA Cup loser hangover. Uh, hangover. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they say it's hard once you go to the NBA Cup finals. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and you lose, it's hard mentally to get over exactly. that. Exactly. So the Pacers are going through it this year. There'll be another next year. Put that everything they had mm -hmm. into it. Tyrese Halliburton couldn't miss a shot on those yeah. fucked up courts. That's yeah. NBA Cup. These, cup. these courts that they're playing on are now too boring. <laughs> Tyrese Halliburton needs a little bit more excitement well, on more city court. edition. You know what I mean, AJ? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I went to the Cavs Hawks <laughs> game uh, this weekend, actually. Great time, right? Games are a good time. Bro, I, t I Trey Young got to watch Trey Young play in person. My, you know, my daughter loves basketball. Our friends had some tickets, asked us to go. Every time, like, I sat there in. I'm probably annoying for anyone sitting around me. Like every single shot, hold on, I'm like, wow. Like every shot, I'm like, geez, hold oh my. Like I was, they just hit shots that you take when you're a kid and you're trying to like mess around and hit these crazy fadeaways. Like I'm just, I tell you all the time, I'm just blown away at the shots that these guys hit over and over and over again. And Trey Young, obviously he's around all these giants and just manipulating his way around the place. Boom. He had 30 something, I believe, but they got beat. But man, those guys are good. How about the, the banging underneath? 
You know, the back, the, if you get a chance to sit close, the big bodies, like seven foot, banging on seven foot. It's yeah. like they're not running at the full speed like football is, but there's some contact down there. Oh, and then yeah. they call fouls that are just like terrible. Mm -hmm. When I just saw two guys basically fighting each other here, and then I don't understand it. But <laughs> basketball's a good time. Coming to Indiana for the All Star game. Yeah, pumped for that. And then Stadium Series NHL is the same weekend, I think, right? Mm -hmm. In uh, Jersey. Yeah. Let's go. Football, three weeks left. Yeah, yeah. I don't, that's why I don't want to. I'm excited for that stuff. For What's sure. that? For the, for the, you know, NBA. Yeah, we got to start teasing that, though. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? We got to start letting True. that enter our minds. Because there's not a lot of football left, boys. Oh. No, there's not. I've been watching. Do you hear Chip Kelly? Yeah. He's our season's over. Boys are yeah. already home. Yeah. That's college ball. Boys are already home. Mm -hmm. That's it. Jacksonville State, first year in the FBS. Huge win. Win a bowl game. Mm -hmm. Ripper. What a kick. Unbelievable. Shout out to the Ripper. Shout out to his pre kick routine, too. Love it. That's right. Yeah. Their season's over, though. Mm -hmm. It is. NFL, three weeks left. <sighs> Jeez. Hey, you knew that Chip, they won the, uh, the Gronk Bowl, didn't you? Certainly. Yeah. Kidding me? <laughs> Who didn't watch? I saw a lot of clips from that game that were you game coach? What are you, I, thought, I thought you were about to say, what are you, so what were you game playing on coach? This, you got a big bowl game coming up. I thought you might ask that. I didn't know. I didn't, you know, I, I had no, I assumed he was promoting the bowl game. I've, honestly. I watch <laughs> a lot of these. Yeah, there's a chance. There's a lot of bowl games on, and I've watched, I would like to say I watched 80% of them at this point, which I feel like is pretty wow. good mm -hmm. with all the bowls. I've at least seen a couple plays that have happened. It's hard to keep up with the Bulls. Mm -hmm. Like, the L.A. Bowl has become the Rob Gronkowski saying the National Anthem Bowl. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. You know, and then, like, last night's bowl, the Toastery Bowl, mm -hmm. becomes the Western Kentucky with a quarterback in the transfer portal somehow Bingo. did something absurd bowl. Mm -hmm. And then, like, when West Virginia beats the shit out of North Carolina sure. in the Mayo Bowl, that's going to be, like, good sandwich, West Virginia. Mm -hmm. once again. Yeah. Those are, that's what bowl season is, yeah. moments. So I do forget. There's a moment, I don't know if you've heard about it yet, there's a new bowl this year. It's the Pop-Tart Bowl. Oh, I love Pop-Tart. And the uh, coach oh, yeah, of the winning man. team gets to eat the live mascot. Yeah. The, uh -huh. the mascot is walking around as a real life-size Pop-Tart. So that'll be a moment. So what happens? Hold on now. So winning team gets to eat real Pop-Tart mascot. I don't know if it's a Pop-Tart. I don't like, think I'd want I'll, that because the thing you do with Pop-Tarts is you, you pop those things in half yep. and then you eat from the middle. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna be able to do that. See, and I don't no, know. I, do. I don't know if it's a pop tart with arms and legs, and it has I don't like, like the a crust. soul. And it's no, I don't hurt the pop the tart part. What's your What's your flavor? What's your go to. So, I would do like um, I would do the uh, like the gra graham cracker. Oh, uh, s'more, brown sugar, s'more, s'more. 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 I'll do the s'more. I'll do the cinnamon one as well. Mm. There was this berry mix. Oh, uh, wild had. berry? Yeah. They, have a, did it have a purple frosting ish? Yeah, they had a purple, little. Like, like, I'm big purple with the blue squiggles on it. See, I like the chocolate fudge one too. That was always delicious. Nah, too yeah. much chocolate there, but I understand yeah. where you're coming from. I like strawberry. Cookies and cream was always like Strawberry, strawberry no all day. That's old school. Yep. Strawberry. That's the OG. I, you know, I will eat it, but normally, it feels like that one because of. How light the pop tart is, it crumbles more. Yeah, you know what I mean. That mm -hmm. one crumble. That one seems to crumble more. Do you toast it? I I know there are people that do. Yeah. I I do not take the time. No, I do not. Never. You, you quick, little, that. quick little one on a toaster. Lightly every time? toast. Yeah, every time. You put I mean, if you got to run and just grab something to eat out the door, I don't mind that. But what was that? It was is pop tarts sure. brought to you by Kellogg's? Yes. So Kellogg's bowls weren't going to have the bands play, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Because. I was playing in the Cheese It Bowl, which is also Kellogg's. Yeah, the Citrus Cheese It Bowl, and they were gonna have Gavin DeGraw <gasps> play at halftime ooh, instead yeah. of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Oh, no, I don't think. Ooh, yeah, <laughs> hard, Dude, hardly he's got some hits. Gavin he's got DeGraw, some hits, yeah, no thanks. Fucking guy had <laughs> one hit twenty years ago. What was the hit again? What was it? Fucking, I don't wanna be anything other than what I've been trying to be lately. Hey. That's all he's ever fucking came up with. Hey, that is a banger, though. It is, sure, but... Does he have that picture or something? I want to see the fucking Iowa Hawkeye marching band, and I also want to see Tennessee playing fucking Rocky Top at halftime. And so does everyone else. No one is going to that game saying, you know, I'd like to see what that has been, Gavin DeGraw. Whoa! Doing. That guy's got a banger. Come on. He does. So does Wham. Br bring me them. Wake me up before you go-go. <laughs> I'll get excited about that. George I don't give Michael's dead. Yeah, I know he is, so... It, oh. Can't do that. Looks like we got to have the bands play. Iowa Hawkeyes band. 
We're on a Metallica Instagram post. Exactly. Sick. And how do we reward them? Yeah, you guys can fucking play for four minutes before the game starts. And then... Go. Didn't they change it, though? They changed it, right? I have not seen that they have. I I know got that fired? on Facebook and stuff like that, like, they were just getting killed by both Tennessee and Iowa fans. Facebook a thing? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Big time. Kidding me? Hawkeyes fans, I assume, love Facebook. Mm-hmm. But they're not getting any new... A lot of hayseeds. And they're not getting any younger I didn't subscribers. I did, no, I did. That was Ty for a yeah, mile. Yeah, I did. Yeah, that was Ty for a mile. Mm-hmm. So is, when's Gavin playing then? That's all I care about, Ty. Halftime. Yeah, I bet you do, you <laughs> son of a bitch. He's, <laughs> are you still playing at halftime? I think they made a change. He better be. He better Let's still be. Out. I could have sworn that. I thought the part, Pop-Tart Bowl was having similar issues because every Kellogg's Bowl was like, yeah, we're going to get superstars in here singing halftime. Mm-hmm. Guys have bangers. Girls have bangers. Mm-hmm. And then they didn't even think about the bands playing because I think it's the first time maybe dabbling in Hawkeyes fans protest that was on December 8th mm-hmm. many University Kevin Carlson said noting the Pop-Tarts Bowl and the Frisco Bowl are also curbing band participation has there been an update though I think there was an update I mm-hmm. think in the last couple of days I don't know because I wanted you to take you know Ty was not happy about this I'd yep. be pissed too Ty, Ty sent me this information because we saw the Iowa Hawkeye band up close and personal in Indianapolis <laughs> the leader of the band cool yeah great mustache mm-hmm and then they, bam, 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 bam. I was like, okay, here we go. And electric guitar in the band. I didn't know that was the case. There it is. Hawkeye marching okay. band will perform during the Citrus Bowl halftime show. The Iowa Hawkeye marching band will officially play at halftime during Hawkeye's bowl game. The announcement was posted on the University of Iowa Hawkeye marching band's Facebook page on Sunday, as we were speaking about. Previously, the Hawkeye band was only scheduled to play before the game for seven minutes without a performance during halftime. Now, the Hawkeye band in the pride. Mm. of the Southland Band will perform after Gavin DeGraw's halftime performance. Good Gavin's luck. still playing. Good luck following that up. Well, uh, they'll be just fine. I wonder what he's going to play. Oh, no, I don't, because he's had one good fucking song, and no one's ever heard of any other songs he's done. It's still bullshit. They're, so what, they're each going to get three minutes? You can't do the whole fucking come on the the field, spell out. Dun, dun, can't dun, do it. Dun, dun, can't do it. Well, so they'll just play the fight song then. They won't be able to play any Metallica or anything like that. It's a fucking shame. Oh, these kids don't work hard all year? Band kids don't, you know? If Gavin don't McGraw about them? wasn't performing, would they even show the bands at halftime? Yeah. Won't show any of it. On TV, it won't be on. Oh, you're talking about on TV? Yeah, on TV. So, like, us being able to watch. Oh, no, I was never going to no. be able to see it. Well, yeah, we're not. Way. We never watch. Yeah, we'll never be able to see it. Yeah. Never. Never. Let's but just people down fun. there and for the kids in the band? Yeah. How about the parents of the band? Boom. That's what I'm yeah. pissed about. Yeah, but now we seniors. actually might. Because they're probably sh- going to show Gavin on TV. Certainly going to show they're Gavin. They're not going to show Gavin on yeah. yeah. TV. I don't want to be anything other than what I've been lately. Or if he's singing like Best I Ever Had. Let me hear that. Yeah. Go on, Tone. The Drake song? It made $1.8 million, I heard. Go on, Drake Tone. Drake sampled it? I, I, I think so. Wow. What, what is it? I thought he did Come that on, picture song. Here. See, I thought it was really. Pictures of you. Yeah, so many. So many hits. Pictures of me. Young upon is that him or no? I don't fucking know. I'm not a diehard Gavin feels, DeGraw. Fan. Sounds like you're. you're yeah. all it feels like you are. And now I, get, now I got a grudge till the end of time against this son of a bitch. Unfortunately, <laughs> I bet you Gavin's a good guy. I'm sure he is. Gavin's probably so excited to get to play in front of Iowa Hawkeyes fans. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, love. I, I be hope he's not wearing that goofy little fucking top hat and leather wristband like he always he does will. either. It's not goofy. <laughs> it's wristband. Sure it is goofy. Oh, God, God looks like an asshole. Oh, no, he does not. 22 or 48. No, he like does not. Girl. He has a banger, bro. He's talented. It's a cool hat. It's unbelievable. I understand why you're upset, though, because I saw that Iowa Hawkeye movie. He just found a Christmas album. It's great. He's going to play a couple of those. Yeah. When's the game? When's the game? Just so I can make sure I see this. New Year's Day. He's playing 12 songs. We will not see oh, it. We whoops. will not see it, unfortunately. New Year's Day, jeez. Jeez, a bowl. Taking a hit. It's getting, New Year's Day? It's getting eliminated. Is that a New Year's Six now? Citrus Bowl. Citrus Bowl, yeah. Hmm. All right. Good luck, Gavin. Yeah. And to both fans that are now be playing. For two right. and a half minutes. All right. For two and a half minutes, we're going to get smarter. Yeah, okay. we are. Probably about ten and a half minutes. <laughs> we're going to get a lot smarter. We are so lucky that every week we get an opportunity to dive deeper into the plays that we see on the fields. You right there? What's up? Crinkling a piece of paper. Stop yeah, fucking geez. with it. Why don't you just spit <laughs> into the mic? Come on. Sorry, I was fucking breathing. <laughs> You're allowed to breathe. You're allowed to breathe. Looks good. Appreciate that. You look cool. no, no problem. No, everybody's allowed to breathe. Are those breathing. performance shoes? What the hell are those? 
Hey, I want to let you know, Jordan. the 1940s thing you said yesterday. So, so good. Very <laughs> solid for the conversation, mm-hmm. but also rude. We don't feel that way. No, yeah, not, at all. Pick not at all. I wasn't a shot at you guys. Also, Just everyone was banded together in the 40s, the which roof. you did say. We were. You had to come together. Fighting is one. Rashard Mandenhall is a racist. Mm-hmm. Just say it, you ESPN sellout. <laughs> don't be laughing about it. Well, he might be, but. Did you see J.J. Watt's response? To? To some guy who was saying that to him? No, what did he say? It was awesome. He, he put him down. <laughs> he put him down real swiftly on Twitter. <laughs> oh, yeah? Real sw- I'm talking. I'm talking 700 retweets in a half hour. JJ's been really doing it on us. Yeah, yeah, he has. Buddy, listen. Love that. Anytime there's yeah. a buddy, listen. Ignoring the blatant racism. God forbid a white guy stands up for himself, says Mr. Yite. Thanks for standing up for yourself, Yite. Buddy, listen. We don't need to be offended by everything in the entire world. He said white guys can't play football. I thought to myself, I'm a white guy. Mm-hmm. I'm very good at football. <laughs> and concluded that his statement had no validity. Instead of arguing, I had some fun. And play a hand on that guy. Good hair. <laughs> Buddy, listen. Mr. Yite, though, is still pissed about it. Oh, oh yeah. Uh-huh. God forbid one time, he says. One time. <laughs> some top probably notch scour the internet, internet for some guys. Night. What's that? Some good internet last oh, night. Oh, man. Good good time. Yesterday, good yeah, yesterday yeah. all the way through, it was great internet. All time. And this morning, I don't know if. You've caught up a little, but the uh, Division One Jalen Hurts haters have come out to play. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, big time. Oh, big time. look at this guy. Bingo. A lot of that? Yeah, a lot of that. A lot of that. It's incredible. Too handsome. How about the committed enough thing does scare me a little bit. It is weird. Yeah, it doesn't feel good. Let's learn about some teams that weren't committed enough and teams that were committed enough mm-hmm. with good D, bad D, with everything DB, Darius Butler. Let's go. Let's get to it. Hey, I think you have a remote right there, too. I think. Ooh, I, don't I don't know if it'll work. I don't know if it'll work. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. See. See what happens. You know what? Oh, I can click. You got a clicker. I trust you on the remote. Okay. All right. Oh hey, wow. I don't, I don't need to. All right. Hey, let's go. Trust the team. Let's start with some bad D. Hey, let's start with that bad D. Let's go ahead and get through some of this bad D. But good offense. So your offensive fans out there. Whew. This is the team you want to watch. You see them every week, pretty much on here and in the trenches. It's the reason why. So cover three right here. Hook a true cover three. Pause it real quick. So. You got different cover three, same coverage, but people play it differently. Sometimes it's a more of a match concept, which means these flat defenders are going to run in match routes, almost like man to man, depending on who comes in your zone. Or we call it a high school cover three, which we all learn. You get to your your, uh, areas, whether it's curl, flat, hook, curl, deep post, deep third, and then you play it out. This is a high school cover three right here. So deep third player, hook, curl player. Christian McCaffrey, you're going to see Brock Purdy escape the pocket. Christian McCaffrey is going to escape right through kind of like the C gap. Pause it. So now, as this hook curl defender, he's going to stay in his area. This deep third defender, he's kind of going to go to Brandon Ayuk. He's also going to take both of these defenders, so he's going to clear this out. And now you got Christian McCaffrey, who's going to run up, and they just almost run like a slot fade from the backfield and end up wide open. This flat defender is on juice in the flat. Brock escapes the pocket. You'll see it better from the tight copy. Jeez. And now you have, you watch the tape, you're like, how the fuck does Christian McCaffrey get that wide ass open? That's how it happens. So why did that corner follow Ayuk the entire way across? The, he, so did he think at, it was a match? Yeah, when you're in a deep third, when you have that number one receiver, so pause it, when you have that one receiver, that is like your main responsibility. So when he's that tight to the formation, though, I think he could have dropped yeah. him and just had some vision. But you're not expecting, this isn't a route concept that you see every, I don't think I've ever seen this route. in Slot frame in the backfield? Yeah, just a slot, for just running up and then kind of bowing out to the open area. Never seen this route. So that's something you're not seeing on tape a bunch. And then Brock does a good job. A lot of people just say he sits in the pocket and throws the great players. He does that sometimes, but this is him escaping the pocket, extending the play. And is this supposed to go throw. here, you think? And he just decides to take it there? I don't know. I, I almost think it's designed to run... To, to be this way because of you they know the rules too they know that that's what you know great offensive coaches do they attack Ooh, your bro. coverage rules so you know hey this corner is probably gonna run with that guy we're gonna have juice in the flat he's gonna be occupying that flat defender and then you're just gonna have chris mccaffrey obviously one of the, probably their best player on the team 
be wide ass open in the flat. So it's Brock extending the play, and it's also a great play design as well. A great play design, getting people open. Yep. You know, yeah. Some people seem to do that. McDaniel does it with mm -hmm. Tyreek Hill somehow. Mm -hmm. He's able to do it with CMC, Debo, George Kittle, Crazy. depending on whenever they want. Mm -hmm. How come we're not seeing it with Travis Kelsey? Mm. Good question. Because Bam. You see, so if you go back to the beginning of this play, when you start this play, when you come out of the huddle now, George Kittle's not on the, on the field right now, but you got Debo Samuel. Wide. You got Brandon Ayuk, who's Wide. a dog. Juice is a dog, but you're never going to game plan to stop 44. If, mm -hmm. if 44 comes out and beat us, we can live with that. And then obviously Christian McCaffrey in the backfield, first and 10. This is really a rundown. You get the play. So you're not coming out and saying, hey, I'm worried about Christian McCaffrey you know, in the deep part of the field. So that's how you kind of catch guys sleeping. And there's so many weapons. When you play the Kansas City Chiefs, we got to stop 87. 87 can't beat us. If somebody, if Rice beats us, if Tony beats us, if, if Pacheco beats us, we can live with that. We can't let Mahomes in 87 beat us. Let's go to some more bad D, shall we? Bad D. Uh oh. Let's see, you're talking, about, you're, you're talking about good play designers. You're talking of about good course. play designers. Sean McVay is definitely one of them. You got Cooper Cup and Puka Naku in a stack right here. He's going to motion across. And now, just like I spoke about on the last play, now you have a flat defender once again. Now, pause. Once again, good offensive play callers attack defensive rules. Once again, one of their best players on offense is going to be wide ass open because of some rules. And this is kind of a gray area rule. This used to give us issues as well. As a flat defender, you're always responsible for out and up a wheel route. So that could be a linebacker, a safety, a corner. You're responsible for out and up. But it's always gray area there because as a defender, does the, the difference is if I'm a flat defender, if he does this, that's my responsibility. Because he wants to the flat. Because he, nope, shoulders. Boom, shoulders go to the sideline, shoulders go up. Okay. If he does this. Wheel. That's not my responsibility. That becomes the deep third defender. So it's that kind of gray area that gets people off guard. Now, corners, safeties, you have that type of relationship. You know, okay, I'm going to error as the deep third defender. Once again, good play design, tight split inside the numbers. He runs them off. Boom, he completely drops him because uh, those shoulders, if you run it back, yeah, it Cooper wheel. Cups, yeah, Cooper Cups. So it's almost like a switch release. So that's a switch release, and that's not a wheel route because his shoulders didn't come up, out, and up. So right now, that's just a switch release. That's two verticals. And on paper, that's responsible. That's the deep third defender responsibility. So that's the gray area that good offensive play callers call. And once again, when you know the defense you're going against, if it's a match, because this won't work on a match. If this was seen flat, he would just take that guy, the final two. He would just run with them. But since it's a true zone, almost like a high school zone again, it's on that defender. Pause it. See, he, this linebacker has to get a good drop. This flat defender gets a good drop as well, but this corner should be deeper and just feeling and splitting those one and two verticals. He does not. Stafford obviously sees it. This was dialed up. So once again, you're looking at the tape as a commander's fan. How the hell is Cooper yeah, The linebacker did a good open. job, though, getting under Great that D button. Yeah. yeah he, this, the, uh, the corner should have felt good about that mm -hmm. and been able to kind of slough off and get some depth. Slough off. Great, great job. So this, that's also the 57. difference. 57. Yeah. Turning and running, right too. Here. That's good. Like, he's not, he's not getting – if he gets sucked up a little bit, he's like, I got to get here and I got to get in this throwing lane. Maybe yeah. he gets sucked up a little bit. He's just a little suck up. Nah, but great, it, great, yeah, one here, step. Great recovery. So to AJ's point, if I'm in this corner – because sometimes that curl feels naked. It's like, damn, I got I to gotta get yep. down and he's wide open. But if you see your guys, because once again, this is true zone. Guys are dropping the spots. So you have to, and it's Cooper Cup too. Like you got to have some awareness. Like as yeah. soon as I come out, of, I don't care if I'm the corner on the opposite side, especially with a team that motions a lot, I'm going to know where 10 is. So when 10 comes across in motion, I'm not just going to let that go and drop it. But good play design. And honestly, that's, that's why bad defenses are bad. So now he's kind of looking confused like, because to him, he probably thinks that was a wheel route. And then he'll get to the sideline, get on a Microsoft Surface, and see, oh, his shoulders never turn into a switch release, and then you correct it. But is that's that, a good offense. Is that on uh, the defense, or is it on, like, Ron Rivera wanting to watch Rugrats instead of film? <laughs> we don't know if that's true. It's possible, that, though. I mean, that's on the defense. To me, I, I always, you know, coaches are obviously they fired important. Their DC and coaches are going – yep. So coaches are, going, are supposed to put you in position. They, they have to make sure that you know – how you've been attacked, you know the strengths and weaknesses of your defense or offense. But as a player, we always talk about being a pro. That's myself. I got to know where I got to be. I also got to know what my teammates are going to be. And we got to know how we're going to be attacked as well. So oh. I, I put it on the players in my I, opinion. I am not envious of the commanders. We should have known no. when they when they weren't sure where the we are commanders. I like that.
Pretty it's good. Pretty, how'd you guys? It's pretty catchy. Yeah. Here you go. 30, uh, 30, 33 seconds. Fourth quarter, third and 10. We've all seen it at this point. At this point, obviously, DK Metcalf has made some big catches. Hey, we're going to have some bodies. He's going to drop out coming to this side. Pause it. Yep. So you're going to have a body coming to 14. You got a corner, one-on-one on Tyler Lockett on the opposite side of the field. Blankenship, he's leaning to Tyler Lockett. Why? You're going to have a single high safety, which Drew Locke talked about in the huddle. And he trusts Bradbury to win over there on Jackson Smith and Jigba, who's on the outside, does a lot of damage from the slot. And cut. They put 14, they put Metcalf in the slot a lot this game for some reason. But you had Bradbury on Metcalf. If you run it back to the beginning, um, Drew Locke talked about you know, him being soft, so you're in off coverage. And then uh, Jackson Smith does a great job just attacking him and then just blowing out. That's like running that red line that you see on the practice field. You give your, you give your quarterback room to throw this ball. He said, I'm throwing it to that back square. Great ball location. If he doesn't catch it, it goes out of bounds. Great catch. Wet, rainy, fingertip catch. Mm -hmm. Couldn't tell it was raining. No, mm -mm. it's not one of those cameras. It's unbelievable. Yeah. They don't even show the puddles on jackets. No, no. What? It's only when they go to that sideline. What is the deal? How does it do that? It's what? annoying. It is annoying. Because they're saying it was coming down last mm -hmm. night. I'm watching 4K pretty much. Like, was, no, it's not. I'm looking for water to kick up underneath not the happens. shoes. And it's like, nah, nah, nah. Where's the rain? Is water real? <laughs> Water's certainly real. Mm -hmm. Is it wet though? Feels like that. that's the real question. No, it's, it's not wet. But yeah, great, great execution, or great finish here. Well. Bingo, right. there it is. Great throw too. Great throw. Great, great ball. Look, it's, it's a great execution. What's that? And, oh. and for an offense that you know wasn't slinging around all night long, ninety-two yards. Got to have it yep. and make it happen. So big time play, big time drive. Some young cats, man. Yeah, absolutely. Let's look at some good D. Get to the good hey, let's sling some good D. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah on his go. good two oh, steps. Oh, oh. Same graphics. No edit. Yeah. Sorry, JJ. We're going to have to get you out of here now. What's going on? Oh. What's that? Oh, I'm What's that? Get you oh. out of here. Who do we swap? Oh, no. no. Just joking. Just joking. Yeah, I'll tell nine, you what. Nine to be there. Alumni game. We're in trouble. Nine nine to beat. <laughs> no. Alumni no. game. We're in trouble. No. You saw, no. you saw a joke. Because alumni game, we got Jason Seahorn. Secondary. Uh, secondary that's one secondary position. Improves. Yeah. Wayne Corbett. Dick LeBeau. Yeah. Peyton. All right. Okay. Steve Large. You guys just start doing the research on that one. I don't, we want the game now. Hey, <laughs> hey. We want the game now. <laughs> these these DBs these DBs right now do not want to see Mike Allstock coming up the nope. sideline on them. I know that much. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Who? Who? Nope. Mike Allstock? Yeah. Mike Allstock was. Tank. Dog. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Tight. He's, he's coaching yeah. football Dog. now. He, yeah. yeah. He's making oh, yeah. a bunch oh, of yeah. A train. Oh, yeah. He's trying to create a bunch of yeah. A train. Yeah. Your mm -hmm. team better be ready for CT. You're talking, you're talking to Mike Austin? Yeah. He's talking Austin. to me. Talking to me. Love Here's Mike a good Austin. defense. This guy got shot out of a fucking can. Oh, yeah. yeah. We saw this yesterday. Holy Fourth shit. and three. Watch him. Deep third defender. So cover three. You see some communication down here. Love that. Now, Fred Warner, we always talk about him being in the perfect position, him knowing what's coming. Pause it. This is called, a, this is a, what we used to call at least a middle flood concept. So high low, going to run a crosser going from right to left, cross from left to right, and you have a hook over the ball. So Kyler looks here first, here second. He's waiting. If you run it back a couple frames, you'll see Fred Warner just waiting for it. Great communication. These linebackers pass both of those crosses off. And that by the time he gets back to his third look, which is that kind of button hook over the ball, C. Ward is putting his foot in the ground, all oh. pro Mooney. Bye bye. And caught it, caught it running, and that's 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 the one Damn. you dream about. Just perfect execution from the defense. We always talk about defense, you know, offense as well. Just been a team sport, a team game. So that's these guys being on point because those are the ones you want on fourth and three. You want to hit one of those crossers, passing them off. He's ready for it. He's ready for it. He's ready for it. Great leverage, great eyes and zone coverage. Boom. Ward knew that was three. Option three, right? Yeah, so once his other threats kind of died, that vertical, that tight end, became his only deep threat. So if he, if Kyler was to just go straight back and that be his read, and he was on there, those linebackers that are underneath, now you get a much better view. Because as a good zone def defense, you want eyes on the quarterback. Pause it. Eyes on the quarterback, eyes on the quarterback, eyes on the quarterback. He's the only guy, as a deep third defender, those are kind of your only man matches. So just like the one on Ayuk that you saw, he's like, why is he chasing him? Because you're just looking for that one vertical threat. So Ward's eyes on the, on the man, everybody else is on that quarterback. So right now, boom, it opens up. You close. Hey, That's the difference in the NFL. Like, those windows close so fast with DBs and linebackers. 
That's why everybody's small, everybody's faster, because the windows closed. You obviously got pass rushers, both to the left. Gregory, you know, I mean, good pocket, though. Good pocket, good protection. Great execution on the back. What you got, AJ? Don't you think uh, Ward also probably felt pretty good knowing it's a tight end, too, and he's not going to just be a burner and run right by me? So oh, yeah. A little like, he's sitting, sitting, waiting. And it's fourth and three, so these backers yep. are – they know they're playing the sticks. Oh, yeah. And that's your only vertical threat. And on the other side, if you see it on the hash, you can see kind of his cleat. Yeah, that's um, Tyreek Hill. You got to play it a little differently. Oh, yeah. A lot different. A lot different. That's going to be open if that's Tyreek. <laughs> but, I mean, he closed a lot of ground there. And then to finish it, put that thing in one hand, crib it. It's an excellent play. Can't believe that's their first defensive touchdown. That, yeah, that was wild. Well, if, you I was told me, if you told me that was their 10th, I'd believe you. Yeah, I agree. Same. I agree. Oh. These this guys is, got one. Hey, mm-hmm. this is. Yeah. Probably the, my favorite pick six I've ever seen. Like the the route recognition, Great. then the fit. Like you see the ball, soon as it snap, beat the block. Obviously, it's designed to block it up. And they have numbers, so you got one, two, three, and then you want to get the ball in Austin Eckler's hand. Second and thirteen. Now, Jack Jones obviously didn't have a, a great run in New England, but something you know, something you learn it's pretty good. early. Second and long, get back on track play. Ex- AJ. Expect yeah. screen to draw. Fuck. AJ, AJ. We're, doing, we're doing a great play. <laughs> expect, Still watching. It's my bad. Expect yeah, screen, you, screens and draws on the situation. get back on track play. Fourth quarter, obviously, this game was already ugly, but, I mean, whew. Um, what if he misses reaction. that? If he misses that D butt there, oh, they might be I out of the gate. Set up. <laughs> yeah, he's set up. But you know what? When you're cornered this position, we up 40 points. It's when you drop your nuts and you just start doing Every all the, you know, anything Always you Always pull the trigger. Oh, yeah. If I was a decor, I'd say, you, if you see it, you pull the trigger no matter what. We'll live with it if you miss yeah, it. Yeah, Bobby read it, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. So all these guys, they showed, they're uh, running. And I'm seeing this more and more. Uh, we saw the one with Carlton Davis, the pick he uh-huh. had when he was throwing the Bijan out of the backfield. Um, a lot more now. You didn't really see oh. it. I didn't see this much when I was playing. A lot of guys are anticipating these screens, jumping them, picking them off. Somebody had one, but uh, I think, was it Greenlaw? Somebody had, no, 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 um, Pratt, Jermaine Pratt from the Bengals, he had one, but somebody jumped offside. I think Trey Higgins oh, jumped yeah, offside, yeah, yeah. but he had another pick on the screen route as well. I like this next one a lot. Let's Ooh, go, boy. Whoa. My coach, what is it, 19 games now, 18 games in a row? This defense has created a turnover, which uh, leads <sighs> the league by a wide Whoa. margin. That's what um, we do. What is this, Maserati Mitch back here, first and 16, so you had a penalty mm-hmm. on first down. Play action, you try to get a throwback. So this is one of those plays, if you pause it, where you see the good offenses, they run it. You see Ben Johnson run this or Kyle Shanahan, somebody like, oh, my God, it's a great play design. Just doesn't work for everybody for some reason. George Pickens in the slot, so he's sprinting out to the right. Typically, that's when you get the um, hitch route in a corner behind it. But He fakes to the corner, goes post. Great discipline from young guy Nick Cross. Had kind of up and down start with the Colts. Having a great year this year. And then you throw this jump ball up to George Pickens. Gets a little body there. I like to see it oh, high man. pointed, go up top. Moss George Pickens in the middle of the field. Love to see it from the young guy, especially in that 2 0, 2 0 Colts uniform. Like, I like these unis too. Yeah. Little, little coats, little horseshoes in the back, little stripes. Three stripes on like the side. The horseshoes look like balls on the back of the helmet? Yep. No. They Love. don't look like balls. That's what the internet said. Hey. The internet's gonna get like their jokes. Well, great. Yeah, hey, if you run this nuts. back one, one more time, too, like something that di- it didn't come up on this play for these guys, discipline. It doesn't show up till it shows up. So when you sprint out as a flat defender, you see Kenny Moore here. Once you sprint out, your zone moves. So now you have to start pushing your zone to that sideline. And just like the play earlier where AJ was talking about that corner feeling more comfortable when he sees him. So now if he wa- if George Pickens was to run this seven route, this corner route, that cornerback will be in great position because he's sinking, yep, he's sinking back with his eyes, vision on the quarterback. Post safety, he's where he should be, which is inside that receiver. So that's everybody doing – these guys are obviously getting depth. So they're underneath. So that's everybody doing their job. And then obviously you high point in the finish that play. Is the wideout supposed to sell the seven a little more? Look out. Probably. Look out for the Colts. Him getting bodied is the wildest part. Well, it's Colts. Hey. Physical football team. There's a lot in there too. It is the lot house. It is the lot house. That's why they got the penalty. Play. Hey, a little pressure, a little pressure, too. Give me that. Give me hey, that. That's a great catch, too. Give me great that. Great catch. And George Pickens, you know, that's we saw Lamar do this with Isaiah Likely the other day. Sometimes you just see your guy down there and it's, shit, fuck it, he's down there somewhere. Your guy goes up and makes his play. And then sometimes it's the defense that makes the play. Eesh. Third and nine. They call it 50-50 ball. Whew. Mm-hmm. Double-double. You pause it here. So everybody up here can tell you this. 
if we're getting the red area, we call it double double. Which two guys are you gonna double on the Minnesota Vikings? Justin yeah. Jefferson. Man. Boom. Jordan Addison. Jordan Addison. TJ or Hawkinson. Or TJ Hawkinson. Hawkinson. Or Boom. Yep. So TJ Hawkinson, I think he leads him in targets. He's gonna get doubled down here. See eyes, hey. He's not going to beat us, and Justin Jefferson isn't going to beat us either. So you got Mike Hilton, actually, on the inside here. Don't know what you're looking at, uh, Mullins. But, um, uh, he threw it right for 300 through. yards. Yeah, no, no. This is a big – you can't – you can't – you can't. Oh. He blends every, in with the end zone. Every drive, <laughs> every That's drive. Oh, well, need a mouth. Especially when you get down there at the offense, you got to end with a kick, either extra point or a field goal. You got to get points here. Third and nine, trying to force it to 18. Once again, not going to let 18 or 87 beat us down here. Boom. Mike Great Hilton. job. I couldn't see Hilton there either. Mike Blend Hilton. in with the stripes. He's a dog. Mm-hmm. Those stripes. Strike again, Tone. But there we go. Some good D. Mike Hilton. Ooh. What about this? We got some hey. good D from last hey. night. Yeah. 13 yeah. seconds left for the gusto. Jalen Hurts, Philadelphia Eagles trying to drive. Post safety. You pause it. Actually, let's run this back. You got A.J. Brown down here. You got Devontae up top. So, obviously, you're going to be leaning to 18. You know they need a big chunk play. You still go single high. Love the shoulders. Birds, sense of urgency coming out. Square up. I mean, I thought he had a great year last year with the Giants. I was surprised that he went to Seattle for what he went there for. But great job getting off the hash. Underthrown ball, but getting off the hash and making an unbelievable catch on the sideline. Getting those both toes down. Like, this is wow. – it'll look even they're, better from, from the back. But they're cover, saying, covering ground. They're saying maybe he did he Yeah, covered. people are saying he didn't get it was, this was tough. This was tough. This I, saw, I, saw some, was I saw an alternate angle this morning. Mm-hmm. That was the first one. I was like, oh, maybe it didn't touch. But I thought it touched. You his, called it a catch. His pick earlier in the game was oh, filthy. Yeah. He too. covered so much ground. So much. play safety in the league. Hey, watch this. Like, this is so difficult. How so much ground much. he covered and to come down with it. Hash yeah. to sideline. <laughs> Wild ball is already thrown. And if you pause it, Jalen Hurts so knows good. you can't re- uh, run it a little bit just so we can see uh, like his legs, I guess. But Hurts knows, hey, most safeties, most deep safeties are going to be leaning to 11. And usually it's, it's Quandre Diggs who's their deep safety. And too many drives, sometimes you go left and right as safeties. Jordan Love, just unbelievable. Showing shoulders, boom. So now he thinks, okay, go to this one-on-one. Now, once again, underthrown ball. But Jordan Love's making an unbelievable catch to end this game. Uh. And to get those feet down, that was well, incredible. He had feet. Julian. Feet. Mm-hmm. Julian Love. What did I say, Jordan? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Jordan sorry. Love on my great player. I Julian Love. Understand. Sorry about that. Yeah, Jordan Love. Mm-hmm. Football player. J-Lo. Football player. Julian Love. If, J- if J-Lo could play on defense down for Green Bay, maybe. That'd be yeah. sad. It would be sad. Wow. Well, mm-hmm. That was a great game winner. Congratulations. Yes, it was. They said his feet didn't get in, but he said they called it good, so who cares? Don't matter either who way. Guess. Let's get the hell out of here, shall we? It's been a good day. Great day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Christmas Beautiful is less than a week away. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's wild. We're at the North Pole. That screen is sweet, honestly. It is. It is. It is pretty On cool. the screen. It's a... My bad. That window. That yeah, huge window. Boom. Is that close to Antarctica, con man? Uh, well, that's I think Aaron no, was trying to get to. It's the opposite side. Yeah. Even though he brought up Maji. Magi. Magi. There it is. Mm-hmm. Maji. I thought it was dying. Three I didn't, what in, is right? That's right. That's what we learned. Yeah, you didn't know that. No clue. Me neither. Do you have any thoughts on the all-black team versus the all-white team now that you've slept on it? you think you guys have a chance this year? Yeah, we only have one weakness, really, center. And long snapper, which I guess. Yep, center and long snapper. Those are massive. That's a pretty big If deal. you don't have – I ball. mean, nah, we'll Touch ball or play. Going, you don't have it. a good center, you're fucked. No, nah, not with our tackles. With I mean, Tunsil, oh, yeah, Trent well, Williams. Guess who's standing Tarsus over the Worf, Guess who's Worf, standing over Worf. the center? Vita Vea. So you better figure out who's your center. We can help him. No, you can't. We can leave those you're guys out Mm-mm. Yep. Cause guess who's out there too? Cool. TJ, Bose's, Bud, Max, Trent, Bud, Trent, Tunsil. Yeah, Trent stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, what's Trent gonna do when we just line up TJ, Bosa, and on one side? On yeah, one wait till you see our NASCAR package. Mm-hmm. NASCAR? Yeah. I thought you were going forty-one person. Oh, you mean on defense? On defense. Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah, we're not worried about it. Well, you Should guys be. won't be able to handle the amoeba looks we give you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna run exotics. Yeah. Vita Vea, deep third. So many exotics. Four, wide, four verts. Better hope the ball is able to get out because we're going to be getting the quarterback as fast mm-hmm. as we possibly can. We're bringing everybody, every mm-hmm. play. Gage eight. Everybody, every play. Mm-hmm. That's what. That's the That's the whole. Yeah. <laughs> that's our model. Seahorn on the island it's all tough. night long. Everybody, every play. It's mm-hmm. tough. That ball get out. We'll see. It'll be trouble. When's the last time you defended triple option? Boom. Old Good school. Point. Clock's going to run quick. That game's going to be fast. Not yeah. a lot of possessions. Nope. <laughs> oh. 
Miles Garrett. That'd be so sweet. Miles Pat Ricard. I there. saw some people trying to get Travis Kelsey away from our team. We, we, relax. Huh? Travis whoa, Kelsey's on. He's a white guy. I, hey, I was disappointed with our tight end group. I was, I was going over the <laughs> roster last night. You and Joku. And Kyle He's Pitts. phenomenal. But, right. but, it, but if Flacco's not his quarterback, doesn't matter. Nah, yeah. No, I think Flacco's just the first guy to be like, we got. This guy's huge. Mm-hmm. But we got to. Just a few years ago, and Joku was getting punished to go into the jugs machine. Yeah, mm-hmm. we saw it in Hard Knocks. Uh-huh. Yep. Yep. Now Man he's like, great. now he's like the epitome of the Browns, pretty much. Mm-hmm. What a good story! That's football, baby. Dog. That is football. That is football. Sometimes you learn, you grow, you get closer to people that you never would have guessed you'd get close to. Like Joe Flacco is now a Cleveland hero. Yeah, remember what his Ravens teams used to do there? Man, it's not that. Mm-mm. He was not heroic for a long Hated. time. Football is a beautiful thing. Let's always enjoy it, especially during the holiday season. We'll be back tomorrow with a trenches Wednesday with. Guy, you're swinging a hot bat, J.J. Watt. Hot yeah. bat. He's swinging a hot bat hot right bat. now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Coming yes. back from London. Oh, yeah, fresh yeah, yeah. off the plane from over to pond. Fresh hot off the big, big, fat big win. Tough loss. Oh, they lost. Whoa. They, they got, got smacked. Whoa. They got time, right? Who did we lose time? to? Everton. Sean Dice well, came Everton's back into good. his old town, had a few pints at his pub named after him, and smacked Burnley <laughs> around. Oh, yeah, Connor, Connor said that was going to happen. Yeah. yeah, we knew that. We, We're getting yeah. relegated. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Nottingham Forest just sacked their manager, so I mean whoa, 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 yeah. whoa, 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 whoa. company. Ah. All right, let's keep it positive here on this holiday. Mm-hmm. We will see you all tomorrow. AJ, great work. Boys, great work. We'll see you all tomorrow. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. It might change your life. Goodbye. <laughs>